Kyle has burned stuff. Looks like he's only got one of the Walkers main deck in Chandra. Um, oh, sorry. No, you're good. A lot of creatures in a few instants. Um, and then Mason has... Where did we end up with his build? We are yeah. looking at this for Mason. Grist, Minskin Boo, Oko, Red and Six. So I'm not sure how the strip mine ended up. Did he? Oh, he strip mined. So learned Tamron one. We had Mountain, and then we had a strip mine, and we followed up a Taiga and a um, Mox. So looking pretty good. They're still staring down two mountains. Got three to the head, followed by three more to the head. So uh, is it ten? So we have had quite a few burn already coming at him. Yeah, we knew Kyle's deck would be. Uh... Fast and Furious. Yeah. Ren and Six gets back to Strip Mine, but does not play it this turn. Not yet, at least. Yeah, yeah. He had to play the he had to play the uh, Bayou to be able to play the Ren and Six. Yep. All right. So past the turn, we have a Strip Mine. Into it looks like a fire blast, maybe. He's, I can't tell if he sacked the mountain or not. Did he cast two? Maybe cast something there for a three. Put him at seven. All right, Darcy. Darcy. So Darcy needs four different types. That correct? is correct for okay. delirium. Well, we probably got instant sorcery and land right now, but I think we are doing a count. It looks like. Okay, so that is Kyle's graveyard. For some yeah. reason, I thought it was his exile zone. No. Okay. We have a skewer. Oh, we have a vexing double. We have instant sorcery. Probably have instant sorcery creature. We have four. Yep. Okay. So we do have a live Darcy. And he, oh, but Maelstrom Pulse doesn't no, care about how. Darcy. Maelstrom Pulse does not care how big it is. Um, and Strip Mine says bye to that other mountain. Bye bye. And now, though it's seven life. Um, Mason's in a driver's seat for a little bit. This is exactly where the red deck does not want to be. Your exactly. creatures did not deal enough damage. Remember I said earlier, you want your creatures to do a minimum of six, right. and that's how you're going to win the game. Here we are. Your creatures have done... What, did the Vexing Devil, Devil do anything? Did Mason yeah, Vexing Devil. No, it, I'm four? sure that's what it dealt for. That yep. was the first hit. Yep. So we're missing you know, at least two more damage Yeah. for this. Uh, I see a Zagoth Triome in his hand. Uh, got Pete Land. He's going to draw a card off that. He he doesn't want to risk too much more life at this point. No, and I. I okay, I was going to say I would assume that that Mason's going to pass and make a a Karnstruct. Then his upkeep make another Karnstruct, and right. that will effectively clog the ground. That yeah. means Kyle can no longer get in with any of the remaining haste creatures. We're going to return Pete Land for some draw. Just. We're going to have a draw engine online. Let's see. What can Mason get with this Urza Saga? And here comes the Dr. P.P. Poop Pants MD slash Urza. So there's a Sol Ring and uh, a Mox. Mox Diamond. He's got both. That is the last one? Yep. Yeah. 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 Mox Diamond. Yeah. And he's got board targets later. but Correct. But right now in game one, he's yeah. got... Our board target. So. Yep. So here's the second one. Yeah. Now we have effectively clogged the ground. If we... Four fours. Those are four fours. Those are some yes, boys. Yes, five fives. Five fives after this, yeah. Yep. Uh, do not downplay the ability to just win the game off Urza Saga. No, that's no, what I'm no. learning yeah. uh, as I play Suffolk Breakfast. Yeah, Saga's good. I mean, that's why it's one of the reasons it, it sees so high, you know, so high. Too much points. It just went, yeah. Everybody gets an artifact package now. Yeah. And he's got more than enough lands in hand. He, like, I got Ren 6, I'll pitch whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Diamond is really in an interesting spot as it's also really good with the initiative package since the first thing gets you a land. You don't care, right? Like you're like, okay, cool. I'm gonna play I'll this go diamond. Down for it. Yep. I'll pitch that land. I'll pitch this land. Then turn two. I'm playing white plume. Yep. And I'm just gonna go get, get a land, land to yeah. replace it, right? So, so diamond's kind of in an interesting heyday in some ways, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm gonna play a mountain. Yep. And Mason's perfectly fine exactly. taking the slow road to victory here, only attacking. Yeah. yeah no, he could only attack with the one. Oh, he replayed the saga. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the saga back. So he's just gonna. Yep. We're on the saga plan now. Um, yeah. Cycle to try him. I'd expect him to attack for five more here. Yeah, he's still got then, strip mine in hand, so he can play. And then ten the next turn. He can play strip mine here, take out the land. Yeah. Yep. We're gonna 
Bolton to four. Mm-hmm. And Thrag Tusk goes back to nine. Uh, and that is it. Swag Tusk! That ends the game. That, 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 we just, Kyle should pick him up at this point. Uh, we're swinging in for ten. Is Kyle at five? Okay. Yeah, Kyle's at five. Get strip mine back just in case. Mm-hmm. Swag Tusk does his job. Yep. That that attack for be it five or ten was kind of superfluous because you you win on the next turn no matter what. Right. Um, it all depends on how well you think you're going to be able to control the burn player. And since they're on zero land, yeah, swing with both. Thrag Tusk is probably in my top ten cards played ever in like sixty card formats. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Because I played it in Legacy oh. and Nick Fitz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I respect that deck. And so far as people did some really weird things like trying to get uh, Valka in there. Yeah. Uh, last time I ran Nick Fitz in Legacy, I ran um, Rook Thar. Wait, Rook Thar, the Unbound, where you throw lands? No, the one where they uh, take six every time they cast, cast a spell. Yeah. Yep, that one. So I, against Dredge, I went turn two Rook Thar. Yep. And they looked at their hand, looked at their graveyard, looked at their hand, looked at their graveyard, and went, <sighs> whoop! Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I think LED is the card I've played most in Legacy. Yeah, so but between Wait. Standard and, Le- and Legacy. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's in, easily in my top ten. Oh, setting, yeah, setting aside lands, LED, and then after that, maybe Lightning Bolt. Yeah. Um, P- Plow Under is another of my top ten most played cards ever. Oh, I love that card so much. I played. It, I used to play it in Extended all the time. Oh, I played it in Standard and Tooth and Nail when it was in this weird, <laughs> like... We were in that era where Julian Nijin won Worlds with Green White Slide, which okay. I maintain was like one of the worst versions of that deck um, to control Affinity. Because if you, if anybody had realized that Withered Wretch was still a card, mm-hmm. you could tooth and nail out Withered Wretch and then just dump seven mana into it and exile the Red White Slide player's graveyard, or sorry, Green White Slide player's graveyard, and then they could do nothing. They right. had no deck after that. I just didn't, I didn't quite get that. Um, but Plow Under did the same thing against those decks too and nobody was playing that card yeah and Mark actually faced off against my uh, when, Mo- when Fred Modern first hit I plow under Mark like seven times in the same game it was just oh. like plow under Eternal Witness plow yep. under Mystic oh you got it spell on my Mystic Snake that Richard Cryptic Command <laughs> return the Mystic return the- Crystal Shard back in my Eternal <laughs> yeah. Witness yep I did I played the, uh, Crystal, the, Witness. the yep. Crystal Witness deck the Eternal Witness deck uh, Mark Eternal says that Command. was unenjoyable it was it was <laughs> That's that's <laughs> oh Ragavan. Yeah, no, Rag- no, that's a good, that's a good start. Yep. Now uh, Ren Six, obviously a good answer to that. Uh, he's got the Assassin's Trophy. He's got the Witherbloom Command. Again, may praise this card. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're gonna get one. Everybody yeah. gets one. Yeah. Off Ragavan. Witherbloom, he's got it. Uh, Silkington, ETB untapped. Monastery Mentor skewer you to seventeen. Deal you to four to thirteen. Ooh, Assassin's Trophy is another way to deal with Ragavan. Yep, abrupt gone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There it is, 13. Okay, he's at 13. That's a good board. I mean, it's like, like, this is what the red deck wants. And Yeah. That was four out of the six required damage from yeah. creatures. We are in a very good spot if, if we are Kyle. We can let our spells just kind of, like, take it home from here. Yeah. Hopefully. Um I mean, because if you're running 16... That, that is Silkinson, right? That's not um, Den of the... That's, that's not Embreath? Or is, Castle Embreath. That is Embreath, okay. All right, Renin 6, minus 1 on your Ragavan. We have a treasure token, so you're, we have three mana available right, right yeah. now. Right, we're, we're going to kill the Renin 6, so you're losing the yep. Renin 6. Most likely. Oh, nice. Turn 3 Chandra. Yep, that is definitely a way to kill the Renin 6. That is brutal. Okay, so Using we plus Chandra mana. Yeah. Figure and pump it. Pump one. That's why the figure didn't make sense to us to begin with. We didn't know that Chandra was coming. Yeah, I mean, it's still okay. I mean, I, I actually think the figure's solid. Like, as a threat, I think figure's underdrafted. Yeah. Just because it's just, it's kind of like a hex drinker. It's not as good. Yep. But it's just one of those that, like, yeah. I think that those cards in general, like the new black one from. Um, oh, the level up one. Yeah, yeah, the one that draws cards, basically. The one that draws cards. Yeah. Like, I think those, those cards are generally I play that in, uh, under underrated, and right. I think figures the best of them still mm-hmm. uh, outside, of, like the green, the green, white, black one. And all uh, that. The the black one, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the black one works well when in concert with a number of other cards. Right. I play a three mana the the new braids. I play that as a commander, right. 
and it works really well on that because it keeps your hand flush so it allows you to continue to play out permanents but this may the order we saw things drafted makes a lot of sense whereas if you were to go with four mana chandra people might have started eating so away at some Grist, of your red cards nothing to sack so gris can't kill either of no these. we're probably going to mill hope to hit a creature and make a bug right right that's what we're looking at here gris the hunger tide right that's the plus one yeah he milled, uh, hit the, hit, lost a mox, which hurts, and then. Well, which one? Oh, jet. Yeah, that is. Yeah. That, that is. Um, I mean, it's not the end of the world because he wants to draw removal. But, yeah, yeah. You know, clearing that off the top. It depends on what's in his hand. To be yep. honest. Yeah, if we have lands for days in hand, then I think we're fine losing the mox. Yeah. We, we clear that off the top. The goblin guide off the top there. Yeah. This is, this one's not good for Mason. So we we're not a bit. Ooh, Legion War Boss. Mason. Boss, we got a problem. No, they got a problem. That is... Mason is up 1-0 currently, but Kyle is looking to even this pretty swiftly. Yep. Thrag Tusk, not enough mana. Thrag Tusk off the top off. Thrag Tusk costs about four and a green. Yeah. So we got two more turns. Yeah. We're dropping down to single digits. Yep. Where are we now? Five or six? Yeah, like yeah. I think it's a five. I mean, yeah, we're, we're just... We're Dobbs here. I mean, even just a Chandra roll up does. Yeah, and we have Castle and Breath with punch pumps the team like. Yeah. I think is Mason in Reed Duke mode, which is just the moment you enter combat. I'm gonna scoop it up or. Probably. Okay. I don't know how what kind of player he's, Mason is when he, it comes he, to the game. Yeah, he'll he, he scoops. He's not afraid to scoop. Okay. Because there are some people who are just like, no, no, I'm not yeah. gonna scoop until you actually show me it. Right. And that's the Reed Duke style of things. It's like, I'm do I'm dead to combat. All I have to do is enter combat and then right. I scoop. Yeah. What planeswalker? Oh, that's Mace can do. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna plus. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna make another try to make another blocker. We do. So we have two. We have a blocker for two of the two twos. So we're gonna no figure is a three. Is it a two two or a three three right three, now? Three three. Currently. So we're gonna block five. Then off. Let's say the the goblin token that's going to get mentor. Mm -hmm. We're gonna block and the figure. So now we're going to take Guide, and we're going to take Swift Spear. That's three. That puts us to one. We're still dead to oh, the boss. Yep, oh, there it is. God. <laughs> yeah. She's got me on my knees. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Begging, darling, please. please. Oh, he was a little higher. He was at, must have been an eight. Okay. And then he just took a one off of something. So there. two, three, four, five, six. I think that's still exactly I think still dead. Legal, but... Layla will be a 3-3 three, three after trigger. Yep, that's what I was thinking was that. So Layla's 3, Warboss is 2, that's 5, Guide is 7, Mentor is 1, because you're soaking up the figure and a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. I didn't even uh, count the additional 1-1 one, one Goblin. <gasps> Can you Mentor onto Monastery Swift Spear and just make it a 2-2? Two, two? He could have if it was, as long as he hadn't cast it. Create a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, cast uh, Layla. Yeah, that, that, that won't trigger Mentor, so he could have managed to run to that. Yeah, you can. Oh, that's cool. So instead of just pumping a goblin, you can just pump <laughs> the yeah. Monastery Mentor and make it a little more hardy. Yeah. yeah. Running the numbers. Okay, that's six. One, two, three. Four, and five, we're taking dice off Planeswalker. Yeah, I think yeah. It, that was eight damage before Yeah. yeah. It's like, I'm going to block these two big ones. <laughs> Yeah, but that's that. the kind of start we need from Kyle. We need yeah, Kyle's creatures to do. I mean, that... That's what this deck can do. Though. That's what the mono red deck can right. do. That is the threat. Now, can it do it consistently? That's and through, the question. And through answers. You and know. Like, it's not like Kyle built his deck to not do that. That's just the variability of the mono red deck. Sometimes right. you do just draw all your right. creatures and you get stuck. Yeah. I mean, Ragavan is the key. I mean, yeah, a, a turn one Ragavan. <laughs> oh, 100%. Yeah. And that's actually one of the cool parts about a limited format compared to Constructed is like, you don't want Ragavan in your burn deck. It just doesn't yeah. work out well for you in that regard. You want it, you do not want to be casting their spells. You don't want the extra treasure. Right. You, ra you would rather be getting the cards off the top of your own library. But you don't, also don't have uh, Layla in, right. uh, in Modern. No. I got his legacy. They're in Vintage. They're in the older you get, the better it gets. So we're... Uh, I don't... So... They're they're going into game three, and if you take a look at sideboards, which I don't think... Yeah, I mean, just so he probably brought the Unholy Heat in. Yep. And that's really it. Mystical Dispute does nothing, right? That's right. Not... No. He doesn't care about the counterspell against him. 
Because it only, it only does blue. Okay, well, it does anything. It's just cheaper against blue. Yep. Like, so sometimes you can make deck. But like, I thought it was blue or red. Yeah, I was I, thinking of the other one. So I think he Aether literally Gust. just brings in the heat. Yeah. I thought it was Aether Gust. Okay. If it was Aether Gust, that, makes, that would make sense. Right. Ring. Yeah, other, I think it's just on Holy Heat. Yeah, Aether Gust is green or red. And yep. Then... And then for Kyle, we have a lot of options, actually. For yeah, Kyle. I mean. Uh, if you want to play a longer game, you got Court of Ire. Uh, we have experimental friends. You just go off the top in a longer game, uh, yeah. but strip mine's gonna make that one. Uh, but like, but you can't sideboard scared. Like, Mason right. has one strip mine and one wasteland, but wasteland doesn't get your basic mountains. So it's just kind of like, which one do you wanna? Goblin um, guide hits. But I okay. Here's my robber of the rich. Here's something else, and here's two lands. One is of which I okay? believe is castle. I, I thought it was death right, but yeah. So is that okay. So he had a he ran out an ignoble, and then it got bolted. Yep. Okay. Then, I, is that what is that behind the uh, the robber? <sighs> it's dark. It's a is dark it wheel. Arts, I don't know. It might be the way he split it. Yep. Yeah. Wheel. Cool. Beta art. Okay. And then that's the deep root. Oh, that's right. How? It's three two. Three two. Okay. So that does present uh, a two, two three. three. Yeah. Okay. So it does prevent a very yeah. stalwart blocker. You cannot swing into that thing with your. Uh... Yeah. No. Two three solid against that hand, especially, and he knows what's in the hand other than the the one unknown. Yeah. Um, hey, look, you got to bolt the bird. You can't not. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to stall the board here a bit. Now, 2 3 is not going to hold up too long against the red deck. No, but uh, a 2 3 has enough toughness that it does stymie the red deck enough right. to buy you sometimes the necessary turn. You're going to read the robber and say, What the hell is this? We have a reader. <laughs> While they are doing that, we can also read it. So if you have less hands than your opponent, you exile the top card of their deck. But we both have two hands. Um, and then if a rogue has done damage this turn, or attack, a rogue has attacked this turn, you can cast that card. And pay, ah, okay. Pay it, and then it's a different color. And it revealed a Leobold. Yep. Okay, so... So it took out the robber. So the Leobold's gone. Well, we attempted to equip the Ember Cleave. Oh, okay. And we got... Uh, Assassin Trophy. Assassin. Okay, okay. Uh, we got a Decade for that one. Yeah, Decade. Good. Yep. So Ember Cleave equip is what? Six on its own? Uh, By itself, it's infinite, uh, Infinity, I believe. Three. Just three. Okay. That's not too bad. Oh, that costs six. It costs Infinity right. to play. So once it's on board, it equips pretty... Right. Eh, pretty easily. Means can boo. We're going to roll them up. You just huck Boo at the... Mm, you can't huck. You, you, you know, cause if you, huck, you to roll them up, to get the three counters, you have to do the action. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, it only comes in as a 1-1? One, one? Yeah. Space one hamster? One. Yeah. 1-1 one, yeah. one, trample hasty space hamster. Got it. Go for the eyes, Boo! <laughs> this is an interesting turn. I would like to know what's in Kyle's hand because a singular... Not a singular... Big. I see no path to victory for Kyle anymore. Well, I mean, you basically have the hand cam, so that's kind of... All right, so there's a Witherbloom that a Witherbloom cannot destroy the Embercleave, but he trade... Uh, that should not have traded... Will you guys pause game? Pause game, Mark. Why wouldn't... I thought it was 3-3, three, um, three, first strike. Embercleave gives what? Plus, plus one, plus one. Oh, never, mind. never mind, you guys are good. Unpause. Yeah. I just think it was plus two, plus two. I just think it was a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, okay. I was thinking it was a 4-4, four, four, it hit a 4-4. Four, four. The 3-3 three, three versus 3-3. Three, because three. Yeah. Ember Cleave is plus one, plus one, and double strike, so you get three. Right. Oh, yeah, three and then six. So yeah, yeah, so no matter what. The drain here off of the Wither Bloom actually pretty relevant for this time. And he doesn't have any hair to dry. It's like Charlie Brown. He's going to mill himself three. He's going to return just to land. Play the Taiga. Uh, this format is Vintage Rotisserie Draft. So it's kind of like a Vintage Cube, if you're familiar with that. But instead of drafting from a set of cards, we drafted from every single card available in the Vintage format following the Vintage Ban list. Yeah, so eight nerds sitting around on a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And you can follow that link there from Katerberg that gives us details as well. Yep. So this matchup is Mono Red versus Four Color Good Stuff. Yep. Uh, so this is going to play out like a more comprehensive Vintage Cube draft. You're going to see a lot more focus in the list if you stick around and watch this. Somewhere between case. Vintage Cube and CEDH? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no problem. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, when any questions, let us know. I'm Stephen Hagen. And I'm Peter Kritzberger. And we are here with St. Lotus number 12. Mm-hmm.
Summer edition. Yeah, should be some more, but uh, you know, COVID yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. slowed us down. Yeah, we got like we got like one in before everything shut down. Yeah, the differences can get you if you come in just thinking it's going to be exactly the same. Yep. But. Uh, the, the podcast that I do, MTG Podcast, actually talked about basically the difference between Vintage Cube and Vintage Rotisserie Draft a couple of weeks ago. Um, we spent like an hour talking about it and how like a lot of players that come over from Vintage no. Cube actually get caught up in that difference. And um, he can just fling a hamster at him for the kill? Yeah, I think that's it. Like Caterberg said, there was no way to win after um, Mason deployed yeah. the second blocker. Like that two... The three toughness really does get you yeah. uh, as the burn player. Um, and All right. Mason takes it down 2-1 mm-hmm. to start off driving the burn. But a, a solid showing from uh, Kyle. Right? Yeah. So Kyle puts on a solid showing. You say that, Katerberg, um, but without Jeff here, that's really the only single question we get this time as opposed <laughs> to like half of Jeff's list. Like, Wait, how does that card work? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we can cut back to us and talk because we don't have an immediate. Yeah, we'll be uh, lining up another game here. So where do we go? Back here. Yeah, and then cut. Yep. Bang! Oh, right. our beautiful faces. Look at us. Gorgeous in our bald and beardedness. That's true. <laughs> and hattiness. And hattiness. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so that one played out kind of like I expected it to. Yeah. Uh, who was going first was seemed really relevant. Yep. Um, game one, it was really about the strip mine. Uh, I mean, he got him down to like four game one, uh, you know, with the burn. Yep. Uh, but Thrag Tusk pulled him back up to nine and just put him out of reach. Yep, and this yeah. is that wasn't even a game where burn left a couple of points on the table to be no. found somewhere else. Like, oh, if I review my match, I'm going to find the no, better line no, to play. He, like, no, ev- no, no, no. Everything, everything he could was there yep. at him. So. Yep. Um, um, this is kind of a, a good example of the critical mass ness that you need for burn and how sometimes it doesn't always work out in a format like this because a, 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 a searing blaze in game three right. would have been very good but there's only one in the list right and if, if you had a land that turn or not makes it better all, all, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly that's all the difference too right. yeah so it, these are all ways and measures that you have to take into account when you build this deck and it's going to be one of the pitfalls but it can also be one of the strongest decks in the format if you don't run up against somebody who's right. like drafting a bunch of x3s for two mana like, yeah and that's yeah, just why Burn has never had it. It's heyday, right? It's yeah. It, it just runs out of gas. There are there are. It's getting closer, right? There's more cards, right? You can do the wheel thing. Uh, you've got the. Did he take it? No, he didn't take the. Which card? Uh, uh, light up the stage. No, I did not take light up the stage. But I, th- I think you need more of that. I'm going to refill my hand stuff like Ragavan Robber things like that help with it. Yes. Yeah. Hundred um, percent. Absolutely. But the, the refilling. Yeah. There's no real. There's no idea of like, go again. Right. With burn, you're just always on that plan. So you need either... I keep saying creatures have to do like six at a minimum because you need your creatures. And if you're going to build as heavy a creature list as Kyle did, then you've got to be able to pave the way. And I think Kyle's got one too many lands. Uh, how many... 15 two, plus, 15 plus, plus a mox. Two. Yeah, you could probably cut on one. Yeah. Uh, 16 total. Field of Ruin is decent. Uh, I like it. But also, like, you're... If you're playing a bunch of mountains, like there's the opportunity cost of a Valakut as well. Like yeah. that might have been an, an, an interesting look. Um, but this is a good example of why like mono red might not always be the safest play. Right. And taking some removal from another color, black or white, does does afford you That's some honest. opportunity. Yeah. Um, you don't want to take swords because you don't want to give them back to life. But um, right. path yeah. to exile. Silver and I mean, just some card draw, some green from card. Yep, yeah, you can do that too. Um, like any any amount of removal can often help you pave the way for your creatures because you don't get a lot of the well and if you're removing creatures are you throwing it at their face which you kind of want to be but that's why like that's what i'm saying in kyle's yeah. list in particular we have 13 mm-hmm. creatures and they're all very high impact and even if kyle were to have drafted and played uh chain lightning right right and some of the other odds and ends cards would that have been able to what is the critical mass of spells that he would have needed to get through the two three uh, all right, Mason versus Mike, and Mike just won as well. So we have Mason's list in front of us. Okay. And we're looking at Sultai good stuff. So if we bring up Mike's list for the first time today, and then we take a look, we can see what Mike is doing. And so I think this is the, this is one of the decks that was just kind of in front of us. We understood what was going on. It's pretty clear cut. Yeah, um, Mike came in for an interview. Um, he knew he wanted to play around with the One Ring when he came in. That's the one thing he knew. That's here. Good. Um, and then, so his plan is to kind of uh, try to counter a lot of spells and get infinite turns. Yep. And then just win off that. So. Okay. And then we see we have both keys in here, which can untap the one ring. Right. Uh, and time vault. Right. That's 
Yep, that's the tuck away card. Yep. So there's definitely uh, some really nice opportunity there for Mike to take advantage of that. And then we basically have a fantastic mid game. Yep. Uh, N- Nissa can run away with games on its own. He's not really ramping it out, obviously. Looks like the wrong deck. Is that the case? Let me cut over here. Mike Viviano? That's oh, yeah. third deck. Yeah, I, I clicked on. Yeah, Mike Viviano. That's, that's the right deck. No, that's Mike's deck. Yeah. He started off with Time Walk, Time Vault. Well, that's the link on the sheet. All right, we'll click that link. This is almost the exact same URL that we're looking at right now. This is the exact same list we just saw. Yeah. Are we just... Oh. Oh, it's showing Mason, not... Oh, it's showing worldsy things over there okay okay that is actually just a problem that i do not know how to rectify at the moment so we will come back we will cut over to gameplay and then figure out the mox field thing in a yeah. moment okay because we have the right list set up but it's just streaming the wrong list okay <laughs> now we see it i said we were looking at the right deck yep <laughs> oh i wonder if it's just attached to one of the to the wrong tab haha ha. okay that's good to know we can we'll fix we'll figure that one out later okay all right, so we got people shuffling up, counting. What are we looking at here? Who are we keeping? What are we keeping? Who are we wearing? Custom ink. He sees lands. He sees a Thrag Tusk. He sees some stuff he flips fast that I can't make out. Oh, I know what was going on. And it looks like Mike is takes a mole. And we are running back the London Mulligan. Yeah. Because this is competitive magic. This is not multiplayer magic. Magic, the way it was meant to be played. By Richard Garfield. All right, so we've got an ignoble. We're going to start. And we're going to mental oh. misstep. That's. That yep. seems like an important play. And that ignoble was walking through the forest and just took a slight wrong step somewhere. And that was it. That was the end of the days for him. Broke a leg. Now he's on the disabled list. Three, three, three games, or at least one game. Yeah, he just wasn't paying attention. It was yeah. a mental misstep. Yeah. He's on the deal for one game, and that's going to put Mason behind. Uh, does I see a death right in hand maybe there? Yeah. No. You can't spell Pierce that one. That maybe it wasn't a death right. What was oh, it? Oh, I okay. I okay, okay. Into a triome, I believe. Yeah, I okay into triome. We're going to pass the turn. So we still got Counterspell, Archmage Charn, Cryptic, Mana Drain, Remand. I don't know if we're in a spot where we want to cast Mono Drain, but man, Mono Drain on a 1 would be fantastic. Or a 1 Mono Mono spell would be fantastic. Oh, we got that Archmage Charm at the ready. Yeah, so I don't know if Mike has enough counters to go with his plan. Like, that's the question, right? But, uh, you know, started already, started strong. Ooh, are we going to hit that with the Archmage Charm? Well, he's got triple blue. Well, you, might, you might want to take it. <laughs> that's true. Just wait a second and take it. Nope, we're going to snap. Nope. Target? Misstep or spell? Yeah, you got target the misstep. The spell pierce, he's got the mana to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, that too. And scoos with the main deck scoos. Yep. That's nice valley creature. You can eat your own, yeah. eat your own stuff. Well, it's not, it works against Deathrite Shaman, but. Right. And. A different way. All right. Volt. Okay. Key. Oh, and that's that. We call that natural. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's the natty light? All right. So I, I figured out the problem. I, I know. Right. I know what I did wrong. All right. All right. We got to be over here in this window. Oh. Okay. See, that's that's the key. So, one moment while we run up the scoreboard on this one, and then we will cut over the mox field lists. That's Mason's, yeah. Yep, so just gonna make sure I pick the right one. It's 12 slash Mox Field. You know, let me just bang, Sorry. bang, bang. Well, if I can't, if I close all those out, and everybody can hear but the behind the scenes chatter from me. It's okay. Gives them the front stage, backstage. It's yeah. Gotham to say. It gives us a sense of authenticity. Yes. All right, cool. All right, so here we go. We're gonna cut over. Yeah. So, so here we have Mason's list, right? Yeah. 
So we're looking at, at uh, this. Veil obviously comes in. Oof. Mystical Dispute comes in. Needle. Um, yeah, Needle comes in. Probably Grudge. And Oof. Yep. He's got a lot. A lot, yeah. Definitely. So then, maybe too much. You know, kind of a question of what do I want. Mm -hmm. uh, command's really good against him, but also being a sorcery hurts a little bit. Um, so maybe Command comes out. Uh... I think it's harder to figure out what the sideboard out. Than yeah, the that's the in. issue, right? Like, I think that's his biggest issue is he's got so much good coming in. Like, I think Gris can come out. That's what I thought. I was looking at Gris and like Endurance is good, but the only it, Snapcaster is a way to interact with right. Grey from Mike's end. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, but definitely a significant amount of cards that can come in. And this is one of the challenges, right? Like, yep. You can have like an amazing sideboard and then you're just like, oh, okay, well... Particularly on these kind of engine-y decks yep. sometimes, <laughs> where, you know, it's just like, all right, well, what engine piece do I take out? That's kind of what it is, is like, how am I going to shave um, right. what's already here? And a lot of these answers are either permanent-based or instant speed, so you can you might want to take out some of your sorcery-based solutions for something a little more permanent. Um, I, don't think we, I don't think we would shave a soul ring if we're bringing in Collector Roof. The opportunity cost on soul ring is just so high. They're both one-ofs. Um, technically, Oof is a two of with Green Sun Zenith, but unironically, Forest into Soul Ring on tap Zenith for Oof is a play you can make. So uh, this someone said it looked like Dom was going to finish ninth, but two people on eleven three and one ID'd or unintentionally drew, yep. and he snuck in over him. Oh my god, that's dude fantastic! Unintentionally drew, yep. Because he went started zero and two, yeah. and then top eighted. Um, there is a handful of generic mana. Um, in batches of two, you have Minsk and Boo. We have Thrag Tusk. Uh, we also have Terra Sunder when kicked, so that's an option. Uh, like I said, Green Sun Zenith for two off of Sol Ring on turn two gets you oof. Terra Sunder uh, instant or, or sorcery? Instant, I thought. Okay, so that's instant. good because that yeah. can hit. Yeah, I, yeah, I think the yeah the opportunity cost on taking out Sol Ring or uh, the cost on taking out Sol Ring I think is way too much. Yeah, it's Com a tough call. It is. Um, I think I would rather have Soul Ring over one of the, the Moxin, which is weird to say. But if I was going to do... He's got a lot of color there. I don't know. But if we were, if we were considering, like, all right, Oof is going to shut off our artifacts. Right, right. right? Like we want to shave those. Um, I just don't think you can really afford to take out any of them. You just want to take out anything that's narrow. Abrupt Decay is not too narrow. A lot of what you need to hit right. falls under the, the mana value threshold. Right. Like three. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you side out Green Sun. Yeah, it could. That could be because it only gets. Does it get, oh. I mean, it gets. It gets. It gets. Deep, you know, uh, endurance ignoble. It, it sets them up good, but yeah. it doesn't do much beyond setting them up. Yeah. I mean, it gets oof. So bringing in oof. That's what I'm saying. Good. Like Green Sun gets oof. So you have to account for that and making sure you get oof as fast as possible. Right. The Moxin and the Soul Ring are like tantamount to that. But point. I mean, the thing is, is like, yeah, you're just going for the he draws the natural bolt because he doesn't have. He went turn one time time walk so he doesn't have the ramp mana that you, so oof has yeah. shuts down one thing i think i would rather bring in some of the, the few other things okay. over that yeah that makes sense and then you're still in that kind of quandary of like what do you want to take out all right if we take a look at mike's deck though all right have... so mason is down one down one game yeah. take a look at mike's deck real quick while they're figuring out mulligans um borrower seems good stern scalding yeah probably pass on that yeah um, Maybe a worm coil. Dismember, possibly. Yeah. Hydroblast could be okay. Yep. I don't know. Sure. Uh, yeah, there's a, like a lot there's of you read. Yeah, that's that's one of the interesting things that, um, for like four color decks, even in legacies. Like you can bring in your hydroblasts and your um, your bebs if you want to against them because the red spells are some of the most impactful spells. Right. But there's an opportunity cost there. Don't forget, Hex Drinker is the best channel target there is. You are not wrong. <laughs> so it's like, what do you want? Oh, yeah. If if you're Mike and you're looking at this, you know, you could. Mason has, is it just Green Sun Zenith? Like, Cage says not going to do a whole lot if we bring that in. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't stop lands from coming in from the yard, yep. so. Well, the uh, Red and Six puts him back in hand. Okay. So I was just thinking about how to, like, what are weird ways to cheat Grist in? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. No, I don't disagree with Manish Fah. It's being a little tongue-in-cheek. Oh, good eye. Okay, there. He had oh, he had Volkey natural, too. Yep. Well, that's why you counter... Yeah. 
Oh, he's <laughs> he joking. Yeah, he was like, oh, look, I'm, I'm taking the art. Yep. You're taking the art to Charm, right? Right, we're taking that one. Yeah. Um, we That was something we were questioning, Katie Berg, as we were watching the draft. Like, oh, and strip mine yeah. into Death Ride. What can you do with the channel? Like, you have Ulamog, you have the One Ring, you have Hex Drinker in the main, um, and another Ulamog in the board. So. Now, does he have any way to rebuy the vault? The I was vault. looking for that. He does not main deck. No, I don't. I don't there's no Emery here. Right. I don't even know if there's one on the side. No, he didn't. He, Emery was undrafted. Nope. I was just looking for anything that rebuys yeah. it. From yeah, the I don't side. think he's going to rebuy. Uh, it. Commit to memory. You can memory it back. Oh, okay. You, but it, that's a that's a very long. That, that, yeah, game. commit memories. That's a, <laughs> that's a I'll memory it back into my deck and hope I draw it. Exactly. That's a. So that's a long plan. Hey man, charm. I don't think there's anything else that would. No. Seasless Hunger is the one you're playing in the main, so it's not like you could even mill over the Eldrazi to shuffle it back in. So you got Oof shutting down the top at this point. Look, you try and drive the top down. It doesn't always work out. Get rain. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm gonna do that thing. Yep. Can we remove the oof? Um, Cryptic Command? Yep. We can't seal with Archmage's Charm. Nope, can't. Uh, cryptic Command? Uh, uh, yep, I think that's it. I think you're right on that one. It's just Cryptic Command and that's it. Yeah. Oh, uh, Ulamog. Okay, yeah. Another long game plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when your game plan is uh, counter a lot of spells and go for infinite turns, the, you know, losing the infinite turns, turn one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, uh, agreed, Plum. Um, we have an Ulamog in the main and a second Ulamog in the board, so my assumption is, is and the Worm Coil in the board, my, so my assumption is both of those cards made it into the main. You can't I-OK -okay the creatures. You know, it may cost a little too much for that. So my expectation is that we're playing a long game here. Or... Yeah. We think Mike is playing a long game, and then he just ran headlong into. Uh, Didn't have the middle of step this time. Nope. Now we're gonna make some constructs. Yeah. We're down to twelve on Mike's end. There's another one. So we have two, two, two constructs. You'll get something I can't use, but it does pump a construct. Yep. There's no way he sided board. He sideboarded out everything. No. Pithing needle on. You're just gonna name vault out of spite. Hex in case. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. So. Just don't know. Like at this point in time, if one you're ring. Mason, yeah, I don't know what's in Mason's hand, right? So I don't know I mean, what you're afraid of. One ring doesn't do much anyway. So. Nope. Because it shut off. That's why I said yeah. it. Vault out of sight. I, I, he might have said the, the some of the, the fast mana though. The needle might be the. Yep. Yeah. In for three. Yeah. Oh no. Five. Four. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there it is. All right. Mason with Not as quick as the uh, vault on natural, but pretty nope. quick. Yeah. I mean, there's a number of lock pieces by Mason as kind of expected when you go through that board yeah. and you're like alright what are you going to do against the vault player bring in everything that stops key vault yeah. right yeah so with the what are the discard does Mason Mason's got the IOK the thought sees do you have any other discard let us take a look no no with a boom command is not okay. discard Yep, so we're just waiting on, on those, really. Yeah. So I was just saying, like, you know, does without the uh, mental misstep, how much game does he have against, you know, the turn one discard if he hits the vault? Yep. That's it. Uh, you also have, and then you have the three destruction spells. Right. The three yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got ample amounts yeah. of ways to deal with it once it's down, as long as he has the mana up. Mm -hmm. But um, with Terra Sunder, Assassin's Trophy, Abrupt Decay. Maelstrom Pulse, just to start. Yeah. Right. Well, Pulse is a sorcery. Sorcery, yeah. So. Oh, looks like Mike is... Changing two cards, so yeah. he will. The vampiric might be another one he sides out, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I like I like the idea. You might, 
if you look at just the instance alone, you have four ways to deal with any of that because of the vampiric. Right. It's just like collector oof and green sims and it's two copies. No, you for sure. You just up your count. If we look at grist, is that just creatures when you minus? Planeswalkers are creatures. Or target creature or planeswalker. Yeah. Okay. So a grist would have been one I would have taken out for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. agreed. I, I forgot. I thought it was a permanent. And then we have good old Oko. Yeah, which. I mean, a lot of times they're not gonna when they have they, they, if they're kept it naturally they often have to hold it held it back to do what he just did there. Yep. So I mean, but if they had, if he plays it out, then Oko will take care of it. Yep. So there's the 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 chance the chance that Oko might have come out as well. Yeah. Yeah. So technically, a sorcery span answer. So yeah, why would you? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Imagine that though. The strip mine lock is very powerful, and thus far has won Mason at least two games. Yes. Yeah. Well, three games. Two games. <sighs> So we don't even need to worry about the strip mine recursion from anything else but W six. That is, that'll, that'll do it. More than enough. I mean, if he gets the deep root going, that's butter. And that's what I really like that he drafted. I know he and I were both big on that card when yeah. it came out. I was thinking about it a couple weeks ago, and it's like, oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> I don't remember it's, that one. Yeah, no, it's a really good card. A, a, a similar but different enough option compared yeah. to ramming out back excavator and yeah. the fact that it gives you power. But the three toughness is a lot. Yeah, right. Surreal one's nice. Yeah, um, and then you. Then you may return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Yeah. For the low cost of surveilling one. Yeah. And it puts it in play, which is nice. It's not even yeah. like it's not even like sorry. it turns your hand. Yeah, sorry. For the low the low cost of connecting. Right. Alright. I saw a maelstrom pulse there. Yep. I see a needle, I think. I think there's a W six in there too. That's a bail, not a needle. All the way on the right? Okay. That was a land he drew. Looks like a Badlands. Or a, not Badlands, a fetch land of some type. The Blood Saint Mire. Yeah, it's like the other Mire was Mire. But... Boop. Swamp Thought Seas. Get him. Oh, there's the Hex Drinker. Um, probably deal with the Drinker. Yeah. There's only an island. I don't see. Yeah. Island, Monitor Rain, Remand. He's already played a Fairy Con Club. Dismember so. and Hex Drinker. There's, so there's no green mana in here. Yeah. So you're going to untap with at best Drain or. He, yeah, he's got enough answers to deal with Hex Drinker. Yep. I, I think you probably take the Drain or the Top. I would think the Top because it gives you extra looks. Is that Dismember? It is Dismember, yeah, I believe. Okay. Which member? That member. Jake beats Kyle, and Jake will be jumping onto stream next. Okay. So tanking over this thought here, this is a... I like the idea of taking the top because you see right now that your opponent is on a hand that cannot cast the premier threat. And he takes the top. Yep. Yeah, I said I like the top of the drain. I think those are... Yeah. Like the the top is the most impactful card, casting and spinning next turn. Yeah. Yep. And now you know how your opponent is going to interact with you over the next two turns. Right, So you, you just don't... Walk I, into it. Yeah, or you just fish him out. You know, you're yeah. just like, okay, let's just get, you know, okay, you can't afford this, get rid of that drain. You know, you... Yep, still can't cast that dang hex, hex drinker. Now he does have the veil in hand as well, so he can d defend against. Defend yeah. on a two drop, he can defend something here. Yep. Right, so, like, he'll get Triumph off the fetch. It's a Zagoth. So if he drops, like, um,. Which one is Zagoth? Uh, Sultai. Got it. So if he drops like a red green source, he can rent. No, he still can rent six and veil, so. But... So we know Mike's hand is unchanged. Top deck the island. Run that out. Yep. He's going to go for the remand. So he is. That's interesting. Yeah, I think you just let the remand go because yeah. yeah, you can just replay it. Yeah, it all depends on which what your plan was for right. that Verdant Catacomb. Yeah, or this could be the the fish him out. Right, right, right. Part that you're talking about. And like it, so, it, I guess it depends. It'll be interesting so to see how. Which deck was Jake? That be kind We will. Uh, mono white, mono white. Yes. Okay. So mono white beats mono. Well, he did have like seventy two. Hate cards <laughs> for the mono red matchup. Yeah. yeah, he hmm. hits. Interesting. 
so many hate cards for the not red matchup. You know what, I'll just leave this here. This will be. And he went for it again. And then that member got that member. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it, like, you want that ignoble, but you're happy to. Okay, so there's the green. There's the hex drinker. There's the hex drinker. Level th level four is our first break point, right? I think so. So he's going to hold up his he's holding his mana drain mana here. Yes. So he levels at one, holds up his mana drain. Three. Three is the first break point. Three is the first one. You could have actually gone to three. He wants the mana drain mana. Yeah, well... Because, like, Maelstrom Pulse... It protected from oh, from his other Pulse yeah. is not an instance of sorcery. That's right. Mike should just draw a green source and play Hexstring. He did! He drew the trap. He was, knew it was coming, Brandon. Is Brandon on stream delay? Is that what it is? Yeah. It's always a little bit delayed. You swing by later and say hi, Brandon. All right, so we can go. We can't. We still can't make it to our final break point, but we can pump two more in, get the protection from, from instance with monitoring backup. Yeah. And kind of call it good in the hex drinker and present a four four threat. Yeah, I mean that's. I mean obviously, like, if he, I don't know if he said it. Out, obviously, I think he said it out grist, but like, once you get protection from instance, it's in a pretty good spot. Yeah. This is where, like, how do I deal with this? I know he's got the drain. I have a veil in hand, mm -hmm. but do I have enough mana to do all the things I want to do? Well, if you have Pithing Needle and this threat is on board, yeah. you could Pithing Needle with Veil back up, and it's, yeah, it's a minor inconvenience. It's a two to one in regards to number of spells played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could draw a card off Veil. Yeah, so it refunds. And now you've locked out the Hex Drinker at he a 2-1. He can't tear asunder it, which I think I see in hand, because he needs four mana for that. I mean, he has the four. Oh, yeah, but he needs on he knows, top of the veil. He knows the drain. Ah, oh, beautiful, though. Beautiful. The Oko. Mm-hmm. And there's the veil. All right, so we're going to Elk the Hex Drinker. Right, and you just cut him off in three mana. You're going to Elk the Hex Drinker. You'll take... Oko will take three next turn. Blue off the tri off the Zygoth Trium, yeah. green off the Taiga, colorless off the Swamp, yeah. and then a green off the Bayou for the Veil of Summer. We're in so Venus. he knew he had a path. It was just which yeah, of the mini path. Exactly. <laughs> it's true. Oko did just give Hex Drinker Holy Strength. It's true. He's the Oko. Mm -hmm. It's me. <laughs> so uh, when I took my son to see Taylor Swift, they bought me a shirt that said... Uh, it's, it's, it's me. I'm, I'm the, the dad. dad. It's me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a very good shirt. It's me. I'm the dad. It's me. Yep. Bonk. Yeah. One dead. King yeah, the fairy conclave popped in there. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So we got two men open. We know we're down to our man to the mana drain. I, I think he, he's got no more known cards. Correct. I was gonna say I think we're out of we're the known. green sun for two. Okay, so if we go back into... Or an oof. That's what I think. We're green center for an oof. Uh, yeah. We could... Scooze and Deep Root. Scooze, Deep Root, Wayfinder, Dothy, Void, Walker are the options in the main. Yeah. Oof is the yeah, option in the, the board. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we know I mean, he's only got the one answer with the cryptic, and I'm assuming Mason's paid attention to that. Uh, it got The drain got veiled, so there's no mana to be had. Yeah. You can't have mana. You can't have mana drain mana if the mana drain don't resolve. No, it gives your spells hexproof. Can't be hex the target proof. of fizzles. Yeah, can't be the target. It's not a legal target. The spell is no longer a legal target at that point. Oh, spells you control can't be countered this way. But uh, drain, I believe, is contingent on the counter. Counter no, it is not. To do oh, counter. All, right. all right. Well, he could have, but they missed that. So, good enough. Uh, fairy conclave. 
Yeah, I guess he would have had one more. Yeah. He would have had one more island untapped. I thought he'd get the small text for Alright, so he's... Oh, this is Vampiric. So he collector doof, Vampiric for whatever that is. Yep. We draw it. He's not going to show it to us because he's a jerk. Strip by the Fairy Conclave. Oh, yeah. They just caught With the green sun in the graveyard? Yeah. yeah. Oh, green sun. How many times have I done that? <laughs> A lot. Yeah. They got it, Swifty, at the exact same time. You are on sync, sir. So he's just passing on it. He's like, I, I got what I wanted off the top. Was it, was it the strip? No, he already had the strip in play. Okay. See, what did I miss? It's a Wither Bloom command, so he's probably going to he's going to destroy target artifact that costs two or less. Yep. And he is going. Uh, that Wither Bloom command is a sorcery. That's a sorcery. Pause game, please. All right. Ah, and now we are reading the card. We are rewinding. <laughs> I was just like, as the world of an advocate of Winterbloom yeah. Command, <laughs> as I said earlier, the only yeah. downfall of this spell is that it's a sorcery. <laughs> is that it's a sorcery. Yeah, so the damage there is that Mason ends up taking three more. Yeah. I mean, he might have another removal spell, too, but he wanted to do the I think he rolled his dice down and then went to his turn. Okay. Now nah, he's going to Witherboom Command. Yeah, he wanted to do the blot and return the strip mine. Mm -hmm. That's what he wanted to do. Or drain. What did he have Vampiric for? Maybe the command? Maybe. Just trying to know what to value up. Mm -hmm. And, oop, Mystic Dispute. Mystical Dispute. Uh, was it... Drain, I guess. Yeah, he went for the drain. Yeah. So he's milling three. Mm -hmm. Then returning a land. Yeah. So we get the strip mine back. Did he do the drain rather than the, the bolt of the elk? Interesting. Boop. Interesting. Did the drain over the elk? Okay. Yep. Okay. I think I would have gone for the elk there, but. Mason's like, you know what? I'm comfortable with my life total. I got everything I need, I guess. All right, time to throw away the oof. We have the soul read that we're safe from time vault. We can't kill the elk. Oh, I can't. Uh, it's an artifact. Oh, non-creature, non-land permanent. Okay, that's why. Right. I was like, it's an artifact. Yep. So our three time walk and he's gonna decay the elk. Yep. Go to two. Oh my god! The tension. Cut it with a knife. Cut it like a knife. Man, this is interesting. So are we just casting? Explore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if he has any cards in hand. They should not be comfortable. No. They're both in... Is, oh, he's not hellbent. Okay. I was like, is Mike hellbent? No, I thought he had a card or two floating around. I just yeah, he does, there. he does. Thrag Tusk is in the yard. From the mill? From the mill. Right. Yeah. Deep Root Wayfinder. Yeah. He's like, what the hell does this card do? Uh, 
We're at an interesting point now where it's going to be three turns before strip mine is extremely impactful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think strip mine's out. You know, out of the. Out of, out of the picture at this point, you yeah. know, like for. Now this is the first pick for Deep Root Wayfinder. I know it was discussed in in previews, but this is the first pick. Yeah. It's done well thus far. I mean, recency bias, but yeah. it's shown up. The the three toughness has proved to be a little more useful than the actual on damage trigger. Growth, Growth spiral. spiral. Okay. Yeah, we're three green, four green sources deep, eight lands on board. All right. Surveil. Surveil. Be pretty useful here. It's like, is this a land that I don't want? No, we're, we're going to go ahead and strip mine. It does come and play tap, though, so. Yep. Cannot use it immediately. So, even if we didn't like that card, we would not be able to shuffle it away. It's just the utility of whether or not we right. wanted a fetch land. Right. We're not out of fetchables yet, if we're a basin. We still have some options. All right, the Manifold Key. Is that the Fairy Conclave underneath the forest, all the way on the left? Conclave's dead. You got Strip Minder Okay, that's what I thought. So we just drew off our Zagos Triome. Yep. No, that Drain for two, actually, yeah. <laughs> proved to be useful. Yeah. Okay, that was a Filter Land, I think. Or Breeding Pool, one or the other. Yeah. It's a Breeding Pool. I okay. We finally get to see what Mike's got going on. Oh, Ulamog. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, that, that uh, strip might look more relevant now. Yeah. <laughs> Mason just counted as well. Yeah. Now we have a goal. Yeah. Torpor Orb. No, the One Ring. We got protection next turn. Yep. Yep. And we get a draw card. And we get a draw. Seems really. Mm hmm. Oh, this match. What what is that? Uh, Mark, what is Mike's die at? It's a little over, and I can't. Nine. Nine. It looks like. Yeah. Nine. Nine. Okay, so we're gonna go to eight. Because it is life loss, right? Oh, yep. Okay, so we are gonna go to eight. Do you go to eight when you draw, or at the end of the turn? When you draw. Okay. So you draw, put a burden counter on it. Yeah. And Yeah, and then in your upkeep, you take a damage for each. Oh, you take damage in the upkeep. Yep. Okay. That's what the question was. Well, I didn't know when you took damage. Okay. The beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life for each burden counter on the one ring. Right. So, yeah, you want to draw after. It's like a smokestack. Right, right. That's another good way to sacrifice the one ring. Yep. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Not stack. Stack taps down, doesn't it? No, it's tank. Yep, yeah, it's stack. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's another good way to stack cards of one ring. There we go, Brandon. Yep. You're, you're watching Brandon. One ring, smoke stack. Right. So we still have protection. Yep. He, he did a double tap. Or he untapped it with the key and drew a second one. Yes. So there's two counters on it now. He'll take two damage in his upkeep. So, so attacking does nothing here. Yep. But we're going to needle the ring. Maybe not. With the Dark Mage's Charm? Yeah. Freshly drawn, too. Pass turn. He's going to go to seven. Mm -hmm. Ooh, my dog. <laughs> well, we're drawing three cards now when we tap this yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're... This is a camera match from hell. Oh, okay. I was gonna say there's a there's Tinker for Key. Yep. If we did not have a way to get rid of this, we are going to lose to it. Yeah. In two turns. Tinker for Bolt. I guess Mason didn't get rid of we didn't draw vault this game, so there was no way to get rid of it. Yeah, he had to get rid of the oof earlier to stay alive. Oh. Oh, oh, the 
Oh my god. That was such a late Besager yep. too. It was like a 35th pick Besager. Yep, just cruising on it. Just oh, waiting on it. That's Ramsom to have which Ulamog's in his hand? 11. 11? That Ramsom to 10 four. mana? Oh no, sorry. Is it 10? Nulamog, Nulamog. Oh, we were already here. Nulamog, Nulamog, Nulamog. Oh, it is 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, he's, 6, He's seven. got an extra turn. Yep. Oh, he's, oh, God. No, that's game, though. Now he's got a blocker. Yeah, they're talking about what the stage he lets you get. Right. Um, the answer to that one is... It's going to block... For a land card with a basic land type, right. so you can go get one yeah, of the yeah, triumphs because yeah. it has all three. And oh my god! <laughs> wow, Mason goes down on that one. Mike takes it in a hell of a game three. Dude, uh, yeah. Just wow! Everything that Mike played over the last like three turns had to had to come in that order. Yeah, because you would lose not in in your upkeep on that turn, but the one after because Mason's going to attack you for two. To put yeah. you in range. Uh, draw, the lot, draw on the extra cards, you know. Uh, <laughs> Ancestral yep. at home. <laughs> yep. Uh, we drew one, two, three, six cards uh, off the ring. Yep. Who knew the one ring? A good card. All right. I'm going to take a quick breather. Send Mike, Mark in. Yeah, yeah. You take a quick breather and I'll come back in and yep, replace you. Me. And then Mark, Mark can stay for yep. a bit. Yep. I think we're just waiting on uh, yep. next match, right? Yep. Yep. All right. Wowzers, Kabowzers. Indeed, that is uh, that is the, the power of the one ring, and I was curious to see where and how it would go in this draft, and it went to a Tinker deck. Surprise, surprise. Uh, do you know who's coming up next? Uh, yeah, we're going to have, it's actually up there right now, Vince Vince versus Jake. Okay. So, Let's, do you mind changing my name? Or maybe Steven can do that? He would have to, because I, okay. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it from here. Okay. I am without power. That's okay. Oh, I had Jake up already. Okay, and then Vince. That okay. match was a wild ride. I loved watching. That, that was match. insane. All right, so Vince is, is this is the deck that we really wanted to see where everything was going. Yeah, so let's up. bring up the Moxfield. Perfect. Oh, uh, did you wanna you wanna Bud? I'll grab one when I right. pop out after this. I got I got to hydrate, and while Bud is great for that, it is. I got my a little a little water for it. Okay. So where did we end up? So we've got a lot of creatures. Yeah, I think... I mean, it was interesting. Vince, rogue, I think, rogue, this time did a much rogue. better job of not okay. overdrafting his main deck. Yeah, I think that's a problem a lot of people have early. Yep. But Vince didn't really have that trouble this time. He actually managed to like really separate the sideboard and main. Yep. Okay. And uh, it seems pretty clear we are on the, like, the Flash slash Rogue strategy, and those mm -hmm. seem to play pretty well together. Um, then we just have the Painter Grindstone combo in here, because why not play an Artifact two-card combo? Right? Sure, we'll why not, yeah. Um, Narset is the only thing that still is kind of curious to us. I guess it's only Windfall. Uh, Windfall. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, Windfall plus Narset is pretty good. Also, I think Narset just, like, punishes. He's drafting as a Punisher card, not yeah. as a proactive card. Uh, for the players, yes. The players' names are set. The casters' names are not set, though. Correct. Okay. I'm not oh. Steven as much as I wish I were. Okay, that's fair. Um, Ashiok just a, a nice value card. It mills off the plus. I mean, sure. shuts down search because we're also playing opposition agent. Yeah, so we have two ways. It notably has a Nambo with all the rogues, though, right? Because it's a mill, but then it exiles. So okay, yeah. it, it doesn't really go for the whole let's let's delirious your opponent and uh, get them up to threshold or whatever the eight version of threshold is. Okay, yeah. Um, and similarly, yeah, it's kind of the making the painter servant grindstone combo is pretty tough for him to actually make happen, given yep. that he doesn't have a lot of tutors and things for yeah, it. Yeah, you just got a kind of, like natural draw. You you've got Narset to kind of help a little bit there and like windfall, but other than that, it's just kind of a, a wing and a prayer. The way I've seen this, he play out mostly is like he will uh, he's just like smashing people down with creatures, and yep. then randomly uh, and then randomly just like, all right, I'm going to Tasha's you and just take out all your wing conditions. Yep, and it's kind of like using that kind of stuff to hold off. Yep. There were some pretty sweet plays where he got to drown in the lock a gristle brand because he milled the opponent. Uh, they had eight cards in their yard, so he just drowned in the lock. A That's what we were, that, random uh, when he drafted drown in lock. We were talking about that. Um, we were we were discussing you know the oppor the opportunity to do so because of the crabs basically. Like can you yeah. get there just off the back of the crabs? And we also I just realized the leyline helm combo is in here as well. So we have two different two yep. card combos in here that you can just draw into. Um, oh, and, and they're starting to play. Yeah. Shoot. Okay. Uh, looks like Vince using the Fable Passage. I know Stephen was not hot on that card during the draft, but 
uh, it worked out pretty well. Yeah, um, you are. By the time this happened, he had already lost C and Prismatic Vista and Polluted Delta. Yep. So the best options were already taken off the table. So now you just kind of fall back into like what's the best worst. And I think that's kind of where we landed here. Totally. And I think, I mean, Vince comes from the EDH background. It makes sense that those are kind of the cards he's aware of. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, like, what's the dumb one that comes, it makes black the turn it comes in and then does blue otherwise? River of Tears? Yes. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of weird cards like that that you don't often see. For sure. And it's something we talked about in a 40 card format. Every land you fetch out of your deck does, sure. does actually thin it by a reasonable amount. All right. Oh, here's Jake with Athalia. Yep. That's definitely going to slow down on Vince's removal, at least. Yes. Uh, there's still the option for Vince to actually put up a decent defense in creatures. His creatures are actually, they rumble. Yep. You, you know, not well, but they do. Uh, okay, yeah, we pay the one for the Sapphire. Uh, let's see, we don't have much, aside from Drown of the Lock, there's no actual removal in this list, correct? Uh, there's Drown of the Lock. Orcish Bowmasters can act as a removal oh, when that's you, right. sometimes yep. and random times. Yep, that's what makes Thalia really bad right now in Legacy when it just comes in and pops your Thalia. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, we got to see, I mean, uh, that Spellbinder? That Sorry, is Elite Spellbinder, yes, yeah. that just got played. And it looks like there's a, a Narset, a Jace, and a Shieldred in hand, along Ugh. with two lands. And you can just hit enter for that as well. Okay. But yeah, Elite Spellbinder does a lot of good work. Mm -hmm. In this one, I guess Jake doesn't really have the kind of discard spells that make Elite Spellbinder a little worse when mm -hmm. you're kind of in a Pakula type build. But yeah, yeah, when you want to just literally squeeze them out of resources and exactly. limit options. Yeah. I would think Shieldred would have been the the look here because it's the one thing that's just going to eventually nug you out of the game. Although you, your opponent can cast it, yeah, next turn. The other options are a lot slower, and you yeah. can swing in because there are no defenses. I could see taking Jace as well, given that you have a lot more creature removal and you have Planeswalker removal. Yep. Um, but I mean, you have five power in play, so Jace doesn't do a whole lot other than mill fifteen. That's kind of what I'm saying. Is you drop, you know, he drops the Planeswalker like we see here. Yep. You know, Elevator is going to go... He effectively has to ultimate up. it right now, I assume. Oh, no, he's going up. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's going to go up. So until your next turn, up to one target creature. Oh, okay. So he's going to shrink the, the spell binder. Yep. And yep. just take two up. Okay. And he did pay the full cost, including the folly attacks. Yes. So we didn't Phyrexian it out. We went... Yep. Full. I'm going to swap over here to, yeah. to pull up Jace. I know a lot of people, including myself, have no idea what Jace does. There's so many Jaces. Exactly. But yeah, this this Jace, I mean, oftentimes you see it just mill 15, especially in a limited format. It can be very strong. Yep. I don't know for sure. It's just uh, Memory Adept as well. Yeah. It just flips 10. Yeah, Brandon calls out the Splashiak. Could be really good in this deck, and I agree. Yeah. I mean, obviously this Ashiak is the best version, the Ashiak Dream Render, but yep. um, the other one could do work. What Not, is it? The Splashiak? Is that the... It, it's the original one. Okay. The, the one Nightmare blue black. Yeah, yeah. That, that steals their creatures. Okay. But it's pretty good in a mill deck. Yeah. Yeah. How, how does Vince get out of this? He doesn't play Toxic Deluge or anything, right? No, that's that's kind of what I was curious about when I was looking for a removal. It's just now your opponent's just going creature, creature, creature. I exactly. think exactly they're too far established already uh, in the main. I don't. Uh, okay, like, we. I don't know everything else. Luris grinding with creatures is a pretty good way to answer this, but at this point, it's, it feels like it's too late to that. Okay, so all of the draws since Elite Spellbinder yes. are unknown to us. If they are one of the two card combos, yep, they, that could be an out. Um, you point. have Thalia on board, Painter, Servant costs one, still Grindstone would cost two, and you are one short from activating that turn. It's two and two, and then three to activate, yeah. Well, Painter's... Because uh, uh, Grindstone costs one naturally, so it'd be two. Yeah, two, and then Painter, Servant Painter's only is a two. one. No. Okay, okay. Because you can't, you can't get both of them with the uh, with Saga. You can get one half. Yep, yeah, you get the Grindstone, and then you just value. Yep, okay, okay, okay. So it's four, so you need seven, and you're at one, two, three, four, five, six right now. Mm -hmm. You're seven without the Thali attacks, so you're not going to get... Th oh, well, sorry. And he's pretty far from the <laughs> Leyline Helm combo as well. Well, you got, yeah, you've got a cast Leyline, which costs five, then, ha then Helm, Helm is... five. Yeah, so you're... That's not happening. This is a matchup where you could randomly see Helm actually grab a creature, but probably not at this stage of the game. We're too far past that. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's Just still at 16 life, though. If I'm reading that correct. Right. Yes. Um, we're just the one... Oh, we... How did it so... We sw because we, we minused on Elite Spellbinder. So he's only been right? attacking for two. Yep. This is going to be the first turn where we're actually going to get a decent... Uh, a decent rumble. Right. I assume, I assume we grabbed Cauldra. I didn't actually see if it was Cauldra or Batterskull. 
I don't know if he has both in the, in the list. Yeah, if if you are looking at your opponent's list ahead of time, I I would assume if you're Jake, you would look for removal. When you see none, you would get Cauldra. Uh, sure, yeah. Does he play both in the main deck? That is a good question. Yes, they're both yep. in the main. Okay. Because I know a lot of times, at least in Legacy, you don't necessarily run no. both. Yeah. Okay, so three. That City of Traders is also... Uh, a card we don't see as often, but in this kind of a list, like it, it's almost like a, a white initiative list that doesn't have the all the initiative creatures, right? Well, yeah, the way we were, uh, the draft seemed to unfold was that Cody took the first initi initiative creature. Yeah. Is it before or after the uh, tomb was taken? White Plume Adventure was taken. Second or third pick, Second usually? pick, yeah. Okay. And then Jake took Ancient Tomb in nine, and it looked like just kind of building out the land base to ensure that he could cast his equipment. Sure, yeah. Um, White Plume Adventurer goes, that means you only have the four mana value one left. And is it worth the, the, the early picks on these lands? Probably when you, you only have one option in front of you? Probably not. If you wanted to flex and ended up going into like red, sure. For ca uh, Caves of Chaos? Yeah. Then yeah, it would make sense to, to have drafted City a lot higher. Sure. I mean, and there's also, I mean, in Legacy, you get things like Trinosphere, or as Vintage, you get more things like Trinosphere that are mm -hmm. incredibly powerful. Yep. Uh, whereas here, those cards are useful, but don't do nearly the same kind of work given the, that there's, I mean, only a few blue drafters at this table, which is very unusual. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I, I don't know. I like seeing this in the deck. Uh, both Soul Lands, you get to move your equipment around pretty quickly and sure. pretty cheaply for that, you know. It helps with the turn two for Windmare, mm -hmm. really establishes the turn two lock no matter what. Yep. But here we have a Cauldra crushing in, so. I mean, I, that's. It looks like all of it's coming out pretty pins. quick. I would assume so. But we're only at 15, so. Oh, Odawara bounced the germ. Oh, sick. Okay, that's, that's great. What, okay, I saw the Odawara pointed, but I didn't know where. Cauldra should be untapped, though. Uh, yeah, you are correct. <laughs> the equipment doesn't attack, the germ it brings with it does. And then the rest went to Jake. That makes sense. Jake, the perfect mind. So Jake is Jake's only at 15 still. Dang. Yep. Or sorry, Vince is at 15. Vince is at 15, yeah, because it, he's just slowly dealt with the creatures in front of him, and this is a minimal attack force. Sure. You know, you. I don't know if it's a mistake necessarily by Jake to attack Jace to try and manage. I, I would I, I would want to be being down on that Jake. Or on, on, the, on the Jace. Sorry. <laughs> it's Jake fine, I purposely do that before, and now I'm throwing you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But the nice part about playing the the city is now we have eight mana on our turn yep. one two three four five six seven eight so we can just move the cauldra yeah i was about i was gonna just check that right now actually. seven call it seven to seven equip. seven wow yep that's a whole lot but you know i play a lot of stone force mystic <laughs> so how often do you get to equip that in legacy uh i don't play it in legacy i play it in modern oh really i play my own little uh band snowblade thing okay so uh to fairy three just combos really well with Spell Queller. Ah, I see. So I gotta... Well, here we have a Narset, which yep. is another pretty substantial threat. It's it's not stopping Jake from doing anything. No, but it's gonna help us dig for one of the two-card combos. Sure. I don't know what that is. Uh, is that, that Tasha's Hades? That is Tasha's Hades yeah. Laughter. Okay. Library count. <laughs> yep. Well, especially with the Jace in there. I mean, that's Jace is threatening 18 cards right now. Yep. So Tasha's is, I mean... Uh, is that 13? Jake doesn't have a whole... It's 20... CMC 20, or sorry, mana value oh, 20. Mana value oh, yeah, that's actually... That's so right. Jake doesn't have a lot of high-value cards, right? Like I saw it bump off of Blight Steel in the last game, but Jake doesn't have anything to absorb the mana values like that. No, but they built a very straightforward yep. mono-white deck, and so here we are. It's like the the largest mana value Solitude. we have. Solitude? Is that in the main? Yeah. Okay, I was so, looking so there's at the a five, There's a five and a four, but yeah. everything else is three or less. Yep. So that's the move. This is the move of... Cauldra, you got to attack the Jace this turn. It doesn't matter what you put this on. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly surprised that Vince used Jace first because at this point, if I knew that I was getting Tasha's, I would just minus eighteen immediately. Yeah. Okay. Because it's incredibly likely that minus eighteen plus CMC twenty is going to wipe the entire deck. Yep. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So it's just a, a sequence issue. Yeah, and I mean, who knows, right? Like. He didn't know what he was getting off Nar Narset. Maybe he didn't know if he wanted to use Narset. Mm -hmm. but. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like if you plus, if you, that the option for Jace is to target a creature and shrink its power, then you cast Narset, flip it, and reveal Hideous Laughter. That's just a sequencing. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. think there's a, a justifiable, justifiable reason. Yeah. And there goes Jace. Yeah, as expected. But yeah, CMC 20 is going to, let's see. 
Actually, we can check this because we have Moxfield. Yep. Thank you, Moxfield. Let's see what the average CMC of the deck is. I think it's somewhere in here. Hold on. Uh, there's the graph down at the bottom. Oh, here, I'll, I'll let you find it. I don't know how to use computers, really. That's fair. Oh, it's 1.63. Yeah. So, yeah, on, I mean, on average, he needs to, what, have 15 cards left in library Something and Natasha's like lethal? Yep. Great. Yep, 1.63 with lands and 2.6 without, so yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a red card. It looks like a Brutal Cathar that's on the night side, maybe? Is that what that is? Uh, that is it a, was a Brutal Cathar out earlier. Okay, so yeah. yeah, this is just... We flipped to the night side of day-night. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks for that, Mechanic Wizards. Oh, this is a... Okay, this is a brand new card to us. This is Dreams of Steel and Oil. It's basically just the... It's a, it's a despise, right? <laughs> kind it's of. a card from the graveyard as well. Yeah. Did I spell that correctly? Uh, steel is misspelled. No, I had sorry, it's dreams. Oh. Uh, I will here click into there, please. Thank you. So Cody got the storm deck two one. Nice. Game one, he lost turn two through force of will and force of negation. He still comboed off turn two. Ugh. Okay, so fourth. here's this is Tasha's. presumably Tasha's happening. Okay. But game three, the guy tried to storm off through, uh, tried to storm off through Dovin, and you can't do that. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, that is a very large chunk of the library. And it's Those exiles. Do so you actually yeah. mind? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Oh, they're scooping. Oh, because Vince is dead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that was just like oh, that was the if you don't. If you don't want me to see what you have in your <laughs> library, you have to scoop now. Play. I guess. Uh, yeah. Given that it's open deck list, I don't know how useful it is, but I yes. Uh... <laughs> On Moto, that would make a lot of sense. Yep. Oh, that's cute. All right. So, if we cut over to the Moxfield list, bang, bang. So, this is Vince's list we have in front of us. So, we know we're up against a creature deck, so we either need to bring in more creatures or more removal, and yes. it just looks like our option is more removal. Yeah, I'm I mean, talking more creatures. But... Voracious Great Shark does both, so that's a card that's for sure coming in. Yeah, uh, it just costs infinity. It does, but it's uh, a creature, so it gets underneath all the taxes. It's true. Um, is Grief any card? Grief is any card, any non-land. Yeah, okay. Um, but Grief, oh, man, I guess it's a four-mana card. That's It's a four-mana three-two. That's fine. Yep. Um, what does Airtie Resurrected do? It's an interesting counterspell. Yeah, Flash. It, like, puts it on top, or no, it just puts it back in their hand. So... Oh no, it counters it and draws them yes. Oh god, this is a weird one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you can counter something. But it replaces. And but it replaces that well, if you counter otherwise the act counter the activated ability, then the then the controller is just up a card. Or you destroy another target creature or yeah. a planeswalker and his controller draws. So no matter what. It seemed very good. Yeah, it's Vincer or removal. Yeah. Yep. Alright, so it's it's air tie and voracious great shark for sure. Yep. I'm shocked that V click didn't make a cut in the main deck. I didn't make it in. Yeah. Yeah, considering it's a rogue, right? Oh, no, it's a wizard. Okay, never mind. It's just flash, so if you're on that plan, like, why not? Right. I guess, uh, yeah, you kind of cut the whole fairy pa package. Yep. Put the other on the bottom of the library. You may look at play that card. That can't be for this matchup. That yeah. needs to be for the grindy matchups. Yep. And in turns, when you pay... Mm -hmm. Then up to that many other target artifacts. So it protects oh, yeah. your stuff. Yep. Which could be a thing. Um, and then maybe subtlety. I, yeah, I think, it's a I think a lot. Of, I think those are for the the more um, aggressive or for the less aggressive matchups. Yeah, but if you want to delay something like Stoneforge, it all depends on what you need to do. That's like true. it's a tempo play, and I don't I don't really think this this matchup is about tempo. And I don't know if you really want to windfall your mono white opponent. Reasonable. Can you check Spectral Adversary a minute? Does that allow you to phase out their tokens and permanently remove them? Does that still happen? Uh, no, no, they change the rules for the tokens. Okay. Tokens yeah, can phase. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. So it's at, it's. Uh, but can, you you could phase out the ph phasing the batter skull also phases the token or no? Phasing the batter skull will kill the token. Okay, yeah, because the batter skull will be gone. It doesn't because phasing does bring the enchantments with, with it, right? But yep. not equipped, not phase. the equipped. Okay, yep. got it. Yep. So yeah, fa phasing the equipment kills the token. Yeah, uh, I think it, it's a, it's a fine look anyway because it's effectively a fog. Yes, right? at, so bad, at worst, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, so, yeah, if you pay four mana, you get to kill their cauldra, their cauldra token. Yep. That's fine. And make this, and then make it a three-two. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So it's it's not a bad look. I think we, we just have like maybe three cards at max over here. So if we take. Leyland Helm should go out. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because Lillian Holmes very bad. Uh, and then we look at... I think we could talk about whether that should be in the main deck at all, but that's a different conversation. That's fair, yeah. Uh, yeah. And if we look over here, and we take a look at Jake's list... I love how much Jake did not want to lose to Kyle. Like, that's like <laughs> 12 cards. Yeah. <laughs> it was a meme. Yep. I just, I'm trying to... I'm having a, a tough a tough time here. Uh, yeah, against Mill. Commando. Lion Sash isn't bad. No. Uh, a rest in peace you don't actually want. Nope. Maybe Selfless Spirit, given the amount of removal. The, the oh, none? okay. Like, well, no, there's, there's, there's Drawn in the Lock, but what does Shalai do? Uh, not much in this list, because you're not activating it. It gives you hex proof. Yeah. yeah. Which is f fine against... I think somebody might have called for a judge. Yeah, I got it. Uh, Hexproof doesn't do anything against Tasha's, but it'll do something against Jace. Jace, right. which is what I was thinking. And, and also, it stops your creatures from dying from the board to removal, maybe. I don't know. What is yep. Strict Proctor? Does that have anything useful here? Strict Proctor. This yeah. stops their triggers. Is there anything in Vince's deck that cares about triggers? Just the the rogue stuff. Whenever rogue uh, okay. thieves guild the force. So that, that one's probably useful. Yeah, I you didn't see much of it, so I guess there's always there's that question of like, is he going to keep it in? How much mm -hmm. is it going to impact the match anyway? That like that one's hard to gauge. Yeah, you know until you actually see it. So that could be a game three cut. Well, and I mean they are allowed to look at lists in between games, so. Yeah, but it, what I'm saying is, like, it's hard to determine how much something like that is going to impact the game overall when it didn't happen in game one. That's reasonable, right? yeah. So, like, you know your opponent has the mill plan, but you just killed them faster than they could establish that game plan. Totally. So, how important is that? That makes sense. There we go. Cool. Yeah, so, I mean, who do you who do you favor in this one? I think it's just Jake. Yeah? You think he's got it? Yeah. It, your your game plan is just play a creature, turn it sideways, and your opponent doesn't have any removal. So it's not quite a goldfish, <laughs> but like, I very rarely favor the mill deck, that especially when they don't have. Wait, he has mind break trap, right? But you don't have any fetch lands. Correct. You just have, have Stoneforge yeah. Mystic. Like Mason has every fetch land of the game. So yeah. <laughs> yes, Mason do. You want to stretch out for a bit? Yeah, yeah. I'll take up. Get those legs to stretch. All right, so we have Jake up one on a 1-0. Oh. I'm desperately trying to find the spot. Oh, I'm in the wrong scene. I had a judge call about, are you able to cast Stomp when Chandra exiles Bone Crusher Giant? The answer is yes, because Chandra says card. Ooh. So you can play either part. That's very exciting. All right, we have Jake up one. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Okay. I'm learning how OBS works, and that's a very exciting next step. Yeah, we lost Mr. Wizard. Yeah, exactly. Wizard Sadly, Derek Bot is no longer here with us. Derek Bot slash Mr. Wizard is gone. Professor X. Yep. He died. Uh, so, so do you agree that Jake is pretty favored in this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think... Um, I, I, I think Vince needed like Toxic Deluge and a few yes. other things yep. uh, to handle these aggressive decks. Vince on the play, though. I mean, if he goes uh, rogue into rogue into rogue, yeah, he yeah, has a pretty good chance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's got a chance. I don't think, but I think that if he, he needs a card for, for the faltering, you know? Yeah. Like, if you're going to go to the mill plan, you need an answer to the board. The, there was, I think, a line for Vince last game where instead of plussing Jace, you cast Narset first, and then if you get the... You, you can just 15 their deck, and mm -hmm. then cast Tasha's, and I right. think that might have been lethal. Right, yeah. Yeah, you gotta go hard at the... Yes. At their deck. I totally get the uh, stopping the, the three attack, but yeah, at a certain point, Jace needs to actually go aggro. Yeah, I mean, 15's almost half your deck in this format. Exactly, right? And then plus Tasha's with a deck with an average CMC of 1.6 yeah. is pretty good. It's gonna, it's That's going to be another 15 cards on average. And at that point, Caldra completely was already on the board. Uh, Caldra was not on the board anymore. Uh, it, it was on the board, but it had to be manually. It doesn't matter. It was on the board. It wasn't in the deck. Correct. That's all oh, I see. For, I see. for Tasha's, right? That makes sense. Not in the deck is the role. <laughs> Fair point. Yeah, there was still a Batter Skull. So right. there was a Batter Skull and a... Uh, like a Palace Jail or a Solitude or something. Solitude, yeah. Right. Okay, but so if we, 13 we, hits those. We have the dreams of oil and steel or something. Yeah. So, so he we, can it's hit a creature. a creature or artifact. Yep. Pretty relevant given yeah. this hand. 
and then he can exile one, which is doesn't. Now, now, interesting of that is that so Quindrel, can you exile the same card you? Oh, I see. Uh, let's check. Dreams of steel and oil. Um, you choose a from it. Then choose. Then choose. Yes. 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 So you can choose. Oh no no no, no. sorry. You oh, exile the chosen one cards. You choose. Exactly. So you can't do the same. Right. Right. It's gonna exile anyway. So both of them are exiled. So. Yeah, so we're just going to get rid of the batter skull. Yep. I don't think, yeah, I think that's the right call there. I mean, he's already got three mana. The mox doesn't. Oh, he didn't have three. I mean, so still, but yeah, I mean, I think you just get rid of the threat. Yeah, I mean, it does result in a turn one, two, two. Right, right. But sure. the relic order doesn't do a whole lot. Or that's an arbiter, and it doesn't, arbiter, it, it sorry, doesn't yeah. do a whole lot. Yeah, it's interesting to not see. Bitter Blossom comes down. We don't, you don't see any of the land hate. Um, like, there's not a ghost quarter. There's not a field right. of the dead. Or field of the whatever. Field of ruin. Thank yeah. you. It's taken by um, Kyle. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think there was, like, this deck, I, I think it was a few cards short of, like, an ideal configuration. But Jake you know. felt the same way. He, he yeah. was he was disappointed with where it ended up. Like, like, I guess I was saying like that, like, I think, like, you didn't need all of those anti-red, I think. Yeah. I don't like Vryn Wingmare... And Glow Rider, maybe? He also took Glow Rider, yeah. Glow Rider is the first time we've seen one in paper. Uh, yeah, I've taken it online, and it never came out of my board, so it was bad. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fine. Especially, yeah. I mean, he does have two Soul Lands, which right. make it far more castable, I think. Right, but it's just like, I don't know, up Solitude oh. on the V-Click. And a Cast Solitude, which is going to stick around for a while. Yeah, that's, that, that's painful. And that does mean that the V-Click came in as well? Yeah. And he revealed a land off the V-Click. And he said, yeah, you can have that. You can keep yeah. that land. That right. makes sense. Actually, it can't even get rid of the land, can it? It cannot. Yeah. All right, so we got two fairies. <laughs> That's a little worse than three fairy, but still. Yeah. <laughs> and That's Natasha's. That's Natasha's. Let's see what... Oh, geez. Okay, but this time there is still a Cauldra, although the Batter skull has gone and the Solitude's gone. So it's Cauldra and... I can't Talish see what the first card was. It's a land, I think. Oh no, it's maybe a glow rider. That's a Shalai. That's four, zero, and there's three. Okay, okay that's a recruiter. So he has something pretty big in there. So that's about the best that Jake can hope for, I think, in this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's gonna double block the solitude. It's gonna. You can have some life, but I gotta get rid of that crap. Yep. So yeah, let's see. Changing up our view a little bit here on the streaming side yeah, so we can it's see. A little, a little better. Right, that Bitter Blossom is doing work. Yeah. Also, wow, Luris is going to be able to, as of right now, not do a whole lot. Put but a Marsh Flats back. Yeah. Thin yeah. the deck a bit. But yeah, Luris is a very powerful card. Yeah, Luris is relevant. Let's see. So Luris allows you to cast one permanent spell. So no, I can't get yeah. the Marsh Flats, sadly. Oh, it is just cast? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't quite sure. All right. There's a lot of cards from Jake's deck that are gone, though. That right. He's just out. <laughs> uh, and Luris notably does have Lifelink, which is going to be really relevant with this... Bitter uh, Blossom. With the Bitter Blossom in play, exactly. we got two planes in hand, so... Jake's, <laughs> yeah, Jake seems pretty far behind on this one. He's not drawing hot. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so he can cast the Cauldra if he draws right. it. I think the Cauldra might have gone. You think that was the big I, one? I think that might have been. Okay. I'm not 100%. Okay. Let's see. So there's three total fairies. Got yeah. it. Swing with one, leaving two back. That's interesting. I guess you don't want to block with the Luris, so he's leaving it back. There's a mom. Okay. I mean, that's the start of a comeback. Vince is only at nine life, huh? Yeah. Eight. He kind of needs to attack with Luris this turn. 
Otherwise, yeah. mom prevents the lifeline. Right, right. And the way that works is that it, she prevents all of the damage, right? Mm-hmm. So none of it gets through? Yeah, yeah. She just prevents the damage because of protection. Yeah. And because all the damage would be dealt to the creature, it's all right. prevented. Yeah. As opposed to trample, where some of it would right, get through. Right. Okay. So no Luris targets yet. All right, so now we're getting a better look here. Uh, yeah, I think the culvert was there. Wow. So there's still a Jitte? Yeah. So still a Jitte to be able to retrieve if he needs to? Yeah, he's on double planes right now. Jeez. But honestly, still, like, mom plus a tutu. Mom well, I mean, he's, he's clicking. Work. I mean, he's just, he's the, the, the blossoms <laughs> doing work. But Jake's still at 17 life. Yeah. Like, well, he, Vince he is kind of racing th- He gained his three own. earlier, so he's... Sure. Vince is racing his own life total. Well, and at some point, what he can do is that he can just start giving... It's just pro-black. He can just... He, I mean, he can literally start swinging in the Arbiter for two and win the race exactly. at this point. Now, the, the now that would allow him to slip crack back with the Luris, which may change it up some. Shield or changes the situation. That's going to change the party. Yep. That, uh, it's going to... All right, so Jake kind of has this one turn. If he can do... Yeah. If he can do six damage this turn... That being, is a city of traitors. Oh, that does zero. Okay. Yep, Jake just flooded out and drew nothing. Yeah. I'm not. He's like not doing that. All so. right. So the Tasha's hit the gas. There is what had happened. It you know? sure did. Or hit the hit the motor. The gas was uh, so he had all the gas. Just did not have anything to go with it. So yeah, is, is there anything here that you change? I mean, I mean, not really. I don't think his board's particularly great against them. Um, is Hushbringer doing anything? Not really. No. I mean, um, if he has the crabs, strip proctor, shuts down crabs. Okay. No, that's a big deal. Yeah, that's why you draft it. Yeah. It, I like strip proctor because it also shuts down lands. Yep. Now, they, they can get around it by pain too, but, you know, it, it's going to stop massive abuse. That makes sense. But it's better against the fast bond crabs where they're trying to do massive abuse rather than just, you know, like once a turn. Sure. That makes sense. Um, does the Book of Exalted Deeds do anything? Like, is there is there a Moodle Vault? Oh, there's a Moodle Vault. There's a Moodle Vault, and there's, there's a, a combo Shalai. There. Does Shalai also combo with us? Yeah, because it's an angel. Okay. So you put it on Shalai, but Shalai can still be targeted, can't she? Right, but it's not it's not the end of the game or anything, but it's, you oh, know, it's, at the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life, this turn creates an angel. Um, it's for the second ability, though, right? Look. I don't know. Um... Because you put so that on Moodle Vault, you can't lose. Target Angel, it gains you can't eat. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 You, you play it because it combos with Moodle Vault, but no, it makes sense. Putting it on Shalai is still fine. I don't know if this is the matchup where you want it. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's it's a slow enough match, but I don't I don't think it's a great thing. I mean, he's got enough into the life gain, you could just crank out some Oh, they're they playing. That was a yeah. fast, fast cut back. No, they're, yeah, oh, they're like, we don't, we already sideboarded. Exactly. They had changed nothing. All right, so we're going to crab three. We're going to hit Myrol, Brutal Cathar, and, Step-mom. and Stepmom. Yeah. It's a good hits. Those are good. Ancient Tomb. We got the four. We're going to go four drop. We're going to drop Shalai. All right. We're going to say, okay, you can do that, but we're going to race you three flying. Also, uh, Hedron Crab does target, correct? Uh, one of them targets, one of them does not. I think Ruin Crab is each. Yeah, this is yeah. target player. Right. So it means it actually does have to target himself. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're having this conversation, but they're going to figure out that he has to target himself. Yeah. There it is. Oh, and Shalai with Mom out. Oh, and it hit the Ruin Crab and a V-Click. Yeah, Shalai with Mom out seems really good. Yes. Like, I don't think Vince comes back from this. Uh, yeah. I he doesn't have a sweeper. probably right. Man, Vince is one toxic deluge away from having a really solid deck in this matchup. Yeah, he doesn't have a sweeper. Like, he's, and there's a Solitude and a Book of Exalted Deeds in hand. I mean, Painter Serving grind, Grindstone Targets, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Yeah, that's brutal. So we've not gained any. Oh, we're gonna do Dahlia. Okay. Sure, and that's fine. Right? Ooh, is that a draw on the lock? Okay, so she's countered at least. Uh, hitting mom is better. 
But obviously, mom can't target herself. It she been... can. She can target herself. Uh, you're thinking of stepmom. Stepmom can. Neither of the later two, Skrelv and the Giver, cannot target themselves. Okay, I think mom can target herself. Original Mother of Runes can, okay. which is why she's so annoying. Right. So you kind of need to have a kill spell for Shalai okay, yep, to yep, bait yep. out. Right. Yeah. yeah, double the removal. Yep. Yeah, I don't think this bodes well. And uh, there was a sh uh, shouldered off of the self mill. He's milling three. Does Vince have any incidental reanimator? No. Okay. All right, Bitter Blossom is away. <laughs> it's, it, it, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's away. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, his life's moving down rapidly. Yeah. This doesn't look good for St. Louis here. Oh, also look at that hand. There's a Boromir. Solitude. There's a Solitude. Yeah. All right, so here's here's a new card. Do you remember the name of this card offhand? Boromir? Yeah. Boromir, Boromir. Uh, <laughs> we searched for it earlier. It uh, it stops you from playing spells for free. It counters spells that you didn't pay mana for them, and then you can sacrifice it to give something uh, indestructible. Got it. And the ring tips you when that happens. Sure. And it stops uh, cards that I don't think Vince is playing? Yeah. But it's a 3-3 three, three for 3 that, that has Vigilance. And... Sure, yeah. Alright. Which rogue? Does that rogue get bigger? Which? Do you remember the name of it? Soaring. I mean, we can just go to this list and look at it probably. Yeah. So this one is... I think this one, it's, it gets bigger. It becomes like a 3-3. Three, three They're not bigger enough. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. Oh, wait, wait, it becomes a 4-3? No, it becomes a 2-3. Not bigger. Yes. Oh, thanks, Hoodwing. Thanks for following. It does have mill, though, and it's each opponent, so it actually gets through this as well. Right. Yeah, there we go. Again, the mill plan is pretty pretty locked down, although Ash, or Tasha's can mill a whole lot of cards at once. Yeah. This would be a fun thing where if Jake does draw a stone forge, do you find one of your giant cards? No, this is not cube. This is vintage rotisserie. So a one of every card that you can play in vintage is available in our giant theoretical cube. Um. <laughs> yeah, the, the all the rules are on stlotus.org, uh, but the the way of thinking about it is basically every card legal in vintage is legal to be drafted, and we have a giant spreadsheet where we snake draft it and. Uh, you can take any card you want, uh, which means in p first one or pick one, somebody takes ancestral recall. Pick two, somebody takes black lotus, and pick three, they can take any card other than those two cards that is legal and vintage. So, dexterity cards aren't any good. Racist cards are no good. But other than that, go to town, man. There's that you can draft wild things, which means you get really interesting combinations where cards that would never appear in a cube, like chill are draftable in this format and you just have everything's face up so it's kind of a lot of the skill testing of rochester with also an incredibly massive card pool so i think it's the uh, i think it's the hardest format in magic to play and it has a ton of depth which is why we keep playing it year after year and we do this draft every, every three months so if you want to tune in uh it shows up a lot also there's lots of asynchronous drafts available on the discord if you want to hop into one of these but today we are, uh, the draft itself took three and a half hours, and we are on match three, uh, but it's a round-robin tournament, so it's a seven-round tournament that usually takes about six or seven hours to get done. So we're near the beginning of it, but we should be finished up in like three or four hours, and we'll see who's the champion. We have two people coming down from Chicago that have traditionally done Ooh, pretty well. Ooh, dressed down in answer oh. to Solitude. Was that in response to yeah, the solitude. coming in? Sick. Yeah, yeah response on the stack. Okay, so, I mean, he gets a 3-3. He gets a three -three. That's not bad. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's solid. It's but it, it's not going to catch up still, though. Yeah, right. this is... But it keeps this thing alive and, you know... Okay, is it possible that Vince has a dismember or something? That uh, if no, solid, if rest on results? Dismember is not. Okay. Uh, is, uh, Mike has it. I was just re really, really hoping that Mom would die. Right. Make this into more of a game. Exactly. It's, it's so hard for him to catch up. He's at nine life. Like, sure, he can block with the, the fairy tokens. He can yeah. basically cast... What is that terrible card from Alpha? Uh, it's a force field. He has a force field on play. Yeah. That's a Book of Exalted Deeds in hand. No Muta Vault, though. So, uh, Book of Exalted Deeds on Shalai, given that Mom exists, is probably still good enough yeah, to close this out. Yeah. But he doesn't need to expose it yet. 
Let's pull up the book just to see. I'm not positive how uh, exalted. Is this the first time? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of shocking, actually, to me. Put a light encounter on target angel. It gains you can't lose a game, and your opponent can't win the game. The last sentence is the part that I did not know. It's only as a sorcery, so right. you can't you can't hold it. Okay, there's there's. I mean, that's an aggressive rogue, and she also. Uh, this is thief's denizen something. Yeah, I don't know. It's a three words there. Yeah. It's Thieves Row Denison or something, but... Sounds right. All right, so we're just force-fielding those two uh, attackers. Thief Guild Enforcer. Thief Guild Enforcer. Nice. There's a whole lot of cards that have never been drafted before. I think it's Thief Guild, maybe? I don't know. I get no, it's Thieves. Yeah, whatever. It's, it's whatever. He's losing. It's yes. <laughs> Book Exalted Deeds comes down. Does not have the mana to activate it immediately, though. Okay, okay. But, I mean, even if he did, it doesn't... I, I still don't know how good that is. I mean, it's he gets a 3-3-3 three, 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 three angel because he gained 3 life last time. That's fair. Yeah, that's huge. So, yeah, we have a 1-1 one, one Brandon standing off against a 3-3 three, three Brandon. Uh, there are definitely 8 cards in graveyards. That's nice. Thanks for the follow, CPM. So, yeah, I mean, are, do you pop this, uh, the Book of Exalted Deeds, and just say, Mom plus Shalai is unbeatable? Or do you do you just hold it and assume that's true regardless? I mean, I I don't think it matters either way. Sure. Even five. Yeah, that's fair. There's a Luris. Vince is doing work. I mean, Luris is going to be able to get uh, another mill for three off of the Ruined Crab if he wants it. Yeah, there's the Ruined Crab. This is notably the one that does not target. Yeah, this one does not target. Yeah, Vince had to turn one uh, other crab. He drawn, but uh, Shalai came down turn two and stopped that party. That's just so dirty. Getting Shalai on turn two against a Heatron crab is pretty pretty ridiculous. Mill, Mill has not really done a whole lot of work this format. Um, in modern rotisserie, it does a lot of good. It's freaking stupid. Yes, but in VRD, it, it's so hard. Again, <laughs> because it's VRD, it's face-up, it's very different than a cube yeah. in that you know that somebody is drafting mills, so every one of the of the em <clears throat> Ember Pool is drafted, Ulamog is drafted, it's really hard to interact with. How do with. I like the St. Louis again? Just oh, yeah, uh, here, I gotcha. Uh, so, so, CPM, this is not a vintage, this is not a cube, it's a... It's vintage with, Rotisserie Draft. Yeah, so Vintage Rotisserie Draft means that you get to see every card in Magic, every card that's legal in Vintage, is uh, is available to draft. So you and it's all drafted Rochester style, a face up and a snake draft, uh, which means that you get things like somebody tries drafting mill and then somebody else drafts cards that are very good against mill because they see everything about this. Yeah, okay, this is Kaderberg in here right now and 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 Hagen. So we're we're both in here at the moment. Yeah, I'll probably be jumping back out of here in a minute, Beastly, but I'm hanging out here for a minute. Yeah, so the big thing about VRD, like different than a cube, is that like we don't have to you don't cultivate this right, like so. A cube is very carefully cultivated often around different formats. So you're like, oh, I want these to be kind of the main archetypes. And people can break out of those sometimes. But here, the archetypes are your imagination. There's no, right, right the archetypes are, what are you going to do? And sometimes that means you catch Boromir. Yeah. And sometimes you use Book of Exalted Deeds on Shalai. And you it, get it real plays stuff. Like somewhere between like a, a good vintage cube and kind of like Canadian Highlander. Actually, Highlander. yeah. I was going to say, Beastly is here. And Beastly is a purveyor of Canadian Highlander and actually does streams of, of Canadian Highlander. So yeah. this format plays very similarly to that format. But it kind of has the fact that you're doing a seven round round robin tournament versus building an entirely pre-built deck means that you get a lot more of interaction and like me counter drafting against you. All right, so... Vince is at four life. Uh, Bitter boss, I'm still out. Yep. Is there anything he can do from this? Well, point? every rogue that comes in is milling off the thieves guild enforcer, and it is yeah it's, right. So Obero mills for two immediately. Right. Oh, sorry, that's three. not Obero. That's uh, whichever it is. Land mills for three. Right, but, but is this Obero that it's allows him to? Okay, yeah. okay. I didn't know if this was that one or if it was the um, the Basajo equivalent. He's gonna recast that the thieves guild the extra rogue which with will Loris, mill for two, which will mill for two. 
He's got ample blockers. Yeah, I mean, he's he's but putting in work here. He pops the, the oh, Book of Exalted Deeds next time. Mill doesn't oh, matter. True, that's a great point. <laughs> like the mill does not matter uh, because he's gonna pop a book. Yeah, the, the fact that the book the stops it yeah. entirely. So Vince can work as much as he wants to work, but as long as Mom and Shalai is out, like and yeah, Vince never like again. Vince never drafted a sweeper, so he doesn't have a way out of yeah. this. Ottawara, thank you. That's exactly what I was thinking of. I, I thought it was Ottawara, but it's actually Obero. Yeah. Something weird is going on with the lighting in there. I don't know what's happening. Hey, we're probably we're playing with it to get the less glare. All right. So blocking. Again, force fielding the Shalai. Yeah. And chumping with the Soaring. Which is, I mean, chumping makes yeah. sense given... Well, he can recast it exactly. to get the mill. But here comes... Book Mama... <laughs> yeah so uh, although he does have to use the book instant speed so maybe maybe Vince gets to use the book instant speed that's what I'm saying so he, yeah so maybe, maybe Vince does get to uh, gets to surprise him and Jake doesn't realize that Tasha's XL so many cards it's possible spell stutter sprite on the elite spell binder that is not a rogue there's also no uh, yeah there, there's, he's just flashing it to get it yeah out. it doesn't counter it he's not countering it he's just like is she a fairy wizard? A fairy wizard, yeah. Okay. Ashiok does not target. Correct. Oh, okay. That's just the one that lets you cast yeah. things and in here flash, comes right? Book. Yeah. And okay. I'm going to book. And I'm going to walk around swinging my uh, pantsless, pantsless genitalia in your face because you can do nothing to me now. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happens here. It's kind of like Vince needs two removal spells, and I think he has literally two removal spells in the deck. One of them is used up. Yeah. I'm just going to pull up Vince's list to make sure that we're not missing something here. Um, Bowmaster targeting mom. Sure. Yeah. And, uh... But you need your opponent to draw a card. <laughs> but it comes into play. Sure, so that shoots for one. Okay. Right, so I then mom is targeting himself, her herself... And then either drown or um, the drown's gone. Uh, if he brought in Urtai, so okay. he can Urtai. Okay, so we are looking for exactly Orcish Bowmasters plus Urtai. Yeah. Why did he take the Slither Wisp? It's, it's not bad. I mean, I think the card's good. I, I don't think it's great, but I think the card's solid. I guess you get to draw a card. Yeah, you get to draw cards, right? Yeah. Like, okay, that makes sense. Every Flash person, you get to draw a card. Yep. But yeah, the Painter Servant combo here does not work. No, no none of this combos work here. Uh, you can't kill mom with Shalai out. This is true. Yeah, so you basically have to try to kill Shalai. Mom has to activate, then you kill mom. Spectral, this, adversa this is all spectral adversary on your turn to make you mill them out. <laughs> to make you phase them out. And then I make you draw a card. <laughs> but mom still protects from the spectral adversary trigger. Right, but I make you tap it so I can remove it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, Spectral Adversary. We, yeah. we, we got there. Yeah, we yeah, figured yeah, out the solution. Yeah. Spectral Adversary and another removal spell. Spectral Adversary on Shalai. Oh, which actually removes the... Lose the game. Yeah, okay. Siphon Insight on you. Yeah, there's no deck now. He's deckless. I'm going to go see what's going on with this light yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think we're, I think we're dark enough outside the ambient lights enough that we're, we can't do that anymore. Alright, we're, we're trying to figure out what's going on with our light. Whoa! That's the other way. That, that went the other extreme. Okay, now we're back to something. <laughs> yeah, and the Bormer. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work. I don't... Yeah, as we said, or this was... This game started with turn one Hedron Crab from Vince, and Vince felt good, like there was a party. And then it was turn two Shalai uh, after turn one Mom, which made Vince feel bad, like we were not at a party anymore. Oh, there's Boromir too. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's this, I don't know what Vince is doing. I, this is game three, so I guess he's just taking game actions at this point, but it's really tough. I mean, he's at three. He's got a bitter blossom. It ain't gonna last. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, uh, Sanctifier Invec. 
All right, are we gonna are we gonna have Peter jump in here after this? I can go start searching up the next match. Yeah, yeah, you go start searching the next match. I'll the solo until Peter comes back. Sounds good. Um, as exciting as this is. Yeah. All right, so I am Stephen Hagen, and this is Saint Lotus Twelve. You're watching the end of Jake's mono white um, taxes with angel combo list versus Vince's flash mill list. Um, this was the seven and eight seed, so they were pulling in at the end of the draft. There, um, we're gonna replay the dre Ooh, replay the dress down. That's interesting. Does that well? It gets rid of types, but it doesn't get rid of the token. So, right? Does dress down get rid of types? Um. No, it does not get rid of types. They just lose all abilities. And then... The Book of Exalted Demons. And it is a counter. So the counter is still there. So... Does replaying the dress down do anything? The counter's still there, so he doesn't. Until we deal with the book of endless deeds. Right. Well, the, the counter's still there, deeds. but like replaying the dress down stop, turns off the hex proof and the extra ability is where if he has a removal, he can kill the angel. Yes. So replaying the dress down actually is the one out we didn't consider, right? But did you consider that if the Dragon Lock was played, I don't think there's another piece of removal? Um Urtai, if he came out of the board. Yeah, yeah. There's a few things like Urtai that came out of the board. We are moving over Kyle and Mike, I think. Okay, so Burn versus what? Do we know with Mike's the Simic thing? Yeah, do we know? You're going what? to game two. I do not know where okay. things. Do. Well, Mike was playing the uh, Storm deck when I came when I was on break, so I don't know. Are you sure nothing? Nick's on, Nick was on Storm. Mike yeah. is on the... So Mike and Nick were playing when I was on break, so I don't know yeah, if yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, it was a hoot. So I was watching this match, like, and everything everything was going good until basically it was like... I, somewhere around the time the Book of Endless Deeds was cast, at that point everything outside also got really ominous, yeah. and the, the wind was blowing so fast that all the plants and flags just went parallel <laughs> to the ground. Like a taste of things to come. The cast book of endless deeds, Dirtle. The interaction of Shalai and Hedron Crab. Yeah, that, that was, was that was brutal. Yep, I was over over the shoulder when that happened. Yeah, that was, yeah. The turn one Hedron Crab, turn one Mom, turn two yep. Shalai. It was like, oh, I yeah. don't know if you're recovering from that. Yeah. All right, so Kyle is up one game. Yep. Um, so. Let's play right. Uh, let's see. Left winner. What are we looking for? Uh, trying to turn off the left winner, right winner uh, X's. Got it. Oh, yeah. We've just been kind of letting them ride. Yeah. But currently, I'm not 100% sure how to do that. The eyeball. You can turn the lock back oh, on, hit the it. eyeball. There you go. And then you got to hit cut okay. to basically pass it over. Okay. Pow. There you go. All right. So Kyle is one and two, mm -hmm. and Mike. Oh, Mike one versus the um, Storm uh, Thassa's Oracle deck. Yep. So the Th Storm Thassa's Oracle deck lost against Cody, and then lost against Mike. Yeah, we have not seen that on camera yet. No, not seen, yet. Uh, Cody or James. Yeah. Sorry, not Cody. Nick or James. Yeah. I think that was actually the match that was might have been being played while I was out All there. Right, so we got a red guy coming down off of Field of Ruin. Not sure what it is. Neither is Mike. <laughs> oh, is this Cathar? That is not. That is... Uh... Oh, Mike is riding with the top down. 
Scrabble Master from Kyle. Are we gonna fetch counter? Are we gonna fetch drain? Copy. What was that? Uh, Cemetery, Cemetery gatekeeper, gatekeeper, probably. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Which he met with the counter spell. Mm hmm. There it is. Yeah. Yep. Drain that. Untap with six mana. Seems fine. All right. So standings are updated and they are visible there. So we're running through, uh, running some amount of our mana drain mana through the top. Mike is 3 and 0. Oh. Okay. Cody is one and zero. Oh. Cody seems to he must be still be playing Mason right now. Yes. Mason is two one and one. Jacob is one and one. James is one and one. Kyle's one and two. Vince zero oh and one, and Nick zero oh and two. And those might not be fully updated. So Cody's matches are going a little slow. Understandable with his with his deck. Yeah, Mason's his deck look good. It's interesting to see that he picked up a loss, but you're picking apart your opponent on some very specific angles, so if they're coming at you from a different one, it kind of makes sense. Right. Did we put all our mana drain mana through the top, technically? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is, yep. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the problem sometimes with mana drain, especially in these pure control lists. Yeah. Is like a lot of times you don't want to make your plane draw go. Like, yep. what are you going to do with it? Yeah, you would love to have filtered that into an Ulamog or something like that, right. but it is what it is. Oh, okay. Yep. Counter fable. draw. Counter draw of the fable. Hiya! The guy's going to punch you in the face. And I think he, drew, he, got, he flipped something with a blue spell. Yep. Let me see what it was, but. Well, so here's the thing in this match that. Like, Mike doesn't have a lot of answers. So if something sticks, yeah, yeah, it could go long. Yes. You know. We've just put up enough defenses as Mike. Cody's up one versus Mason now. Okay. Yeah. We just put up enough defenses as Mike yeah. to have only taken two damage at this point. Which right. is, that is a feat against a mono red deck. Tinker. Two lands. Two lands, it looks like. We're going to chart the course. Nope, we're going to time walk. We already charted. Okay. Assume we draw the tinker. Oh, nope, we drew the island. Oh, all right. Boom. Oh, there we go. this is game two, so... Yeah. Uh, the worm coil came into the board. Makes sense, yep. and, and now we know that, 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 yeah. So, like we said, like if Kyle sticks a couple threats, like Mike's not going to be answering. Obviously, he did in game one. Yep, yeah. Uh, no. that, that's going to be an active Darcy. Yes, we're also in, we're also in a very rough spot as Kyle without any good artifact disruption. Yeah, he should have taken um, fling into the fire or whatever, toss into, cast the, into the, fire, the fire. Cast into the fire. Yeah, Fury's not going to do it. Cough doesn't nah, do anything. He didn't take any good artifact hate. Yep, there is. Which there was at least two decks you wanted it against. Yeah. There are enough good artifacts spread out across yeah. the tables that you... You always want a little bit, you know. Yeah. Like, that's why I love a braid. It's just, it's... It, the, the decks that the burn's useful against, the artifact's not always... Yep. The decks the burn's not useful against. Exactly. The artifact is, you know. Yep. Pretty sure. Which is why it's a little more appealing than something like Skullcrack. Yeah. But I'm sorry, Skullcrack. Smash the Smithereens. Skullcrack, so he, he didn't get the... The life gain oh, off the worm. Vince beats Jake 2-1. All right. Go, Vince. Um, that's called Smash the Smithereens. That is, because you have to have an artifact to target with Smash. Wait, why would Vince Vince already play Jake? Yeah, I think um, I think that's just record keeping from the other room. Oh, but the, didn't Vince didn't win that, did he? I thought he did. Oh, I'm gonna figure out how to figure how that worked. Yeah. Maybe that dress down got through, did something. Maybe. Yeah, because a good question. Hey, Vince, what happened at the end of that? All right, so we're untapping. 
verifying th whether or not the Darcy is alive or not. If it is live, it cannot block, I believe. I had to double check. Rumble in, plus six, minus six. And I think it's Kyle now. We just have to figure out when it's time to scoop. We're dead in two... Eh. Technically dead in two combat steps. One, if we decide not to block the Snapcaster and the Worm Coil Engine next turn. Or... But we're theoretically already dead. Okay. The dress down got through? Yeah, so here's the weird thing. So in the Book of Exalted Deeds does put a counter on, yep. but it gives the ability. The counter doesn't. It says, puts an, a counter on it, yep. and it gains this ability. Yeah. So dress down removed the ability. Can, yeah. So that's really weird. Why would you put a counter on it if it gains the ability? There's no reason for that, wizards. <laughs> yeah. Beginning of so if you have... You've heard of okay. Read it, sorry. <coughs> Mike picked it up. Warm coil engine got there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's just so hard to beat yep. the, the red without artifact hate, right? Would... Okay, so update then, folks. Vince did take that down where we thought he didn't because of the ability to play dress down back with Loras. Yeah, it's just a marker that it has an ability that yeah. is so weird. Yeah, because I thought it didn't because it was a counter. It was attached to the counter. But it's yeah. not attached to the counter. Yeah. So <laughs> that is a super strange template on yep. the card. Uh, so dress down did remove it. Dress down Loris hot tech. Yeah. P you know, play the game. There it is. P POG yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is such a weird way to get there, right? Yeah. So as expected, warm coil engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carries against the burn. Yeah, you don't have the. You didn't have the way out. You you played your one skull crack. If you don't have stomp, you got nothing else. But it, like, yeah, that's two combat steps worth of fog. You know, that's not going to carry an entire game. No, no. And, and you've got to have exile because you're just destroying it. You, yep. you know, you, well, you... there is the opportunity inside combat to, before damage, break it into two parts. Right. And at least... Yeah, yeah, there's some shenanigans. Yeah. Like, you can win through the two, but it's still, it's still an uphill battle, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. Hello, sir. You're right. How's it going, guys? Oh, not bad. Out, I say. Out. <laughs> watching the... Oh, wait. Did they tie it up? Yes. Game yeah. three? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Worm coil. Off. Did Maybe Cody get you? lost a match. Yeah, because I punted it off. I don't know if you guys noticed. No. I, I You've done that today? Heinous, heinous no. play. Mason, you fell so far off camera, you were around a corner. Devastating. <laughs> horrendous. I... Didn't notice my opponent had a fairy conclave and my Oko died. Yeah, yeah, I saw. Terrible. Yeah, I, I, did, I forgot he had the conclave too until your oh, Oko died. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. I sat there in the tank for like two minutes deciding whether to Maelstrom Pulse or Oko. Yep. Chose wrong. Uh, because of that, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking the modern red player is going to have a hard time here, but. Oh, well, he got me. the hero to so, beat Mike. So Mike doesn't have a lot of removal, so like if he sticks a couple threats, he can take it down, but sure, like sure. with the worm coil out of the board, that's mm, going to, you know. That's true. Has, I mean, you know, channel's always a dangerous option. Right. Yep. Playing against Monterey. Yep, we just saw Kyle cast Vexing Devil. So he's he's, read, he's reading the Cemetery guy again. He's just like, what is this? Card's, this card's so chaos. So what does this card do? It's... Cemetery Gatekeeper? Yeah. You need to exile something for it, don't you? Uh... You got a creature in your own yard. So, enters the battlefield, exile a card from a graveyard, so you can exile his Vexing Devil. When every player plays a land or casts a spell, it shares a type with that X out card cemetery. So it's not amazing here, but it's still a two-one for a strike. I mean, it's still going to turn. So yeah. if I'm reading that right, you can exile a land, a land with it. Yes, you can. Your mm -hmm. opponent plays a land, they yeah. take two. Yeah. Well, it's always going to do that. Crazy. That's a crazy card. So you can you can exile the land, but the yeah. trigger is on land, or cast a spell if it shares a card type with the exiled card. So if you get a land, it's not doing anything. No, because uh, when a player plays a spell or cast, if it shares, so if the land shares a card out of the exile card, if you exile a land, oh, okay, sorry, the sorry. Time the yeah, land. every time they play a land, they take. That's yeah. crazy. Why yeah. don't we? Yeah, yeah it saw a lot of hype when it came out, and then kind of yeah. just didn't. I was hypey about it the last time. I think I drafted a red deck. Yeah, somewhere online. Pretty great. Yeah, it'd be pretty good against you. Land <laughs> has to share a type too. So does that mean it has to like? No, no, no. Like, sorry. 
Card type, not, oh, not card type. Yeah, okay. yeah. Creature from the dark. Sure. So yeah. If Mike plays any of his many illustrious creatures. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, let's Snapcaster. Yeah. Well, Do you think Kyle engine. is bummed that he doesn't have an Eidolon of the Great Rebel? I don't even know. He could have taken it. <laughs> no one took it. It uh, feels like it would be pretty good against the Storm guy. Yeah. Because that but, guy... I, I'm a little surprised Mike beat him. I guess he's got some counter spells and stuff, but I was expecting that guy to run the table. Well, Cody oh, said okay. that game one against Cody, he comboed off through both forces on turn two. But then game two and three, Cody got him. Yeah. Game three, he tried to storm off through a Dovin. And, uh, ah, that's he, tough. Yeah, you That's <laughs> That's, that's it, it works okay if you have like breach plus a black lotus. Yeah, he, he had Yogg's well, and yeah, and yeah. that you can only get LED back once with, <laughs> with yeah. well. I gotcha. All right, have fun, so, guys. All right, Thank enjoy you. your games. Yeah, I'm gonna try to keep winning, but someone's gotta kill Mike. Holy shit! That yeah. Unstoppable. Yeah. <gasps> He's got somebody he's who shakes the world. Unstoppable card. Who runs the world? Brandon would be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we. Are we in the tank, or have th- we just lost? I think we're on Mike's turn. Okay. He might have stepped away from the table for something. Okay, nope, there we, there we go. go. <laughs> we're reading this card again. Okay. okay, okay. Ah! We're stuck. On All right. rules yes. Uh, it, Shut up. All right, what's going on? It has to be at this point, like, a rules question about this card. Sure, sure. Is it where I got stuck with plays a land or cast a spell? Because to me, yeah. that reads like it would be plays a land no matter what. Well, I think the way that it's wording is they play a land. If that land shares a card type, then you take damage. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. We're trying to figure out if it's all lands all the time? Yeah, yeah, we're trying to figure out if it's both types or... Gotcha, gotcha. That's, that's what... I, see? That's what I'm saying. Why yeah. did I go here? I should have just stuff. Ha- I think this card would be unstoppable if it was okay, every time they play a land or they cast yeah. a thing. You imagine, yeah, the, the wording's vague enough that. Right. <laughs> yep. But I, I, I agree, Mason. Oh my god, if that card did both. Yeah, just. If that card was like, oh, Nag- okay, creature yeah, and yeah. land, like everything yep. you do. Well, that's the way I read it. Yeah. Card types. Well, that's the way Kyle read it. Too. Include artifact, creature, enchantment, land, planeswalker. But yeah, it's just like. Right. It's just letting you know it works on lands as well. Yeah, yeah. Just one of those things where it's like they templated it and it didn't quite make sense, but yeah. there was no better way to word it. Right. So they just I mean, ran I think, it and then cleared it up and gathered it. Right. It can be verbose. And then Layla will... Whew, that will... get there at a decent pace. Oh, yeah. Like, I have uh, turn one Layla, turn two Layla, and won the game just on the back of that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you... you yeah, it's your turn three, your opponent's turn two, now turn three. They're at 11. Yeah, the plays a card probably would have been better templating. There's probably some... Uh, generally, if they have a weird templating, there is an obtuse rules thing that yeah. they need the templating for. I, I imagine that very long ago, somebody inside WotC created templating software. Yeah. And there are are enough caveats and check boxes that I mean, there's, you... there's always something they get wrong like Sarah Paragon like there's always so if they have a weird extra template on that way there's some obtuse rule thing mm-hmm. right it's just yeah that one was the silliest one yeah I mean the Sarah Paragon or you know Levine and I who, who ask us about it we're like just the card plays as we know it plays <laughs> yeah. it's not trying I'm well, not yeah, rolling yeah. for you yeah the, the the story that was explained to me in that judge conference for the set was we just got our release notes. Yeah. We will lightly touch on this card. The direction from Watsi is as such. It plays Ooh. like it reads. We'll so, patch it later. Uro gain three, but lose two. <laughs> yep. So we went up to nine. Did we take the two? Yeah. He well he went he went he was at like uh, seven. Or he was he was lower than that somewhere. He was like eight. He gained gained some and lost some. Yeah. Okay. This is not boding well. So we're looking at one, two, three, four. Is Rabble Master math? One, two, three, four, five, six from Rabble Master. Yeah. Oh, because oh, Dan, what? Add another one. Uh, eight, nine, ten from Rabble Master. Because that's a 
Wait, and Mike the, goes down. It's Den of, the, Den of the Bugbear is a goblin, right? Yeah, and it makes a goblin when it attacks, too. Oh, is it tapped at attacking? From yeah, Den? yeah. Because uh, Den's got an interesting combo. Yeah. I don't know if you know that if you have infinite mana, the way Den's worded, you can sink it in and get Oh, is it goblins. like a Raging Ravine? Yeah, you it's got Raging Levine. Ra- raging Levine text, yeah. <laughs> yeah raging Levine text. So, yeah. yeah, Den's got with you have infinite, it's an infinite mana sink. You yeah. can attack with it and make infinite goblins. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't... Uh, Cemetery Gatekeeper was on Creature because it hit Vexing Devil, so right. you cast Uro, you gain three, and then Trigger lose two, so you only gain one from the Uro. That was, that's what I was asking, because I, I watched him fiddle with the die, but I didn't know where it started. I only saw where it ended. Yeah, it only is from playing the land, not putting it in. So things like... Too, yeah. yeah, things like that would have put it back into play, don't. So yep. Kyle goes to two and two, two, and, two. and drops Mike. There you go down to the I cannot go undefeated bracket. And yep. like I said, like that this was a match that's tough for Mike. You you can have I can have so many counters, but yep. like I have got to something's gotta stick, right? Yep. Absolutely. Uh, hey Mark, we have not had uh, a couple people on camera too, so if we get a shot at some point we yeah, have, I, need to move. I mentioned okay. to to Mark who we were missing. Okay, cool. Um we like I said we still need Nick on Nick, Cody, who have both played. So yeah. Um, um and uh, Mike, yeah, Nick Cody. The first three players in the sheet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, so, yeah. So this is going to be Jake versus Mason. And okay. They, they rode down. Got it. And Nick and Michael already played, so to get either of them on camera now is going to be individual right. matches. And Cody and Nick already played. Okay. Yeah, so we're looking at three individual yeah. matches for the three of them. Yeah. Okay, so. All right, so we've got uh, the Masons one and two, uh, four color. Good stuff. Oh, this is where we are. So Mason and Team Chicago is yeah. Mason and, and Jake. 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 Okay. So Mason's four and two four card good stuff, and Jake's mono white taxes. Mm-hmm. He's got enough colorless. I would have liked to have seen him grab like a Reality Smasher or something, just a little go over the top. Yeah, it didn't. It wouldn't seem like a bad option. Yeah. Um, and the nice part is that a lot of the creatures in the deck are human, so if you like if that was part of your plan, you could have taken Cavern of Souls right. to make the white for humans, and then the colorless for Thought Nuts here yeah. or Smasher or what have you. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that you're just gonna run into is you just want something to go over the top. You yeah, know? that's what we talked with Sam a lot about her last couple drafts. Is she's got these nice little like black green like engines with a lot of little guys and yep. stuff, but like just if, if you get something big that goes over the, over her top, she just hasn't been able to do anything. It's just like you just need like a. A questing beast, which went undrafted, uh, yeah. you know, uh, something big that goes over. Yeah. For sure. Um, Sam was also seemingly really into drafting death and taxes for a little while. Yeah, which yeah. Which was yeah. not a, a bad deck overall. It just doesn't do enough powerful things right. for this format. GTA can only carry, carry so a corpse far. so far. Um, All right. Before you actually need to. Just let's hit cut the top. Just go. We're good. Yeah, GT can right. only carry you for so long and then your removal's got to do the rest of it but uh, Mason should be one and two I do not know okay hey uh, Mark I think Mason's one and two not two and one scorekeeper scorekeeper we have an error on the screen yeah. okay. do we have to go back through the slips yeah who's on paperwork damn it Ooh, the turn one DRS. You're not going to get a lot out of Jake here. He's not really yeah. going to help you out. No. But you got your own stuff. You got the win. Yeah. Mason, he Mason he lost actually to Cody. beat Cody. Oh, he beat Cody? Uh, he beat Cody. He said he lost he to Cody. Beat, uh, he lost to Mike, but okay. he did beat Kyle. It was a 2-0 against Cody, is what it's reported here. Oh, okay. I'll verify t- with Cody, but he yeah, was Yeah, because totally Mason, when he was here, said he lost to Cody. I think Mason might have lied. Okay. But. He might have been confused. Okay. Uh, you might have been confused about the player because he mentioned Fairy Conclave. And right, right, right. And that was right, not right, in right. Cody's list. Yeah. He might have been thinking about it. That's in Mike's list. list. Yeah. Yeah. Which which plays out to what yeah. Mark just said. So, yeah, it's just a misremember All on right. names. So, we got Athalia in response. We're going to go ahead and pop this and Vampiric. Okay. So, we're going to. Yeah, in response to the failure, we're Vampiric. So we gotta have hopefully another fetch land in Witherbl- our Witherbloom seems really good. You're gonna pay three. He hasn't fetched the land yet. He's uh No yeah, exile with DRS, right? So Oh DRS, okay, that's it. Right. Yeah, so I'm right. saying right. like we Yeah, are... he's got land in hand most likely. Yeah. That's the 
like the exiled land of the RS, he can't get it back with the bloom, but he, he's got other options. Yeah, like this line of play should signal that he has another. Nope. Yeah, he does. Yep, there's the burden. Okay. Paying the extra. Yep, so we've, saga, we've amped at the end of Jake's turn for the uh, Witherbloom command. The saga command. should be at two. Yeah, we're just kind of breezing right. through this. So if Mason doesn't take this up to two, right. we can just... All right. Yeah. Send up the flag. Yeah. So is he... Yeah. Is he draining or is he returning the fetch is the question. Because he's also can, um, on the attack with the deep root, he can return the fetch as yep. well. So he could do a double up here. That is still uh, Saga on one. Nope, he's knowing himself. It's a return, yeah. Know himself, return the fetch. He's already played the land for the turn, though. Yep. That was the Verdant to go get the right. uh, Overgrown. Surveil. If it's a land, he can throw it in and return it. Otherwise, he can just keep it and... Call it good. Hey, Marcus, Saga should be at two. Palace Jailer? Nope. Yes? Uh, nope. Myrol. 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 M Y R E L? Yeah. Alright. What do you got? M Y R E L. Shield of Archive. I E, right? No. Yeah, I E L. -D. Yeah, I just. Mark that one up. You gotta type on these new ones. You gotta type it all. Yeah. Well, we're missing the point where it becomes relevant. So, right. uh, she stops some spells. She kind of does one of those. Um, Gib. There we go. There we go. So during your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of activated artifacts or creature enchantments. And when she attacks, create tokens. So okay. So it's like um, Grand Abolisher. Sure. Yeah. With some more upside. Yeah. But cost four. But yep. three, four, five. Okay, so we activate Saga in response to mm -hmm. the third chapter, and now we go... Get Soul Ring. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right, that's the only thing in the main that we can get, Pithing Needles on the board. Yeah. My Mox. Moxes. Two Mox and a Soul Ring. Yep. Yeah. No turntables, though. Yeah. But a microphone. where it's at yeah all right so where do we still have a fetch land in the graveyard he's got it, in his hand. it back okay he's got it in his hand he returned it all yep. earlier so now that'll go get the taiga yeah he's gonna, gonna exile it so yeah, he went and got it used the one man off of it to use the other man off her mm -hmm. um to assassin's trophy and get rid of my role because he yep. can't do it in his speed <laughs> yeah that is correct so we are on just mono Golgari lands right now. Yeah. So we there's got to be a taiga floating around, or another fresh land in hand that can get us. Our well, he red can uh, he can return that uh, yeah, the saga or the uh, or, or the fetch land. Yeah, it just takes. So oh, he he he, he, he banished the fetch. So mm -hmm. yeah, it no, just, it does. His 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 red and blue sources are gone right now. Right? Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have the. The trop. He just has the taiga. Oh, it's a Zagoth Triumph too. That takes yeah. care of that. Okay. All right. We have some options in front of us then. Ketria Triumph is which color? He's got two Triumphs. Yeah. Zagoth is Soul Tie. Ketria, Ketria is White. Teamer. Teamer. Okay. So okay. So I don't. Yeah. yeah. Teamer gets us the red that we're sorely missing. Zag. Relic Warder takes out the um, uh, Saga token. The construct. Yep. The construct. And Batter Skull. So. Yes. So there's a Taiga in hand. Mm -hmm. Batter Skull is just going to do Batter Skull things. Boop. Oh, yeah. Totally Terra Sunder. Terra Sunder. Vindicate is good. But we don't even have to Vindicate it this time around because it's already an artifact. Right. We just exile it straight up. Get out. No land to return unless we flip one in. So we'll, nope. I okay, which we're is we're, like, we're we're good with that. Yep. Seeing your two cards isn't. Uh... <clears throat> nope. And now we're in a spot where we can start draining. 
with our one mana planeswalker while making a construct, and we are in a pretty good spot. Yeah. We have a pretty clear cut path forward. Or if we need to, we can start eating creatures out of Jake's graveyard. Yeah. Glow Rider and a mommy. Yep. There's a construct. And what are we doing? Nom. Yep. Get you for two. You're on a five turn clock. All right, so we have a 2-2 two, two right now. Trigger Saga, make a construct. Go fish. So we've got a 2-2 two, two and a 2-1 on Jake's side of the board. Yep, and, um, and of note that Mom is fresh, so it cannot offer protections. Right. I thought I'd put up the, took out the X's, but this was game one, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, you did. We just didn't hit cut. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. Oh, that brings us oh, over. That brings us over. Okay. You got to go to the gameplay screen. The gameplay scene on the left. Okay. Bang right there. Gameplay scene. Okay, there we go. There you go. Okay. All right. Strip mine the tomb. Now we're stripping. Yeah. All right, so... But he's got he's got a handful of like that, that was great. I was like, that's a handful of gas. Yeah, he's got a Leobold in hand. I mean, still, it's a yeah. lot of gas. You have a two three against a very paltry force combined with a one three, the four four. We double block that guy. We're like, we don't want you returning strip mine. Strip mine, yeah, yeah get so. out of here, strip mine. So yeah, take the glow rider so we can cast our spells. Yeah. I mean, now you're just left with the lean and relic warrior and mom. Gonna exile the strip mine. Yep. Mine is mostly irrelevant. Like your his his mana <laughs> is not. No, we ate one of the two soul yeah. lands, so we're pretty good on that. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Like, what are the chances that Jake has Cauldra or City and draws the other in the next two turns? Right. Probably pretty low. So now we just present a more relevant clock. Away a token. Yep. So because I targeted one of our permanents, yeah, he's gonna, card. he's gonna read label. What? This card does what? Band and commander. All right, get rid of our Doctor Pee Pee Poo Poo draw card. Now we're left with two three threes and a one two. It's gonna bring it. It's gonna get you down to four. Cycle our nurturing peatland. Got a colors floating. I want to forget about the daytime though. <laughs> All right, our Minsk and Boo and our Dothy Voidwalker. Yeah, he's just like okay. okay. This is a still had all these moment, but he played him out instead. Right. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you got to. And we're done. Boo. Sometimes you got to seal the deal. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and guess, Beastly, that we do not have a daytime, nighttime flip. Yeah. All right. So we have... Let's see. Oh, unholy Heat... Yep, I'm just bringing up the uh, Moxfield stuff. All right. So we need Mason. Bang. And we need. No, it's Vince. Vince, not Jake. Nope. My bad. And we need Jake. All right. I think Jake's going to be a little more clear cut, so we can take a look at the side of things. Yeah. Oop. Come on, man. So when we take a look Cut at yep, Jake. All right. Um, Thark Commando gets rid of Saga. Giddy in the trials. Shalai eats a removal spell before something else does. Yep. Um, That's so true. Mm. Rest in peace. Pretty good. Yep. Lion Sash. Also, yeah. do you think you can eat yeah. the graveyard eat fodder before right. he gets to it? Eat lands. And get, 
So you kind of race the scoos in that regard. It, may, it negates DRS, yeah. favors scoos, but yep, for similarly for the same reason, rest in peace. Yeah, I mean those are only two that look really. I mean, argument for the protection on the Skrelv. He's got mom and stepmom. I don't know if you want a third. But yeah. Proctor doesn't do that much. Nope. And then Book of Exalted Deeds. So he's just going to get removed. Mm -hmm. Or even if you're able to trigger it, that creature's going to go, Aye. Yeah. Because Mason has all the removal. So there's not a whole lot on that end. If we take a look at Mason's list, we see Unholy Heat. Yeah, Un Unholy Heat's the only thing I think that comes in. Uh, maybe Grudge. Um, yeah, Pithing Needle's a little difficult because you have so many decent options. Oh, no, I got one. Um, yeah, Needle's not bad. So Needle like Stoneforge early or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Needle for a Yep, it's just extremely narrow in that regard. Yeah. Um, Collector Roof could be a look as well if you plan to control the creatures. This is like playing against Affinity where the job is to not necessarily deal with the equipment itself but deal with the creatures. It's effectively hat management. If you can manage the hat, you can win that match. And Collector Roof helps you manage the hat by shutting it off. The which one? Collector Roof turns yeah. off hats. Okay. Right? So that was kind of, that's what I was saying is when you used to play against Affinity in Modern, the matchup was all about hat control. Yeah. And if you could manage the hats, you could win the um, win the game. Why am, I, why am I missing this one? We didn't look at uh, James's list earlier. I want to see if he ended up playing the Karn because he did not die for Lattice. Oh yeah. In person, standings, decks, gameplay. Oh yeah, I want gameplay already. Yeah. Boop. So we shall see right, what so was brought in. Either on the first draw or on mole here, I can't tell. Hmm. I don't, I do not know. These two rode down together this morning from Chicago. Well, I guess depending on who wins, it could be a very interesting ride back. All right, Mason opens on three colorless lands. Oh, two color choices as well. Okay, five lands, DRS, and a W6. Six. Yep. yep. WD40. Yep, one of those lands was Nurturing Peatland, though. And another one was Saga. Stri and Strip Mine. <laughs> yes, uh, I'd assume you would... I don't know, Strip Mine, I guess the little pins are, right? Yeah. Five, five, five. <laughs> yeah. So this six... Bang. One drop. We have a deep wand, deep wanderer there. The wanderer of the deep. Yeah, whichever one. Okay, no idea. Now we're going to go ahead and mine down there. Okay. Oh, the Skrelf. So maybe it's coming in for the protection? Yeah. DRS, yep. We got one land from the strip mine over there that we can use next time. <laughs> Every time somebody cracks a bud, an angel gets its wings. Um, oh, it's a natter day. <laughs> so, what do you get protection to, and what do they get protection from? And the answer is yes. Yes. I guess it was more along the lines of what can I get with this Basagia? Right. Or what can my run six kill one of these? Mm-hmm. Alright, I'm gonna eat your plane, I'm gonna cast this run six. Just go ahead and strip mine that. Yep. See, instead of managing the hats by managing the creatures, we're <laughs> managing the lands so you can't even play Stoneforge Mystic. It was an option. Plus it. Yeah. Get Getcha. Eat your planes. Abrupt decay. Nope. Two to three. Stymie your attack. Yeah. And oh. we're just going to walk away. Yeah, I mean, that's it. You yeah. you have three lands and your opponent opens on the strip mine lock. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a tough one. Was Mason driving the car? Uh, yeah, Mason. Okay, that'll be a good yeah. drive back. <laughs> if Mason, if Mason well, was the passenger, though, would it be a, a miserable drive Mason's miserable pretty good. Drive. He's yeah. used to uh, winning, you know, up there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mason smells Gojek. I agree, but uh, Mason smelled his way into, uh, you know, a strip mine, and and welcome on the first time chat there. Yeah. That was. That was a uh, pretty brutal in game three there. Yeah, so. I mean, like, yeah. by the numbers, it's going to happen at least once. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're going to strip mine somebody out. So I guess, uh, what better person 
to lock out of the game with a strip mine than with the passenger buddy. of your yeah. car. Yeah, 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 yeah your yeah. buddy. Yeah. It's a good way to keep friendships going. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, so, come be in my wedding. And, uh, oh, Chronotog has been sighted. So, oh, that was the, <laughs> that's the draft. <laughs> hey, come be in my wedding and lose. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get Nick versus Kyle on camera. So this will be the first time we're seeing Nick. Nick, so Nick is Storm? Yes. Uh, that is one of the possible builds right. of Nick's list. Yeah, let's see what, it, what we ended up with here. So I think we ended up with just the, the Storm Thoracle. Um, one creature, Thoracle, as yeah. we expected. Then Demonic Tutor, Duress, Echo, right. Get Probe, Ideas and Bound, Seal, Purity. Okay, so we're, we're, yeah. we're drilling. Yeah, I, mean, I think the sideboard looks right. Like, like I think he made the right choices here. Uh, you know, the mind twist. Maybe the twist main deck might have, you know. Oh, we have all three combo finishers in the main. Oh, so tendrils, yep, we're Oracle, we got, and Bra yep, Brain Freeze. Brain okay. Freeze, we got up. We, we brought our drills to the party, and we got Thoracle here. Okay. So okay. we can go off from hand one of three ways. Right. And if you flip the Eldrazi, well, then I'll just keep going and get you with some drills. And if that all Is he fails, running that massive black spell main deck? Uh, hmm. No, no. Was he the one that drafted it? No, someone else must have drafted that. Okay, that was the... the... Uh, so just to inform about the last game that occurred, uh -huh. uh, we had Nick versus Kyle. Okay. Yep. And Nick had one more turn left to go. He went off uh, with basically nothing in hand, managed to frantic search through the Underworld Breach four times in the turn, Yep. and then was had both Demonic Consultation and Thoracle uh, with exactly two cards in Graveyard in addition to those. So he was one card away from winning the game to close out the match. So now we're going to game three this instead. Is three. So it's a 1-1? One, one. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. I got it. You got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we got to go... So exactly one card. So that is a problem of the uh, only Thoracle. Yeah. <laughs> is that, uh, you know, you need the... Uh, you need to make sure you get it exactly. You have no other no blue other mana, option. no other, uh, whatever that called, blue mana symbols. Yeah, devotion. Yeah, no devotion. Right. Yep. That is correct. I mean, which is fine. Usually you don't end up with much, if any, devotion. Yeah, yeah, you don't need much. Oh, Ragavan's good. That's... Yep. Okay, so what kind of removal are we talking here, main deck for... For Nick? For Nick. None. All right, well... Yeah. Duress, that's not removal though. No. Um, no snap. A braid, we have a braid. A braid, okay. Then, since we're in sideboards, we already. We had, we, had, we had a brutality, we had a fatal push. Chain of vapor. Okay, so we probably have some of those. Pyroclasm. Oh, yeah, yeah, I would have the pyro, pyroclasm. Yeah. Deluge. And there's the fatal push. <laughs> yeah. We also have deluge. Okay. Yeah. So he's got a good board. I, yeah. was, I didn't think, uh, early on I was saying I didn't think his board was good. Look at his list, his board's good. Yep. Yeah. He took the two most effective board wipes yeah. in the two and three mana slots. Yeah. So I think we're good there. What we this got? would be a good one for an idol. <laughs> yes, 100%. Swiss beer. Play with fire. Yep. Yep. Nick has Imp Seal, Pyroclasm, and maybe Mystical in hand. Okay. That seems like a pretty good... Yeah, and you're not in danger of dying next turn even after casting Seal. Right. So if you wanted to wait a turn to go off for Pyroclasm, you absolutely can. You're just short on every single resource, it looks like. Okay, Pyroclasm here. Yeah. There's not a lot more haste in, yeah. in Kyle's deck. We know that. Yeah, we're just going to take your clock off. Yep, go to 13. If we waited a turn on the Pyroclasm to get two creatures, we're, in, we're going to end up taking at least possibly anywhere from like yeah. three to six more damage or something like that. So, I mean, we've had two removal out. Um, that cemetery guy would be pretty good here, though. Like, on oh, yeah. sorcery. sorcery. Or, yeah. Yep. 
Cemetery Gatekeeper? Yeah. Yeah. But the next deck is very sweet, Caterberg. You are right. But there's no Doomsday in it, so, you know, give and take. All right. Got three. Uh... Yep. And we can play that. Oh, yeah, we can. <laughs> So, we should be at 12. We just haven't rolled the die down yet. Yeah. Yeah. D2. Doots. Toots my goots. Doots. Hey, Mark. Uh, Nick should be at 12, not 15. If you, oh, there, there you go. go. We got it. Kyle's getting it. Yeah. You passed the 12 like nine times. No, we don't go back. Oh, 10. I guess there might have been two in there. We missed somewhere. Oh, did we not? Oh, we might not have accounted for the imp seal. Right. Oh, yeah, the imp seal. That was it. Okay, so we've imperial sealed, demonic tutor. So it must have come on like back to back ish turns. Yeah. We real depending on what Kyle does, we might I mean, only have this last turn to give. Yeah, before. like no, yeah, this is he's got, it could be dead this turn or one more turn if you know. He's, this is a do something now or never. Yeah, because Lelia is going to take up to four, correct? Yeah, so he's going to take to six. Yep. If he has to burn, he can just end it now. Yep. You know, and especially if Layla hits. You know, yes. Yeah. Like a burn. Yeah, you got the one blue representing Chain of Vapor. Yeah. So yeah, there could very well be the uh, slide on. It's Chandra. Yeah. Yes. Now the question is, we're taking up for. Oh, okay. A robber. robber. Uh, yeah. Sure. Like, what does this do? And we are reading Robber again. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And Robber, now does Layla say X card from your deck or from any deck? I thought it was yours. I thought it was I like Bomac Carrier. Yours, yeah. Well, no, like when when does she go up when she exiles a card from any deck? When does she oh, go up? Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, let's just see. Do it this way. Creatures. Layla. Whenever one or more cards are put into exile from, from your, your library. library. Oh, so technically you could and have... your graveyard. You could have played Chandra plus to exile mm -hmm. with Chandra to pump Lelia. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's why it works really well with Bomac Courier because yeah. it's also exile. Historical Constitution. And gotcha. Yeah. So that's what we were doing is we were sculpting our yep. two card. Yep. Yep. Now nah, Kyle's running through that line. Four, six. He was at four. Yeah. Well, Kyle's going. I think Kyle's just talking over the line of instead of it was, that would have plusing to exile instead of plusing for two. That would have been damage. four, five, six, seven. So it would have been one more damage. Yeah. Well, that's on his next turn, but the turn when he played right. the robber instead, right. going right. to it would have been one more seven. damage than the robber. Yeah. Yeah. So. So I don't. I don't think there's a way for Kyle to get no, out of that. that. He would have had to have fire blast in hand as well. Right. Like, it, yeah, it he go, needed he needed the two burn in hand. Yep, yeah, that was that. exactly. Like, this like, is the now or never. Yeah, exactly, like you said, going into that turn. Or, yeah. Okay. Nick versus Mason. Okay, so Nick's staying on camera. We're gonna get Mason. All right. I'm gonna go down. check on this real quick. I think, cause I think we need to get somebody. Uh, that's fine. Actually, Nick's, Nick, Nick pull match on camera. Yeah, yeah, we need to get Nick's full match on camera. All right. So we're gonna keep Nick on camera. Well, with Storm and you know Nick and Mason are the next match that we have up as they have not played so we'll hopefully get Nick and Mason now and then Cody and or Mike shortly thereafter to make sure that everybody has played on cam and then we'll have been able to see everybody's sweet brews uh, as far as the day goes um, in so far as so oh Dr. Pee Pee Poo Poo himself Howdy doody. Oh, howdy doody time indeed. How's it going? Oh, good. What shade are you wearing? Uh, my, this is my fake date. My uh, taco. Nice. Yeah. My uh, wife just got her drop. The one that just went out, the 90s themed one. Ooh. You know, she was very proud to show me this morning. The, very nice. Yeah. There was a, a Spotify playlist that went along with it as well. It's pretty choice. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's good to hear. Yeah. Um, so, all right. I know very little. I saw uh, Mason's very good match against Mike mm -hmm. uh, about an hour ago, and then a portion of Vince's match mm -hmm. against uh, Jake, I believe. Got it. Other than that, I really don't know what's going on, so let's... We got some pretty cool stuff, so we just watched uh, 
Mason play his friend from Chicago, the Jake. So we had okay. Mason versus Mono White. Now we have Nick, who is on like uh, Grixis Storm. We have that list pulled up versus Mason. Okay. Right. So we're finally getting to so see. So he said that if he would have done the Chandra play, the top card was Fire Blast. So he would have killed oh. the Chandra. The, the, yep. the, 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 the oh, got it, got it. So uh, Mark knows that we still need to get. Yeah, he said okay. there's a lot of games left. So. Hey, Mike and Cody, yep. Uh, off of a uh, Chandra activation. Are you allowed to do... I'd have to read the Chandra, because that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so take me through Mason's list. This is not a typical Mason list by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it's No, it started out like one, like we would have expected, and it has since turned into something uh, four colors. And it, yeah. it's kind of like... four. It is just four color mid-range. I was going to say control, but we're not quite there. We have a... We have a Green Sun Zenith, so we basically have that package in front of us, and we're reliant <clears throat> a lot on our Planeswalkers and both Renin Six and Deep Root Wayfinder to recur Strip Mine. Yeah. So that is the most uh, powerful innate package inside the list. Yeah, because I was gonna say I'm looking at this list, and there are six cards here that could have been taken in the first three picks. Yep. Like I'm gonna g sorry seven. I didn't see the Urza Saga until right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and it seems like Mason's like, oh, look at all this value I am picking up. Yes. Left and right. Yep. And then by the time pick 10 comes around, it's like, oh, where am I? Yep. What, where am I supposed to go with this? Because this is insane. I mean... He mentioned he was going to start out uh, with Goblins today as well. So he opens Jet, Soul Ring, Thoughtseize, and then moves into Saga, Vamp Tutor, which could still be a little Goblin-y if you wanted to go that way. And then after that, it just kind of turned into this, like, Lee of Old yeah. value deck. Um, but no, you're right. We definitely... Like, Saga went round four, so Mason got it on... Eh, eh, on the wheel back. Um, my guess is that James would have taken it there after taking Crypt and Vaults. Uh, Monocrypt, Monovault, or Mike would have taken it with Time Vault, with Time Vault how, to go get that. How did Mox Diamond fall to round 13? Nobody else was doing anything with the graveyard in a similar fashion. Nobody wanted to give up. It seems like that innate value. They were too worried about what was going on at hand. We also had two monocolor drafters. Yeah. Um, but to your point, you could have forsaken a land in the list for the Mox Diamond. You want to play 16 lands, cool. We'll subtract 1, 15, no, add diamonds. You yeah. Know, and you're kind of good there. So Chromox also went really late for two monocolor decks. Um, that's fair. Okay. Uh, so getting back to the action a little bit, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I, no I took everybody off track here. Um, we've got some green black sources uh, over on Mason's side and a mystical tutor popping off. Yeah, so the nice thing about Nick's deck, uh, I'll bring it up, is that he has three different combo finishers in the main. Two of them are Storm Triggers, and then there's Thassa Oracle. And no matter what way you kind of look at it, he can. Uh, it's all it all can go from hand. He doesn't have to rely on the graveyard, despite having Yoggmoth's Well. So the Stothy Voidwalker might be little to no impact. Okay. Because you have High Tide, Turnabout, <clears throat> Frantic Search, and Time Spiral. Yeah. So, I think it is worth noting that this is, I believe, the first time in maybe almost two years where we have a clash of former champions against each other. Oh, okay. Because uh, if I remember correctly, Nick took down first place last time with a 6 and 1 Storm deck finish. Okay. Um, and then Mason. We were talking about Mason. Just, you know, went in. Not quite three in a row, but almost. Yeah, you know, I managed to. Uh, what team, team won the Super Bowl in 2003? Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> in the interim of the Patriots, yeah, yeah. three out of four. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, maybe? I don't know. Not my sport. But, yeah, that's fair. Um, so now we're just we're sitting here resolving a brainstorm. So basically, it was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over the. Okay. Okay. Sorry. All right. No, that's fine. You were deep <laughs> in the tank on that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. So it looks like Mason is just gonna try and con constrict Nick's mana production, cashing in the Assassin's Trophy on the Grixis Triome, 
shrinking his footprint of colors. How relevant is that? To Nick's list? Yeah. Um, not very. He has UC, which we still have out. Valk. And the Valk is still floating through the main. Then Grixis, two Grixis fetches. And he's primarily blue-based, like we see in the, the list. So Seven Islands. So it's like not really too much. I mean... Um, it, I think it's to be to be honest, there's nothing else really that a uh, an assassin's trophy is going to hit profitably. The fastest oracle trigger doesn't matter uh, for fastest yeah oracle to be on the battlefield. Uh, Underworld breach maybe. That's what I was gonna say would be the only thing is, but you gotta you got you gotta try and weave your way around stack interaction and insofar as I mean response to your assassin's trophy start yeah. firing off just not instance um you could try and force the issue like and if nick were to just lay out an led and pass you know which seems very careless mm -hmm. uh, that would be an option okay so mason has enough money to cast thrag tusk and that'll just start oh yeah oh yeah the void walker for sure doing work it stopped the flashback back on any kind of value yog will yeah um and now, next turn, we have the ability to cast Thrag Tusk for Mason, and it's still a four-turn clock, but it does start applying pressure mm -hmm. in a useful way. <clears throat> I mean, the thing about Nick's deck and, you know, I'm going to say competent storm lists in general, is that it's just very much not over <laughs> until yeah. their life total is at zero. Mm -hmm. uh, and just looking at the lands, the way that they're presented, it gives me a sense that getting uh, getting Nick off of that triome was impactful and a right aggressive call by Mason. The getting him off of the second black source yeah. for for convenience sake was very important, but then Nick also didn't get a swamp. He got a mountain and has not played a swamp from hand. So there's some amount of value mm -hmm. that Mason placed on a, on a effectively a black red source yeah. that Nick didn't. So I'm curious to know why. Um, I mean, so he... What that tells me is that Nick has Breach in hand. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, what's left over after that, he has... I mean, this is later in the game, obviously, but he has a, you know, basically black-blue source. Yep. Um, and so... He's short on doing... see here we're not we don't have that many more black spells left that we need double black for either we've already cast yeah. our duress we can't double tutor in a turn um and because of the void walker our cabal ritual which is the only actual ritual we have is gonna yeah. gonna come up way short but at the same time because there's no clock we can just sit here and fiddle for it. So I see a frantic search. Is there a mana? Okay, so mana morphos. Yes. So that would be the red source. Yeah. Yeah, to turn it into the double black or whatever you need. So okay, there's a frantic search, a mana morphos, floating in Nick's hand. I think he might just be waiting for a critical mass of spells. He's just fine sitting here playing Drago until Mason wants to, to make a move. Yeah. Pyridine. Nope. High tide. All right. This is our frantic search turn then. Alright, floating four. Okay, Kalal Ritual might be in hand. Alright. One, two, three. Yep, yeah, and we got an extra blue off the UC. Yep, okay. So we're missing a storm count. But other than that, yeah. I guess this is our, our turn. Alright, so we have a blue floating. This is spell three. Lands. Turnabout? Okay. Yeah, I think. I think he's probably got it here. Yeah, there we are. We, we, need, we just need something to. One of our actual storm enablers. Right now, we're just playing the, like, massage our hand game. Yeah. We have the frantic search. 
No, we see we cast the Phoenix. Yeah, Monomorphos to draw through. And there's an island off camera, so we have mana for turnabout Natty off our lands. Yep, there we go. Thank you, Mason. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so if there is a couple on ritual in hand, which it looks like our spotter says there might be. Wait, did we just end our chain? Uh, I believe so. Appears so. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we didn't find anything. We just wanted. Okay. All right. <laughs> the joys of watching Storm play yeah. out and fizzle. Uh, so, um... That's weird. I don't know why... You were under the Maybe it just wasn't enough draw-through. What do you mean, why go? Mm -hmm. Why go in the first place? You're under no pressure. Well, he probably thought he could get one of the extra pieces with Preordain. Maybe it's one of those situations where you just need to draw into one of two tutors or, like, draw into, um, like an oracle or okay. just you know x y or z yep and none of those three cards yep or none of those cards showed up in those three so yeah decided to avoid the gambler's fallacy and bail on that situation <laughs> yeah which is not something that uh i am confident <laughs> at doing it takes a real seasoned uh storm cube style storm aficionado to pull that off yeah I am I'm a fan of the value like the value storm combo where you just go for a little bit to make sure you can live, right? You we have tendrils. If if we could only get to like four or five storm with the tendrils, then I think that's a perfectly fine time to do it if you are under enough pressure where that line makes sense. Yeah. To just live long enough to, to go again. So you can live, laugh, love long enough. <laughs> yeah. He lost his own consultation earlier too. Ugh. You hate to see it. Yeah, it's. I'm not saying it wasn't fine to go there, but because we're under no pressure, I just don't understand why we felt like we had to go there or why that was the right time. That's the piece that I'm missing. That I just from what I see in this game, I don't understand why go. Now, see, back in my day, when I was playing on camera, I would always. Have have the courtesy to oh, yeah, show yeah, yeah. off my hand. That was one of my favorite parts about actually um, watching Feline Longmore play High Tide at the SCG events because when they sideboarded, they would hold yeah. the sideboarded out cards up to the camera and then the sideboarded in cards up to the camera, so there was no question. That was that was it's, a real nice move. You know, these whippersnappers. Yeah, right. <laughs> these youths don't have any respect. For another the audience. another old man to yell at a cloud with me. All right, awesome. And we did we did see Leovold come out next, so uh, that only stops you from <laughs> from targeting, right? You still went under Thoracle with Leovold. Uh, you know I had each opponent can't draw. Oh, okay, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. That's right. It has the Narset clause because I yes. forgot about that. You or a permanent. You control. Okay. You may draw a card. Okay. Yep. Got it. Okay. You know, there is a very good reason that Leovold was so strong. That they banned it in Commander? For so many years. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, you know, it's it's mana cost just really did it in there. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's not the easiest. Okay, yeah. If you thought you were going to get locked under Leovold and you just wanted to fire off some draw spells, that, that makes sense. I guess, if you if you really, if the odds were ever in your favor, yeah. Okay. Mason just kind of tightening these pincers on this clock that he has going. Yeah, look at all those juicy and <clears throat> sorceries left in that graveyard for that DRS to eat. Uh, what was I looking for? Frantic search is an instant, right? Yes. Yeah, so you could just frantic search in response to Leobold. but you couldn't preordain, so you lose that one spell. All right, there's consultation. Did he know that he had Leobold? Deck lists are open. Whether... No, I mean, did he know that he had it? In uh, he cast Duress. I don't know if he, if the Leobold was in hand okay. yet. That, I think I was talking about Super Bowls from 20 years ago at that point. I just <laughs> happened to miss that <laughs> one. Lost in your own thought? Yeah. yeah. I was just looking at the 
at Mason's first 12 picks, kind of bewildered. <laughs> that he managed to get all of these things uh, and then still run yeah. a deck with Grista Hunger Tide yeah. in it. Yep. Somehow still got there. All right. So Thassa's Oracle went over in the consultation. It's consultation Exile. Yes. Okay. Okay, so he lost his own consultation again. He got the Underworld Breach, but he exiled things. The Oracle on the way to the Breach. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. So now we're going to step in a sideboard, which I think for Mason's probably pretty clear cut. So we're just over here. Bang, bang. We'll bring up Mason's Mackie list. So you have Vale of Summer. Uh, I think we can be pretty certain yep. that that card is coming in. And then you have Mystical Dispute, Hull Breacher. Seem pretty dece. Uh Yeah, absolutely. Especially because, as we saw in the last round, Frantic Search, Preordain, Manamorphose, a lot of these uh, pieces in the Storm Package have incidental card draw. I don't know if that's the appropriate yep. term, but like... This is part of the engine, and uh, Hole Breacher sh not only um, removes their ability to draw those extra cards, but those treasure tokens are going to be yeah, choice. super important uh, so that uh, he can still, that Mason, let's say, can still cast spells through setting up a Ren and Six strip, strip mine lock. lock. Yep. Um, and then, you know, also being able to potentially have Scavenging Ooze mm -hmm. eat every piece that needs to be eaten there's also an endurance in the main yeah so that's uh that's a good one too you don't have to worry about that you come pre-boarded a little bit yeah. for this matchup but yeah then there's just like kind of tier two stuff where you could force the lotus or the led pop with grudge and collector ooh for pithing needle which is probably yeah. not worth it i think we see um at the very least abrupt decay coming out um and uh i don't i mean i don't think assassin's trophy has any value here either i think uh, witherbloom command what are we looking for out of this card is this sticking around uh it, it, it's another way to bring back a strip mine i okay. believe uh destroy target on the target player mills three cards then you return a land card from your graveyard to your hand sure and then you can just do the two the drain two gain two if you want to keep the strip mine lock going if you don't have w6 for some reason that's fair um i think that uh, you, uh, you're, you're picking those two. Yeah, I think Terra um, Sunder is another one that could probably come out. Because again, what are you getting with this? Nothing. Yeah, nothing that he's not playing and then using. Yeah, exactly. That turn. Yep. Uh, it, it, well, especially Witherbloom Command not being at instant speed, I think is, is okay. Yeah. Kind of a problem here. Yeah, there's not really a lot else from a creature standpoint that you could pull out like. You might be able to argue either Oko or Grist is a little too slow if you want to make sure you can lock, like, present a decent lock. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. And then from Nick's side, we have Offer You Can't Refuse, Easy Counter Spell, Chain of Vapor, well, I would say, most likely coming in Collector Brutality. And this is all just to deal with the creatures, like we said. Right. Uh, defense Grid, probably not. You don't think you really care about that. No. And then, I don't know if you want something like uh, Mind Twist and him. Like, do you want to try and play that game? I don't... I don't think so. Uh, I think the kind of... I think Mason is going to board into kind of a higher... higher density of threats yep i also think that as we kind of saw last game um the mana base is a little bit strained in the storm deck yep. especially having a lot of it being one-off mana mm -hmm. the black lotus the lotus petal lion's eye diamond and uh with mason having a strip mine recursion package that uh him to turak if it is not in your opening hand, and even the, then, in some cases, just ends up being a dead card that you can't cast for for black black. Yep. So, um, I don't think it's going to ultimately help 
too much. Hmm. Uh, and I don't think... I don't think Pact of Negation helps out too much because Mason's not winning off of one. Yeah, he's not interacting with you in such a way on your own turn that right. you would want the Pact. No. Yeah. yeah. So the, I think the only other th- thing then would be like toxic deluge is coming in for sure okay you know, as another creature control yes yeah okay like fluster storm i think there's an argument for but a lot of the damage is done via planeswalkers so it doesn't quite hit what you want it to so right. i think we would look at that necessarily okay so we're just basically looking at a lot of options to deal with the creatures mm-hmm. that mason's going to present you yeah um Obviously, the Toxic Daily is just being a reset button. Pyroclasm, to so some degree, early. also doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, but Collective Brutality, uh, being able to manage creatures as well as either keep you in it or pitch something to the graveyard that you want to be yep. casting again. So, yeah. Uh, and then the offer you can't refuse. Just the easy way to deal with some brutal planeswalkers. Yeah. So it's Chain. Just return uh, target non-land permanent, right? Yeah. The only thing is you can get chained back pretty easily. So I think that is... It speaks to the mana squeeze that, that Mason presents, so maybe you don't want to bring it in because... Well, if... I mean... His permanents are not... His permanents are zero mana artifacts, right? And so if they're bouncing those back, then it just gives you a chance to target something else while adding a bunch of storm... Not a bunch, but adding additional storm counters on your side to yeah. be able to replay those zero mana artifacts. So I wouldn't be concerned nearly at all about uh, getting that bounce. That's a big play off off the break because yeah, yeah, okay. that is uh, that is going to leave Nick with two islands. Uh, so just the lotus petal as a black source, basically. Yep. Oh, nope. So Mason took... What was it? Frantic search? Peter, go walk it off. Take a break. Right. Walk it off. Walk it off. Hey, oh, I'm walking here. Crazy, crazy game between Vince and Cody. Time twister from Cody. Uh, reshuffled his library to save him from the mill. And then Cody just got there. Vince was one short of killing him. No. Like... He was at three. Vince put, played Slither Muse or whatever it's called, Whisper Slither, or whatever the one that it's the one that when you play a Flash play, you draw a card and they can't lose a life. Okay. So then he played Orcish Bowmaster, which has Flash. So he lost a life to go to two. Bowmaster hit him to go to one, but he didn't have a way to do the last damage. Oh, hey, Mark, stop it with your words. Brandon is so attractive, but you know, we we can't all be that way. <laughs> All right, so is this actually one on one? Uh, I this, believe. Um, or did we just not delete that? Uh, no, time? Mason got the first. I think it's at one. They've, they've yeah. been uh, they've been sideboarding for quite okay. some time, um, and I think it's still a good matchup. I think uh, coming out of the sideboard, Mason probably has a little bit yeah. uh, more impactful stuff coming in while uh, Nick is getting some nice little value pieces. I, early on, and I hope Nick listens, if he listens to this, I hope he makes it past the draft part. Because early on, I was saying, like, I didn't think his sideboard came together very well. I thought he had too many main deck cards. But once that came together and I looked at it, I think his sideboard's really good. Yeah. So, <laughs> I was like, Nick, if you're listening to this, listen to this part where I'd say, I was wrong, and <laughs> your sideboard's really hot. Yeah. Because um, I was commenting that I thought there was three sideboards that I didn't think had enough sideboard stuff. And I said his was one of them, but I, I, I corrected myself once I saw the lists. Yeah, it seems very uh, adaptive. Yeah. Um, it's also, uh, constructing a sideboard or having a sideboard in this format. It's is, so hard, man. It's, the, it's, it's, it's incredibly I mean, even, difficult. Just even when you're decent at it. Like, as long as I'll have a great sideboard, I look at it and I say, this sideboard's amazing. And then I'm like, but what the fuck do I side out, right? Like, I don't want to side out any of these cards. Yeah. Like, it, it, I will say that that is... Okay, well, that is a game. <laughs> was that Nick, I assume? Or? Uh, no, that was Mason. Okay. Uh, getting uh, a whole Breacher into play, making... Uh, knowing what Nick has in hand. Right. He's, there's no way he's going to be able to fake his way out of this one. But, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, you know, That's why the Thoughtseize IOK 
it's yeah start yeah. is uh is very potent because it you've is. got a redundancy and if you're not drawing those cards in your opening hand means you're probably drawing the other gas that you drafted. Yeah. No, and Mason's got some chonky pieces. Yeah, he's got some good stuff there. I think it's Cody and Vince coming up. Yeah, Cody and... Not Cody, no, Cody and Vince already played. It's Cody and the other guy that's not been on Canada. Cody and... Uh, James. Yes. Yeah. Um, All right, so let me pull up some lists Yes. Yeah, go here. ahead and pull that up. I'm going to pull up a bud list. <laughs> yeah, you do that, sir. All right, so this will be James' first shot on camera, and I'm excited to see this. He had, um, I don't know, I don't really want to see how they came together. His deck started, like, looking one way, and then had some other stuff, so I want to see, did the Karn package end up main deck? Um, no, Karn ended up in the board. So because he didn't draft, end up drafting the. So he started with like a Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, Grim Monolith, Karn, Basalt Monolith. And we're like, okay, this is the way he's going, right? This sounds fine. And then he went like Show and Tell and into like this kind of Show and Reanimator package. So we didn't know which way the the if he was going to stick with the Karn package or not. He never drafted a um um. Lattice, right? So that was kind of a tell that he might. Let me uh, switch. So Lattice was not in the 46. Yeah, Lattice was not in the 46. So that was kind of a tell that, hey, well, maybe he won't uh, end up. Um, nope. We want. That was okay. the thunder, not my heart beating, because Brandon's sitting so close to me. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, so, yeah. So, let's take a... So, he's got um, some reanimator package here. He's got Professor with Chain of Smog. Uh, he's got Gorio's Animate Dead, Unmarked Grave, and a lot of, like, self-targeting. Like, Unmask, he can target himself. Chain of Smog, he can target himself. Yeah, I... Um... Sedgemore plays with um, Chain of Smog. Doesn't have a lot to stop what they're doing. All right? So he's definitely... I'm doing my thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, saying here is an Emrakul. Right. <laughs> Figure out how to yeah, yeah, no, with for sure. that is, uh, you know, a much better... Uh, you know, uh, the best defense is a good offense or something like that. Yeah. And with Cody, we have uh, kind of similar in some ways to the stuff he did last time. Uh, but he's got both of the white initiative people, Skyclave, Spellqueller, Phyrexian Metamorph, stealing my, what I've, I've been pre proselytizing as the sweet initiative tech, the, you want the, the Metamorph. Yeah. Uh, you and I coming in high on the Metamorph all the time. Uh, Lavinia as Percentinal, Dranath Magistrate, which plays well with some of his other cards. Uh, Triple Teferi. Uh... The balance yeah. and uh, Teferi's protection combo. Um, he can bring in Chronotog. Is Chronotog main deck? Yes, yeah, Chronotog's main deck with Teferi's protection. So his goal is to play Teferi's protection and then after it resolves, play Chronotog. And then just if they don't have removal, they lose. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's... All right, so we've got a Grim Monolith and an Esper Sentinel. He said Jusu one. Well, they don't have removal. A lot of people don't have removal. Like this match? Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? I guess you're going to cast an Emrakul and uh, swing with an Annihilator and then make me lose it. Ah, you know, you hate to see it, but... Yeah. All right, so... Oh, nice. Scheming Fence is going to shut down a Grim Monolith. Now, the thing about... Ay, Chihuahua! So, Scheming Fence takes both activated abilities. So the he, it, But it does not have the no untap clause. So, the, stealing the Grim Monolith, it just literally just taps for three and then untaps every turn. So it takes the it, scheming fence takes the activated abilities of the card. The un, no untap clause is not an activated ability. It is a static thing, right? So I don't understand why that means it untaps as normal. Because all right, so let's take a look at scheming fence. Activated abilities of the chosen permanent can't be activated. Scheming fence is all activated abilities of the chosen permanent. It's not a. It's not a. Grim oh, monolith. I thought you were talking about the Grim Monolith. I'm like, no. why, why would there Grim? Okay, I. So basically, I the scheming fence now taps for three every turn. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very <laughs> uh, juicy. Very nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, looking at this, these decks, um, I think that this is going to be 
this is going to be a hellish matchup for James. Not only because we've just seen uh, right. the Grim Model get... <laughs> Cody's got enough stuff that yeah. can answer some of the big things, right? Like, no, no, we're not big, right? Because the issue is like uh, Skyclave, right? So Skyclave can't answer some of the really big things. Sure. But we've got Double Force. Um, we've got Path to Exile. Um, Just, Touch the, the Spirit Realm. And even more removal of Osborne. The concept of what a Teferi Planeswalker does, regardless yeah. of which one it is, is antithetical to the list that James wanted to run. Right. And it looks like even... All right, so we just took the initiative. We got three mana up, but we're not even using it because we can just swing in with some dudes and we don't need to. Yeah, we're just going to swing in for yeah. three. Um, it's going to be a, a fairly fairly quick bleed out. We'll accelerate. Yeah. So one of the interesting things, I don't know if you watched early in the commentary that we talked about, was that, and then I said it, and then Mason came in and on his interview and said the exact same thing I said, which makes me feel extra smart. Mm. Um, we, we had the two mono decks. And the thing about having one mono deck, so okay, but two mono decks really just lets the other people go to town, right? Like, 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 the fact that Mason didn't, like, the fact that Mason got every faction <laughs> diamond in round 12. Like, 30th pick Viseju. You know, <laughs> yeah, like like two mono it's, decks just lets you let, can't you can't do that. Like you, it just you, you're let, going to if you run a mono color deck at that point, you're just gonna get bullied. Yeah, you're hurting other people at that point too. <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like you're just somebody. There's you can be the people. one person. Yeah, one to, mono deck. to run a mono color deck, but if it happens with two people, yeah, man. All right, so we've got five man. I expect a Teferi hero here. Yeah. Hey, that scheming fence came in really useful here. Yes, a deal. And that's a Sedgemore witch. Now she's got ward. Like she's got, he's got to pay three life to deal with her, but he'll happily do that because if he casts Chain of Smog next turn, yeah, he makes infinite one ones. So uh, he's not doing it. Well, he might have something in hand for the Chain of Smog too. Like yeah, he's got Force of Will in hand. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is so. Um... Yeah, so Cody, Cody ended Cody up talked to me. ancestral white plume force of will force of negation. Yeah, yeah. Cody talked to me about uh, this the past. He's gonna pay three uh, life. A little bit beforehand. Yeah, he and um, it was it looked fairly similar to this, but it had a there's like a green package in there, and so he's gonna have some Oko. Yeah, some other stuff like a fast bond kind yeah, of yeah. thing, and. Uh, it was a very Brandon deck. It was. It was. It was. I, yeah. I, I saw it, and I, I had actually recommended taking the package he wanted to run and just smashing it with the package from the last friends and family that he won with. Mm -hmm. And that's what he ended up doing. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, no, you just need to smash it with your last friends and family package. And just... This, li this list looks very tight. Yeah. Very dense. Yeah. And uh, I would not be surprised if uh, we see Cody back in the yeah. finals again. Yeah, he lost There's... to Mason earlier. And that's his only loss so far. This might be another one of those uh, VRDs where we're sitting with like three or more people, at five and two, or yeah. even four. People. Well, not four people, but uh, all right, it's where burning we have inquiry. A bunch of people. Above Cody does not want that to resolve. I assume, though. Well, fortunately, uh, Cody has plenty of options, yeah. and this Esper Sentinel is going to help continue to refill his hand. Uh, every time James tries to get something else going through. Yeah. Yeah, we're just going to hard cast this yeah. Force Negation. It still weirds me out. One of the weirdest kind of clauses is you can't do its alternate casting costs on your own turn. Well, that's to stop it's, you from protecting your own combo. It's meant to shut other people down. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I suppose, I suppose James so. is like, okay, this is dumb. Um, yeah. We're going to haul that in. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, uh, kind of interestingly, if you if you look at a little bit at Cody's list, is that if you are looking at a field that is much more creature heavy, uh -huh. instead of doing a Teferi package, let's say, you know, the white plumes get, right. get sniped, the uh, you know X Y and Z. Uh, a really fun alternative route that does not really require you to pivot at all is going uh, the Gideon Sweepers route. Okay. And uh, essentially, you just you have your Gideon Himbo to the Gods. Right. You have your Gideon Ally of Zendikar. Um, 
and uh, Gideon Blackblade is, I think, a little bit. I don't know that it's been drafted. drafted. I've drafted it once okay. on the Discord draft, okay. but I don't think it's right. been drafted yeah, yeah, since Lotus. But it's a nice little piece. Um, yeah. But you run these creatures, uh, or these planeswalkers, and then you just run a Wrath of God. And you do that, and then right. you uptick on all of them and swing for 11 or whatever. And uh, it's, a, it's a nice way to have things that deal with, let's say, a True Name Nemesis, a Hex Drinker. All right, uh, so let's see what comes in here. Fallen Shinobi coming in. He's only got the one black source with the Rafine's Tower. He didn't bring a swamp for his Prismatic Vista. So I don't know if that was just, I just won it because I like the Fallen Shinobi and I want it to be cute. It was my 46th pick and I don't care. Um, or not. Is there a way to cheat it in? No. So I think that was just, as a, I'm taking it because I like it and I'm just going to be cute. I'm not, I'm not even going to run it, whatever. Sure. Uh, but it would actually be really good in this matchup. So <laughs> if he was bringing it in. Uh, he can fetch the Rufine's Tower, right? Like, he's got the Flooded Strand. So, I mean, but... Um, well, see, I'm not actually sure how this works with, like, if you have to declare basics in your sideboard. We don't. So he can, yeah, he can bring those. So. Uh, Containment Priest, obviously ridiculous here. Um, yes. Cyclonic Rift, also very good. Cyclonic Rift, the, good. I, the, the, Dovin's was, actually pretty good. Yes. Uh, this was never a good matchup for James. Yeah. And this is only getting more and more brutal out of the side. And then March of Otherworldly Lights, probably fine. And maybe that, even see, Thieving that, Sky that gets, that gets cards out of hand? It just exiles uh, a target artifact creature or enchantment with no okay. value extra less. Um, in that case, I'm not sure... It hit artifact too, so it can hit some of the early. I mean, and that's a maybe. Um, yeah. James probably. I don't know. See, this was a this was one of the the sideboards I critiqued, right? Like, there's just not a lot here. It's a lot of uh, cards that you pivoted out, right? Of. Or that stuff that I do what or I already do, right? Like sneak sure. attack or. I do like the Crystalline Giant with the uh, Mana Crypt, that's in, or uh, the, uh, not Mana Crypt, the, uh, uh, is he running the Workshop? Yeah, he is running the Workshop, not trusting, okay. Ooh, running the Workshop with 15 lands in this deck seems risky. Looting, but, but, Cody doesn't have any distinct graveyard hate, right? Uh, you know, he's got the Twister, but he doesn't have any, like, you know, direct, I'm gonna mess up the graveyard there, so... So he pitches the workshop and something, and I fix up. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, that must have been a shuffle that I missed. Uh, uh, Imperial seal. Oh, okay. Does he have seal? No, he doesn't have seal. He, uh, seals to the storm deck. He doesn't have any of the tutors. Could have been. I mean, the only thing that would have searched his deck would have been uh, oh, in tomb. tomb, but I don't see Nothing a graveyard, gray, so. Yeah. so I don't quite know what happened there. What is it? Di no, divest wouldn't do it. No, um, I have no idea. Yeah. All right, so we got an opal that's not going to do a lot with that dimension man artifacts. That's the opal seems. So this is Jan this is his first one. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. is his first draft and. You know, we talked before, Reanimator, this type of deck is often very attractive for the first draft. It's it, it's a cube deck, yeah. right? That, oh, I love this card so much. Yeah. Invasion of Gobbledygook. Oh, now I want a modded one. The, the Gobbledygooker from WWF, the big turkey that they had that one Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's the Invasion of the Gobbledygook. <laughs> All right. Uh, so he's going to tomb, and tomb in response to the Invasion. So, all right, when did it become kind of clear that uh, that James was in the list? That he, okay, so, yeah, pick 9 and 10, you have an Entomb reanimate. Yeah. Um, at what point did Mason get Vampire Tutor? That was his fifth Vamp pick. Yeah, okay, so that was already off the yeah. board. And then Demonic um, Tutor went around 7. Uh, Imperial went much later. Imperial was down yeah. later. I, I think, I think that, though. yeah, this this um, is a list that really so, would be helped by one tutor. Right. So you, if you take the reanimate, so he entombed Atraxa, you take the reanimate, if he, he's he got a land in hand, so he can still reanimate. It's just going to cost him the full mana to get the Atraxa. Yeah. So that's rough. I mean, that is rough on Cody. Um, 
Invasion of Gabi is two more, so he can play the land and do the reanimate. Um, and then draw a lot of cards. So he's going to draw one. If he hits a force. So we're going to see. Does it resolve? He gives the thumbs up. All right. So... We so have where, where does uh, Atraxa put the cards? Hand. So it's going to draw you a lot of cards. Uh, Atraxa, the Grand... Is it the Grand? Or, no, just Grand. Grand Unifier. Unifier. So, flying, vigilance, that's life lifelink, so it doesn't really stop any of Cody's removal, uh, but it put every card type, you may put a card from them into your hand, put the rest in the bottom in a random order. So, it looks like we are piecing together... Uh, we already took a Mana Crypt. Um, wait, it's, it's okay. And then, uh, put one at the bottom. Of the so, because okay. we, we Faithless looting... <laughs> It looks like a sneak this attack. Is, yes. Oh wait, was it? Sneak yes, attack was he, on the he, board. He already took the mana crypt. So. Yeah, well, he put. I think he put it back, like the crypt. He didn't have. That's crypt. a basalt mono. Oh, like. he does have the crypt. Okay, that's a basalt. Okay. So. And then that's still well, no, because oh wait, no, it's not. Protraxa is not an artifact creature. Right. Uh, but so he's gonna take the archon. No, he's gonna take Grizzle Daddy. And he can get in. I mean, you might as well just grab the enemy dead. It's the only enchantment. You get the land. Yes. Unless he's already got a land. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, uh, you so know, the put something in your graveyard and pitch to. The rest are going to go in the bottom. Well, he's right. still going to have. He's still drawing five or six cards, right? He's got, I, he's he's got the land, the enchantment, land, the sorcery. Enchantment, sorcery. Instant. He didn't have instant. Creature. He didn't have instant. Okay. He already entombed. He didn't hit Gorios. I don't think he has instant. Okay. Unless he put the Gorios there already. and So land, so sorcery, creature, artifact, enchantment. So five. Um, and then, I mean, that and it's a May, so he could just choose not to if he... Right. But yeah, that should be like, enough. I don't know why you wouldn't want the anime dead into your hand there. It seems weird to put it back. I'm not sure what's happening. Unless. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he just decided he didn't want it. To it's a May. I mean, he can choose not I, to. Yeah, I guess. All right. So we have an Archon in hand. I see a path to exile in Cody's hand. He's like, that's it's, a lot of cards. Okay. Crocus yeah. seems good. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I that, that last friends and family or two friends and family ago, whichever it was, last time it was maybe the last one where I like I had that one match I could have won, but I just couldn't beat a Crocus. Like yeah. I had the wind con in my hand, they were both legendary creatures, and just like I can't beat this Crocus. Like I cast River Ash, she returns it. I cast this other one, she returns it. <laughs> yeah, Crocus is a. Uh... It's, it's one of those ones that, like, you just, you're always wondering how far down the pole you can push well, I, it. I said, I, I mentioned earlier this one should grab it at his point, and uh, Peter was like, oh, that seems early, and I said, Caracas is like Walking Ballesta. When you want it, you want it, and, like, you, you it can go at any point, it. right? It can go yeah. at any point. Like, you do, there's no predicting where Caracas can go. Right, I can Caracas goes earlier than Ballista does on average, but like, like yes. Ballista, it's like well, that's because Caracas will always anywhere. get right. picked. Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, but it's like they're very similar cards. <laughs> like it's so rough because it's just like, oh well, yeah, I don't really. Oh yeah, uh, oh no, I, I totally mean that. I, I missed it in chat. Sorry, chat. Did I miss anything here? I did not have it up. Okay, shout out. Oh, yeah, Roro crying in the other room. Mark, Aurora. did you ever realize that we both have Aurora? Yours is Aurora, and mine is Rowan, but we also call her Roro, so we both have little baby Roros. Mm -hmm. Mine's not a baby anymore. She's a giant, she's a giant, almost five-year-old monster. Mm. 
And I have a dog named Crunchwrap. Yeah, we have a dog named Waffles. (laughs) (laughs) Only one of those you can get at Taco Bell. That's true. But you should be able to get Waffles at Taco Bell. Taco Waffles. That what you know what? Yes. Hey, I'm gonna swing with this guy. He gonna come at you. He's I'm gonna take it. Interesting. I'm intrigued by that. I don't know. It seems. I don't. I have lots of questions. Uh, maybe Path of Exile at end of turn, so he can just be done with it. Maybe, but I mean, he's not had the colors to recast it anyway, so he's got a. Oh. oh, yeah, that makes a lot more okay. sense. Okay, sometimes having knowledge about what's in hand is yeah, uh, important. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Cody's okay. like, I think that this is meant to be pretty, no, pretty juicy for Mr. And, Cody. And this is why Brandon and I are both uh, big fans of the Phyrexian Metamorph. It's such a good card. You can... Oh, it, my God. But anything that searches for stuff like that is going to be able to get your Metamorph. Oh, oh, baby. Uh, he's got balanced to fairies with instant sorcery. Yeah. He can take those two. <laughs> and he's already got force negation in hand. No, he had force negation got cast. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, that's an interesting... Uh... So. I think you take... You take a land. <laughs> um... Yeah, you, you kind of want the force of will. You, but. Yeah, you take the force of will. No, he's like, I'm going for it. Fuck y'all. What do you mean? He's going. Ba- he, bounces a sorcery. Yeah, but Teferi's protection's an instant. Oh. He's got the wipe your wipe your board. Right, 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 right. And uh, yeah, that well, you know, usually that tracks. And then I don't, I don't know if you take the Skyclave because I don't know if he has enough low end creatures that you care about. What's the other card there? Uh, it's the the season vet dungeoneer. Like Skyclave can hit Keen Duelist, Sedgemore Witch if you pay some. I guess it can hit artifacts too. So maybe you still maybe maybe it's right to take the Skyclave, but um, who knows? Yeah, we shall see. Man, this is, this attracts a card. Somebody should do something about that. That's Woo. funny. We're like, why is he taking that damage? <laughs> and that's why on commentary, you can only there's only so many things, even like yeah. you're drafted. Sometimes on commentary, you're like, oh, I'm gonna say smart things. I know this format. I've done so many of these, and you're like, nope, nope, nope. It's, I, there's just something about it being a top down thing yeah. that just wipes your brain. <laughs> yeah. You just you you can't quite think. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. We want a track set home. <laughs> the track set home. Turns out Frexy <laughs> Metamorph pretty good. Yeah, yeah. All right. Looks like he, he's an even Stevens player. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make the odds ever be ever in your favor. We're going to Sedge more Witch. It's pretty good. Sedge less. Now, what's funny here is, even if he combos and does the Chain of Smog, in, yep, he's got infinite dudes, Balance to Fairy's Protection don't give a shit next turn. Doesn't give a heckin' toot. So he's going to pitch his hand and make infinite 1-1s, one effectively, at this point. Um, now, of interest, the they, those infinite 1-1s one do have, when they die, you gain a life. So he's going to gain... That may be relevant. Uh, I mean... Balances. They, Balance. they still die. It doesn't exile them. Uh, uh, I mean. He's got to deck them. Well, I mean, okay. So this resolved though. Like Cody didn't. Yeah, okay. didn't he didn't take do... the force of will. Okay. He took the combo. All right. Have to exile. He's gonna have to deck him. You want to get the land out of the deck? <laughs> and he's so, getting ready to balance right. him. He's getting ready to balance him out too. So. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look here. Balance. He just so he just needs to get to this chronotog. But he's not in the manner. He, he could do chronotog. Yeah. If he did, 
he has the mana to do Chronotog and the other. If he has Chronotog. But if he goes for the balance, then he is... They sacrifice them, so he will still gain a million life because our Sedgemore Witch makes pests. And when they die, you gain a life. Okay. So, he's not a billion life yet, but he very likely will be soon. Yeah, thinking about this in retrospect, <laughs> I mean, it's just a force of will with, you go greedy, with the 7-7 seven, seven I mean, flying. You, you go greedy with the combo, but I mean, I, I don't know if I would have been able to do it, avoid it either, right? Okay. He's going to flip that. And this does what when flipped? Um, so basically, this is a pretty sweet little anthem that's flipped. Your tapped creatures, which actually doesn't play very well with attracts as a vigilance, but your creatures that, or maybe is it tapped creatures or creatures that attacked? Um, your any creature oh, that attacked this turn, you get a plus one, one, one count. count. Have you talked yeah. about the pest tokens yet? Yeah, we have. And the fact that if he would have taken Force of Will, this wouldn't have happened, but he took the balance combo. And what the pests do? Yeah. Game yeah. 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 Cody's but, just learning this now. Yeah, the fact that he took the balance combo yeah. off of it. I'll let you yeah. back. Oh, no, no, i got to put my windows up. You keep going. I mean, I still think you do it, because you're dead if you don't. You still have to do it. And it's your only, yeah. Because you can't do anything about a billion. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Here's my question. Mm -hmm. All right, you know, James has no cards in hand. Right. Whoop de doodles. Right. Whatever. Oh, he's got no legs. See, this, that was the question I was going to ask. Is like, all right, you have the ability to gain infinite life. Right. You have to pick a finite value. Right. He picked a billion. And, and then he corrected it to one point five yeah. billion. Okay. What number are you picking? I always just pick a billion. I thought I was surrounded by innovators. No, 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 and I'm a, not. <laughs> just I'm a not. bunch of basic bitches. Yeah, you know that. You know what? I would. I would probably uh, just pick a uh, four twenty sixty nine. Did we do uh, a uh, crypt roll here to lose <laughs> three? <laughs> yeah. Fucking stupid. <laughs> I mean, th so this is one of those things, like, do you actually keep life? Because, I mean... No. Yeah, you're, you're not going to... I don't care how big that attracts it gets from the counters off of the invasion of Gobbledygook. Uh, but Cody's getting a lot of life, too. Because his life, like... Oh, this hurts my soul. Beep. Oh, God. Dice just flying everywhere. So now the thing is, is J James has no removal. If he does keep Chronotog in and plays it, he can just win this at this yeah. point. Like James has, yeah. Well, no, he has. Well, he has enough creatures because he has uh, uh, Emrakul, Archon, Emrakul, and Archon. What is it? Archon, Archon of Cruelty, when it enters the battlefield or attacks target, opponent's oh, attack creature, okay. Planeswalker, discard a card, you yeah. know. Um, I'm going to go grab a natter day if you want to put one. Yes, please. Okay. All right. Oh, man. This is hilarious. Hey, everybody. I've missed you. How's everybody doing? I made it. I made an appearance. So... I'm going to look right here. It seems as though, uh, yeah, Cody's just really trying. To, this is gonna, this is gonna be a long game, I think. Cody, okay. Mike is five and one with the blue green time bolt. 
you did a very good job with that deck. All right, sir. Thank you for coming by and joining us. Absolutely. James has 20 cards in deck. Cody has 19. So, but only one of them has Chronotog. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I said if Cody kept a Chronotog in, Chronotog could be very relevant because James doesn't really have any removal. Nope. He's got arc. He's well. He's got two things that could be relevant to it in the long, long game. Mm -hmm. He's got Irmical. Yep. And he's got um, the Blight Steel. Well, not the Blight Steel, but he, that's a lot. I mean, but um, Archon of Cruelty to remove a Chronotog. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Like, like Cody's got enough stuff to handle any of those when they drop. Most likely, mm -hmm. though, that's the issue. So, I think. As long as Cody doesn't draw, 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 draw a lot of extra cards. Because Cody can also Ancestral targeting James. Yep. <laughs> I think Cody can take this on the deck. So and the issue, like, we, we asked about it. We are like, well, does, does Cody go greedy and take the combo? Or does he take the Force of Will for protection? Mm -hmm. And he took the combo. Yep. And, oh my. And here we are. Was that a hard cast of Traxa? No, that was a reanimated of Traxa. Okay. Which we did, thought where Cody was like, oh, it's like why we didn't why didn't, why didn't Cody bounce it with the um, Croc containment pr Crocus? But he wanted to frax and metamorph it first. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah, containment priest also is going to throw some shenanigans here because that's going to stop. Any quick casts? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're questioning if the pay for the sentinel off of the. Uh, right, it's a may though, off. so he can just choose not to draw yep. on the sentinel. Anything else interesting while you're out there? Uh, no, not really. It seemed like everybody's just kind of winding down. Yeah. The, Mike's uh, five and one. The, with the blue green time. All right. Yeah, Mike's just been quietly cranking out yeah. there. Like, yeah. He lost to Mason and. Yeah. Drinking beer and playing yeah. games. Like. No, he lost to the burn. He beat Mason. He lost to the burn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kyle was too fast. Yeah. And he said he felt. He, he just didn't. He said game three, he should have had it. He just didn't draw an island. If he had another island, he was fine. He fine. said. Yeah. Yeah. Because he had, he would have like hydro blasted, snapcaster hydro blast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Clear the board, stabilize, yeah. and then take over. Yep. <laughs> it's not like you're ever getting to a billion, but yeah, we're keep the yeah. game state. You know, like we're performative here. This is um, what people refer to as garbage time. Yeah, yeah. We like rolling for this. Yeah. It's asinine. We should just tell the to John Kempo. I want paper scissor for it. I mean, I, I, I think with the Ancestral, Cody's got, and if we even get towards the bottom, yeah, goes forever. Cody's got Time Twister. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying, like, yeah. don't take game right, right, actions, right. but, yeah. like, pumping up the team for right. an attack yeah. of, right against what, rolling for three damage right. against what, yeah, like no, that. It's all, it's all relevant. Yeah. If, like, maybe these creatures had Infect. Yeah. I mean, Cody's getting a lot of life off of the Unifier. That's the only one that you gotta, you know, kind of keep. Yep. Yeah, unless these have life link, which they don't, right? They don't. No. Just... Unifier does. Yeah. Yeah, Cody doesn't have a way to steal the Blight Steel, which would be. I don't see. Fantabulous. Any for him to take the Blight Steel out of the deck. They're not moving James' life at all, like, as expected. I just think he's rolling the die to roll the die. Yeah. <laughs> just trying to feel something. Unless Cody brought in the Fallen Shinobi with, with his one black source. Oh, yeah, I think yeah, the yeah. Fallen Shinobi was just, it's one of Cody's favorite cards, so I think okay. he picked the 46 just to be like, hey, I have a 46. Yep. That makes sense. Uh, I mean, he does have a black source. He technically could, but... Yeah. Did we... Did we try and flashback the Faithless City or something? I think maybe, but he didn't have a red source, so... Oh, well, he does, because yeah, the Opal's yeah. on. Yeah, the Opal's on, now. Oh, there's a point to the Drowneth Magistrate. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he's trying to do. He's going to do it, and yep. he's like, he can't, Drowneth. He's going to mill with a call. Yeah, that's what he's going to try to do. He's yeah. going to try to mill... He's going to put himself up with a call. Yeah. Like, he doesn't have a snap to get it back or anything, but... So you just gotta wait. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is well, it, not wait. Because... Unless he kept Chrono Talking, which is the yep. other, like... And even just, like, three or four turns of Chrono Talk is enough. You know, this... Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You just need a fog for a couple turns. Yeah. Yeah, just a couple turns of you take turns, you know. Yep, exactly. You draw unabated. You, yeah, you draw cards. Mm -hmm. 
You just can't. You can't minus the ferry. Right. None of the three that you have on board. You can't plus the five. There's the Rafine's Tower. <laughs> oh boy. Fomar Shinobi! Fomar Shinobi! Fomar Shinobi by steel! <laughs> if he wins with Falcon and Fomar Shinobi by steel, I will poop my pants. Where is the Tower of the Library until it turn? You may play those cards off by under mana cost. <laughs> oh my god. That's the performative attack every turn. Hi yeah. <laughs> Uh, put Lutri into his hand. Oh, oh okay. Lutri Ancestral. There it is. Six. <laughs> Taste it. Taste the rainbow. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh. Their, their life dies should just be used for library counters at this point and be ticking down. This is beautiful. Oh. We picked up library and graveyard? I don't know what's going on. Who has Twister? Uh, Cody does. Cody does. Oh, Emrakul. Yes, Emrakul is No, he did. That was what did it. He pitched Emrakul. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Plum, every time you say that, I'm going to taunt you forever. (laughs) Oh, no. Can he win now that there's a new one? we combine all of our judge levels together and we have a conversation about the four horsemen legacy deck we're we're gonna end up in the same situation but this is the the, the things are happening the game state is advanced the game state is advancing until he gets to eight cards in hand and has to discard so where is the emrakul hiding and now we have that conversation of tap, untap my basalt monolith to eventually. Uh, let me see. Did Cody have anything that he could have brought in? That well, obviously he could have brought in Fallen Shinobi that could deal with that. Um, yep. Uh, Cody has nothing else that can deal with. I discarded the Emrakul discard. Exile target permanent, fairy hero of Dominaria. Ultimate doesn't do anything. Nope. Um, that's an untap all your permanents, and you draw a card during your opponent's draw steps. He doesn't want that. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, so now if you know the Emrakul is in there, and you ancestral your opponent, every card they draw is closer to Emrakul. You have to hope it's in the bottom three cards. Or the bottom six, I guess. You can ancestral the bottom six. Then they go to draw that last card. Yeah. And that's it. But this is what I mean. Now we're in that weird... All right. All right. Uh, Uh, This is going to be like that Patrick Chaichman judge call about the Ajani thing. We're just going to talk about this for 45 minutes. Yeah. So where we are with this is... We are basically, we are technically advancing the game state because cards are being drawn, lands are being played, game action is being taken. Did he just send you in here to talk about this, or is he having No, a I said, can I talk to you? It was oh, fun. yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll be back. Yeah. yeah. So, game actions are being taken, you know, because spells are being played. Uh, we can enter combat, we can deal damage, we can move through the dungeon, etc. But James has an insurmountable amount of life for standardized combat. Cody has no alternative win condition in the combat step, meaning no no infect damage. And James has lurking in his deck, unabated, an Emrakul that, when discarded, will shuffle his graveyard back in. Okay. All right. Cody thinks he has an elf. Okay. Well, so Cody, th- Cody has been attacked by people out there being like, why don't you just concede? And he insists he has, he's like, I can win, I can win. So somehow he thinks that there's an out for him. I actually think one of the outs is the fact that James was not discarding cards, he was playing cards. So every card he plays is a card that isn't going into his graveyard to be shuffled back in, which means there is an opportunity for the library to be six or less cards containing Emrakul. Sure. So like, I, I guess, but, yeah, if he, James truly had six or fewer cards. He was at 19 last time we accounted them, though. Does Cody have an exile that we're missing? 
that not they'll do it in his hand. Um, the only out he has is if he could replay um, bounce. He can bounce the battle with his hand and replay um, invasion, hitting Emrakul in his hand. Okay, that makes sense. You need to catch Emrakul in the hand, mm-hmm. and you need to replay the invasion. Right. So, step one, is there a way to get invasion back to the hand? Uh, he has to try, yes. I think he thinks he can do it with Chronotog. Is there a Chronotog line here? Chronotog. Where he, he forces James to take infinite turns? Jason, James doesn't have removal. Um, if, if he takes infinite turns and just keeps discarding Emrakul, then right. nothing happens. Then A player is forced to take a different action. Uh, the exact rule in that would be the active player has to take a different action. Uh, but but he, both players are active. I think that would call. To, I think that would cause a draw. Draw. Right. So okay, if if Cody can get a Chronotrog, Chronotrog loop, he wouldn't be active player because he would keep doing Chronotrog on James's turn. Because mm. he's going to activate on James's turn. But but then James can't. The only different action that James could take would be discarding a different card, and now you're asking as a judge James to lose the game, which is is a, is a thing that can happen. Okay, like that that's a valid thing that can happen, because um, that's how four, four, four horsemen loses, or not four horsemen. That's how other versions of that type of thing can right. can lose. Okay, that's what we were taught. That is explicitly the parallel we're drawing here. Totally, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about this. Let's see. To fairy hero of Dominaria alt doesn't matter. Does this ultimate matter? No, it doesn't. It draws more cards. Yep. And have we checked the sideboard yet? Um, what's the wording on Teferi Time Rubber? Nothing yeah. useful. It just bounces. Oh, no, can he bounce the battle pose? Yeah. Target yes. artifact creature or enchantment. No, it's not a battle. Enchantment's not a battle. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was an enchantment. Well, it's an enchantment now. It's flipped. Yeah, it's flipped. So you can okay. return to yeah. enchantment. Yeah. So he can bounce. Okay, so that I think that's the line he's going for then. I'm going to pull Cody aside and just ask him what What's his plan is. What do you think? And yeah. if, if that's the line that we can like, go on. Okay, I'm going to I'll do it. You got it? Yeah. As, you know, the... The head judge of the event. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I guess we'll let the floor judge handle this one, yeah. and I'll be there for backup. Okay. Yeah. This is, a, this is a fun situation. It this really is. untimed rounds. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, because then it's just back and forth five, right? Yeah. Oh, that'd be really funny if you just disappear under Chrono Talk. It's, if you return one and you just like chronotog yourself and I think you're like whoop well you can only do one per turn right so it's, that's the beauty of chronotog is you guys, it has to do Teferi's protection and then always use it on opponent's turns yeah. and it's unprotected yeah he doesn't see that line he doesn't know what line he's going for he, but I don't think he's going to go much longer he says he thinks he loses no matter what so I think he's just going to give a few more cycles and then yeah alright we'll, we'll give him three more turns yeah uh, so, here's my thinking. If if Chronotog guy just f's just just leaves the universe, James still can't lose because he can just discard Emrakul the hand size. We, yeah, we're discussing it right now. That's yeah, what we're right in there. Okay. Uh, yeah. We've brought all our judge levels together to have this conversation. Yay. Yeah, I don't think Cody's gonna give that many more turns, so. There was one out I saw, but it's a very obtuse out, and it would take uh, several tries to make it. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just not pure luck, but you're also drawing yourself down too. Remember right. that as you take that line. It's so it is a bit dangerous. So it could just be Cody is waiting for like. I don't think he saw the line. I don't think he knows the line because I asked him what line he was looking at. And he said he didn't know, but he did. He thinks he is, loses. So is there any line where Cody? There's a line. Yes, there's a line. What is it? <sighs> if he bounces the. Uh, invasion of Gobicon. Go, flipped Invasion to his hand and replays it while he has Emrakul in hand. He can ban the, uh, make, exile the Invasion from his hand. You may exile uh, a non-land card from it. Oh, because it actually exiles it. Yes. Yeah. And then so, it costs three more to cast and you have to cast it and then it can be dealt with. Oh my gosh. So there is line, but I don't think he sees a line. I think he's going to scoop piercing, so. Um, but, but they can, they can both agree to a draw. Right? They could, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they can. Uh, or that you can take the game and go to the next, you know, I mean, it's, good. it's game two, too, so. What a fun situation this is. We just end up in a weird Eldrazi hard lock. 
We are past the performative part of the game and officially into garbage time, though, which is fairly enjoyable. So we can just effectively play this game and fast forward. Yep, and we are... Cody is rapidly running out of library, so... If he was going to either a Chronotog, he would have to do it now. And if there's either one... Somewhere between like one and three cards left in his library, it looks like. So, if you want to Jace, Battle, sorry, minus Teferi, recast the Battle, not see Emrakul. You could do that again on your next turn. But to what end? Because, oh, there he goes. Shuffle hands, graveyards, libraries, set aside Twister. Okay. What is James doing, though? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen mana. You could basically cast Crystal Brand, but I don't know what your plan would then be. If you put Emrakul on board. You don't lose necessarily, but now Cody is reset. And now we're basically playing the game again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we can. We're getting to the part where we could hard cast Emrakul. Can't be countered. Take the next turn. Swing in, Annihilator 6. But there's a Crocus on board, which basically makes you juggle your Emrakul. So you're the one taking infinite turns? No, you get to ferry it. You get to ferry the Emrakul back to hand. But it still can't be countered. So what do we have from a removal standpoint? Uh, the twister. I saw. Yeah. I'm I'm talking through what's going on now. We've effectively re reset the game at a point where James can hard cast Emrakul, and I still don't understand how Cody can win this game because if this was a time format, here's the thing: if this was a time format, Cody is actually in a legitimate spot because he is advancing the game state. It's not. It, it, oh no, we we are in a spot where this game now like. After the Emrakul shuffle, right. we were at a point now where James is able to rebuild back right. and play this game. So if you set aside the fact that James has other creatures in this deck, right. eventually James is going to draw Emrakul. Emrakul can't be countered. Right. So you take another turn. And then what is Cody going to do? Juggle Emrakul with Teferi or Caracas. James is going to just take infinite turns on you. Right. And going to eventually annihilate your board away over time as you whittle away your Teferi into, or your Caracas. Or st and event like... Now there's a Cabal right. Coffers, right? We're going to, with an Urban right, right. We're going to start playing out more than one threat in these right. time walk turns. I mean, Cody's guess he like, gained a ridiculous life, but, you know, they're, but, so we're in the uh, inverse thing, because Cody's got, every time he's attacking with the Grand Unifier, he's gained life, right? Yeah, seven each time. Yeah. Or more, because it keeps getting bigger. And they've even stopped, he's stopped keeping track of it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the thing, is there's going to, I, I, I'm looking at Cody's deck, and I don't actually see any way to deal with a result. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've tried to, yeah. So, it can't be countered, right? Right. So that's why I'm saying, like, set aside all the other odds and ends right. in in James's deck. And let's just look at Emrakul. Right. Because it can't be countered. Right. So that means it's going to land. Right. So how do we deal with the resolved Emrakul? I bounce it with Krakus once. Okay, well, Recast cool. It. Now your right. opponent's just stacking turns. Right. Because right. he's hard casting it. Right. Well, and it's only, you only get one. Because the crocs, you don't get to untap it. So you, Correct. Now you have to ferry. Right. Right. I'm like okay. And right. in but the thing is, in each one of those. But stacks, you're not gonna have another turn because the first turn you cast it, you're gonna take another turn. Mm -hmm. And then he bounces it before it attacks. Yep. And you play then, it, then you take another turn. Right. Yeah. And then you start annihilating. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, like you're you're not gonna get to ferry it. Right? Yeah. Like you're you're gonna get one bounce. Yeah. So taking a look at at Cody's list, is there any way else to beat a resolved Emrakul? Like a hard cast resolved Emrakul. No. I don't say. I mean, there's path balance. No, sorry, you can't target it with path. Balance so doesn't do it because he had to sacrifice creature. Another Teferi's protection balance. 
Yeah, Teferi. Okay, so you have Teferi's protection to live through the time walk turn. Right. But the Annihilator still ha- uh You can still be attacked. Right. So the Annihilator trigger still happens. Your stuff's phased, phased out. out. Yep, so you can't... You won't sack anything. Okay. So Test. that's the first threat. Right. Test the spirit on the... Mm-hmm. The Blight Seal. Yeah. I think Cody's just... There it is. I think Cody's just kicking himself in the ass here. And um, he's just... Being what we, yeah, whatever. Uh, this is the keen duelist they're revealing off of. Okay. So it doesn't matter. Cody yeah. was gaining so much life that just doming for 15 is kind of right. whatever, right? Yeah, we discussed that. To. Where's the coffer tunnel? It's, it's out there. It's yeah, there. yeah, but it's it's tapped, I think. Yeah, it's tapped right now. Okay. So three, four, five mana? Okay, and the, the leftover if I remember. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. Can't be countered. Whew, yeah, this is a uh, event, and this is all from a play mistake, folks. So if you oh, yeah, if you're just coming in, so this what happened here was Cody Grand Unifiers mm-hmm. uh, are uh, Phyrexian Metamorphs the Grand Unifier and gets cards, and he picked the balance to fairy combo or the balance to fairy protection combo yep. over the Force of Will, which I probably would have done myself. It would have been tempting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but. He before he did it, he had um, oh that is a giant grand unifier though. So he can kill the Emrakul, but mm-hmm. then it just reshuffles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so he picked that. The force of will would allow him to counter the chain of smog. Chain of smog with Sedge Mortal Witch played both next turn uh, makes infinite one one pest indestructible. Uh, is it or is it not? No, it's not. Uh, take an extra turn, flying, pro colors. Oh, pro colors spells, no, never mind. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Graveyard shuffle. Yep, yeah, right. okay. Uh, so and that did. makes a billion and a half 1 1 pests. When the balance to fairy protection combo goes off, those pests get sacked, and he now has a billion and yeah. a half life. Uh, so Cody's playing this half to deck him, but he's got an emerald, So In the main. Mm. Yep, so then we're just going to go around. We're going to go around the horn again. Right. And we're going to. I'm not sure why it didn't die. Maybe they were assuming it wasn't big enough. I don't. I don't know what's going on at this point. Uh, we've annihilated. We've declared blockers. We are doing something with through the breach, but I don't know. I what. think he just discarded through the breach. Size. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that. I don't think there's anything giving that Emrakul indestructible. Despite. Is the Grand Unifier block the Emrakul? You want to come in here and hang out and watch this hot Emrakul action? Oh, yeah. It's not quite 13 squirrels versus an Emrakul or however right. many, but it's close. Okay, so because of the time twister and because of a lot of other things, have you gone over all of the different iterations, I'm assuming, at this point? So the only iteration that matters is I cast Emrakul, bounce it with Caracas. Okay, my time walk turn. I cast Emrakul again. Okay, I can't do anything. Okay, I take my next turn. I annihilate you. Okay, I untap. I bounce an Emrakul. And you just r- no, run through that. No, no, so... Or with, you mean with no, the Grand Unifier? No, Cody can just bounce his own Metamorph and copy Blightsteel Colossus and come with Infect. There's that option. <laughs> what is it? Is it exiled with uh, under that thing? Well, this is this is part of why I thought that was a stupid play. But... Touch of the spirit realm, and it's exile. Yeah, so it's straight exiled. Yeah, it could have Caracas it or to ferried it back to his hand, copied it, then exiled. Uh, it's not legendary. No, the Atraxa. Oh, so Caracas back the Metamorph because it's Atraxa, which is legendary. Yes. Then to ferry back. Wait, this is, put it put this back into play. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, that was the biggest whiff. Like this could be over right now. Yeah. Okay. So what you're saying, yeah, there was an option for that. Wait, hold on. No, that can't happen. Why? Um, where is it? If a non-token creature went into the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile instead. So when Blight Seal comes back, the containment priest that's right there. Would exile it. I mean, but he can use Teferi to bounce his own containment priest. Yeah, now you're doing like. No, I mean he. It's, I, it's this like, is all stuff lot, on the board. I know, I know. It's like it's like thing after thing after thing, and like, what are you doing with the Teferi otherwise? 
But yeah, so if, if that hadn't been done, yeah, you Karak back that, the yes, attraction. Yeah. yeah, at that juncture. The good news is Cody doesn't go to ride home. Nice I try. Oh. So I'm, I'm leaving him here. <laughs> okay. He's moving in with you. <laughs> uh, what? I'm leaving. Uh, so the thing that we just discussed is how when he uh, exiled the Blight Steel, Cody could have won. Because That's he, no, 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 he, no, no. He, 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 he Caracas's his metamorph because it's a legendary. Right. Then he uses Teferi to bounce his own containment priest. He has metamorph come down as a copy of Blight Seal and of Infect. Well, you gotta then bounce this back. So if if he didn't cast this, this the enchantment, you just Caracas back the metamorph, cast the metamorph, copy of Blight Seal, then exile it, call it a day, right? So that ha- that was like three turns ago, right? And then now you have blight. Then you have blight steel. I can't remember if Emrakul's cast after or whatever. Nope. But now you have an actual creature that can end the game in a realistic fashion, waiting, right there for you. Um, now the line is bounce the bounce the containment priest, bounce the enchantment, bounce the metamorph, <laughs> replay the metamorph on Colossus, and then r- remove the Colossus. But here we are with Emrakul again. Bloop. And Krakus is tapped. I think... Th- I've been in this situation many times before, and it's just dead brain, like... The, the overall larger picture of how right. to win this game goes out the window, yep. and yep. instead, you are just, like, trying to take it turn by turn and adapt to how the board is changing. And it's yeah. just... And it is unfortunate because, the yeah, the win was on the board. There was probably... And I, like... I forgot about this because nothing is turning. Like, creatures aren't activating right. for combat, etc. I forgot that the Metamorph, which is also in a very large die, was an Atraxa and Legendary. I just, for whatever reason, my brain just, like, glosses over what it's supposed to be. Yeah. And then... this, this is this is what the players are experiencing. Yep. It's what yeah. we in the booth are experiencing. Oh, we've lost all our viewers. We have not at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you blame them? No. <laughs> oh, we have a viewer look. Oh, it's Mark. <laughs> no, that's not really the bottom one. Uh, well, then it might be me because I left my Xbox on at home. Sack containment priest realm for annihilator, then a fem rate more for blight steel and bounce. Yeah, that's another way. That's another way to do it. The only problem is you have to. So we mentioned the containment priest for top. Yeah, yeah. Sack. No matter what, you have to start with removing the containment priest because the blight steel colossus will not come back once you remove the enchantment. Mm-hmm. Then there are any a num- any number of ways to do this, but sacking containment priest to Emrakul speeds it up by a turn because you don't have to bounce it with <laughs> you need Teferi. To, you need to dress down. Yeah. Oh my god. I need a bear beauty one? Uh, I'll take a natty. Natty? Okay. Yeah. As much as I do like Budweiser. <laughs> so there's gonna come a point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Cody has 10 permanents left. So we are rapidly approaching a point where Emrakul. He might actually see this line now that the board has cleared up a little bit and his vision is of what's going on is probably less foggy in like the next annihilator attack or so like oh if i sack the containment priest and the magistrate and my non caracas lands that i might have been able to take that line and attack with the white steel colossus however long ago if i wasn't drinking before this game <laughs> see this gray hair i didn't have this gray yeah right hair. <laughs> What's the, uh, the the Jumanji meme? Yeah. What year is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so what I was just saying uh, as you were coming in is now... See, and that's why... Okay, Burke, I agree. Like Cody should uh, scoop this because he's just frying his fucking brain. Yep. But uh, the other things I was saying is like, now there's going to come a point, I believe, because this, this is where I would be in this match and I know it. This next an Emrakul trigger mm-hmm. where I have to make decisions about what to sacrifice because the Blight Seal might come back is going to make me feel like an idiot that I could have done all of this like eight turns before. Yeah, but you would to do it. You would have had to do it before the emerald because you would have had to like because he could just leave back a blocker. For well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like we had lines in front of us. Right, right. Now, this game might take us all the way to St. Lotus 13. Yeah. Yep. Some say they're still playing to this day. Yeah. <laughs> but what like so I, I would. I, I, Jason, I, if you're out there, uh, Mountain Goats are writing a song about this. <laughs> <laughs> the war of twenty. The war of 2023. Yep. 
All right, so this is it. This is when I, as as Cody, would probably realize that for turns, yeah. I have been able to make this Blight Steel Colossus happen right. on my own. Right. So because the board is a little bit clearer, I have a better idea of what's going on. Right. And now I would recognize the mistakes that that I've made in my life that have led oh, me here. Record man. scratch. Yeah. How did I get here? Yeah, yeah. Emrakul fucking main. <laughs> oh, what do we got? We got Teferi's Protection. Actually, Teferi's Protection was cast earlier and it exiles itself. It actually exiles itself? Yeah, it exiles itself. He can't recast it. Okay. Is that the last line on the card? Is that like yeah. activate only a sorcery speed on Whip of Erebus? Uh, Teferi's Protection can be exiled. Womp, womp. All right, sacrifice six. Yeah, it, it, it would be the, one of the most visible cards in the game yeah, if it did exile it did. itself. Twister just sets itself aside, or it it becomes its own right. graveyard, right? Uh, update, we've now decided that instead of having the rest of the tournament, we're just going to say that Steven's the winner and move on from this. Sweet, I win. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Alright, Mark's youngest daughter just hit puberty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she came. She learned to walk two days ago, and she hit puberty <laughs> after uh, this game. Yep. Oh, um God. My daughter's already decided she hates me and then came back and decided <laughs> that uh, that was her mom's fault all along. <laughs> we're counting libraries? Why? Oh, are we going to do the Ancestral, Lutri Ancestral? I mean, it how depends on what he's got left. He's got the thing in play. We got a... Can... One, two, three, four, five... Oh, oh, okay. So we have six mana available to us because there's an Urborg. Our Flood Strand taps for a black. Do we have enough blue... Blue tree costs two blue, right? Yeah. Colorless blue, blue. So we would need four blue? One, two. You need four blue. Yeah. I don't, don't like... have enough blue right now. Nope. We're short. Unless he has a blue in hand and a blue in the deck. If I had to guess, he's counting islands now. Yeah. To see if. Oh my god. So for baseball fans out there, I was at uh, Game Six of the 2012 Cardinals win World Series, which went into like the 14th inning where they beat the Texas Rangers. It was the game. This is kind of what it feels like, yep. except for I enjoyed that. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can we for still ma- win? No. Exactly all of that. For Magic fans, this is kind of like when I was working the top eight of Star City Indy in the uh, Prime Speaker Bant Mirror Match that oh, went on yeah. for two hours. Okay, so this is an match. interesting question. Can we still win if we sacrifice Containment Priest and the Realm? What is this enchantment? Touch the Spirit. He didn't sacrifice Realm yet. No, no, no. I think he keeps forgetting his Realm exists. No, this is just one of those timing things. Okay. So they're going to be gone when Blightsteel comes back, so Containment Priest's effect on the game will not be be applied. But Containment Priest is gone now. Yep, but he didn't sacrifice. Right, right. It's a... like I said, that. Well, I'm just saying. I, I think this this kind of thing is like he has to get it and be able to. Oh, I guess if he got it that turn. He would be able to attack because it's on his turn. He would be able to attack with it. Yeah, it's yep. a complicated. But you still you would get through. Yeah, you only have the one little blocker. All right, so he's out of cards and deck. Correct. So, so the only thing left to do. Prismatic Vista goes to nothing. Well, you could. If Cody outsmarts us and wins this, I'm gonna fucking just blow him. <laughs> Trigger on the stack. All right. Yep. Yeah, this is this is the last opportunity to take action. Ancestral, you. Lutri just copies it. You don't it need it. Extra, a it's a straight copy. It does, you don't need the extra. So he's drawing three. The for the Lutri. ancestral. For the for the Lutri copy. Yeah. Lutri copy would be first. Yep. Do we have? Anything. I'm going to owe him a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! I've been trying to put that off for years. Here, right? <laughs> oh, that, that one's not safe for work. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, folks, if your kids are listening. But I just My mind's gone to crap. Oh. Is there any way we can sacrifice them or cool in response here? <laughs> oh, nope, that's it. All right. Cody? Holy Cody. crap. Oh, We managed to get there. I maintained that cast that playing out cards. 
Yep. Yep. The ancestral, the tree ancestral is the way to go. I maintained that James playing any kind, that playing any cards would lose him the match. I said that. I said the moment he started playing cards, he was going to lose. I want that. Oh. Cody's evidently had that in his hands for a long time. Yeah. He had to. He, he played okay, it? Okay, no, sorry. Uh, he remember he twisted, right? So he had to. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Since the twist. I mean. Yeah. But I, oh. I, I just said this on stream, and I want you to hear it again. I said the moment James started playing lands, he was going to lose the game because he was casting anything. Yeah. That was it. He didn't have to do anything. <laughs> Cody had to figure out how to win. Oh. Wow. And if he didn't present opportunity after opportunity by casting Blight Steel and letting Cody do VRD. Some, yeah, VRD, do some <laughs> dumb things. Oh, oh, now they're telling Cody all the lines he could have taken. <laughs> <laughs> he has through the door. <laughs> nice. Now they're like, you had all these. You, we, we feel bad and we want, and we're hoping we you feel We want you worse. to feel bad too. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Harold Christ on a stick. Yeah. Oh, man. That was... That was something, folks. Yeah. That man. was... Uh, what, a, what a way to go out, man. Uh, <laughs> well, it's funny because we there's been a couple of Discord matches lately where the ancestral versus or something like that something similar to ancestral either vindillion click or ancestral um or what one of those type of effects not yep. vindillion click have been so relevant against Th thoracle where yeah, they yeah, just they held drop, they, yeah. they just held the, the uh, held it against thoracle with counter spell backup so they just don't do much they hold yep. it and then they go thoracle buh, 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 and you go ancestral and they go counter spell and you're like force yep <laughs> and so like the ancestral lutri oh and it's funny because lutri make a lot of companions but when the ones you truly run as companions they often get forgotten mm -hmm. like lutri especially yeah right like it often gets just forgotten in your pile oh my god we're getting mason versus james now Okay, good. Cody's not allowed on camera anymore. <laughs> like she just sit Cody down, put him on a couch. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody oh, plays Jesus. Cody again. Cody's 4-1, and one. he ends at 4-1. Yeah, and right, one. that's it. That's it. Oh. oh man, that was, no, that, that was good. That was, was shenanigans. And uh, he and he took a lot of shit there. Like, people were obviously, like, he was obviously yeah. people were stressing him to just fucking scoop it. Scoop it, know? yeah, yeah. Because in that situation, it yeah. was untenable. But right. like I said, the moment, um, like, okay, Cody make makes his, his plays into the Sedgemore Witch, right? Right. So so James just walks away with a million with infinity life. It doesn't matter. We were talking about how much he was going, how right. many billion bucks he said. Yeah, we were talking about like right. choices for that. We yeah. were just bullshitting when I was out of the table, right? And now Cody has to find a way to win through that, and he doesn't have it in the deck natively. Right. And that's I think that's I don't. This feels almost just like a play mistake when you as James, you know you you have such a cushion, right? that the opportunity for Cody to win is so small that the best option is for him to if find you, an alt win But if you don't see that line there, like that attack, Cody's out of purpose. Well, no, so I'm saying like the moment you're balanced, your board right. is balanced away, right? And you, as James, you sit there and you say, I have a billion and a half life. Right. My opponent's creatures have two power. Right. Okay. How do I lose this game? Or even creeping up every attack. It doesn't matter how much. Yeah. You're not hitting a billion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How do I lose this game? My opponent's creatures Vince only have two power. Okay. Yeah. And, okay, so how does how does he win? He, he's going to deck me. He needs, I have yeah, an alt win con. Right. In poison or, uh, or or decking. And I have an Emrakul. Right. Okay, my opponent cannot remove Emrakul once it is in my graveyard. Right. Maybe you forget about the, the battle at that point. Right, right, right. right, right, right. Weird shenanigans. Yep. So... How and that's such an outlier because, like, you would have to do it several times. Like, basically try to do it every time to see if you could hit it. Yep, you know? that, and your fairy is eventually going to run out. Exactly. And that's yeah. what we were taught. That that was the conversation yeah. that we were having effectively as judge. Like, you have to let that wind down. Yeah. You, ha you can't just stop because he's right. making advances. The game state, you can't just uh, yeah. pitter-patter away with that. So, as James, you got to look at it and say, okay, how do I win my my opponent decks? Right. Which means he's not activating Teferi. So, if I don't give him anything to do, if I don't give him anything to target with Teferi, he's got to target his own stuff. Right. To, to to do anything with, so the moment I oh. start, I, the moment I make it harder, uh, for uh, no wrong gameplay, just a cut. Okay. The the moment I present anything on board to my opponent right. is the moment I start to lose this game. I think like James actually snatched right, defeat right, right, from the right. jaws of victory. He did. He did. All right, so Mason's up one zero yeah. here. Um, no, he's not because this game just started because uh, James was just playing Cody. Oh yeah, so we left the X up. That, that's just. X up, not a problem. Uh, X gonna give it to us. Uh, X gonna give it to us. 
Yeah, it's cool. Which, you know... No, uh, you leave that, so lock that. Yeah, lock that. Yeah, so we're on, go back to the gameplay. Okay. Gameplay. There you go. Okay, Bye. there we go. You need to stop unlocking them. Oh, okay. I thought you had to unlock no, them. No, no. You just eyeballs. Hit the eyeballs. Okay. okay. There, you there go. we go. Thank you. No. There we go. <laughs> Normally I have other people to do the tech. No, actually, not, this is important to me, Lord. I've not done the tech issue. I was going to ask if you if you have not taken that Judge Academy module. <laughs> no, I have not. I have <laughs> actually never done a Judge Academy module in my life. I only ran through it because I figured for a while when I was applying for events that I might have been getting bounces. People weren't looking through my Judge yeah. my JA stuff I've, as an L one. I just dropped some names when I went events of people. Like, See, I used to do that. Then all those judges stopped. Well, I still got Steven Swanger. So <laughs> yeah, I have like Rick Solomon doesn't judge yeah, anymore, but yeah. he goes out and knows them all still. He yeah. Presses the flesh when he needs to. Yeah, like I saw. So I just drop a couple names, yeah. and uh, you know, I'm still known to enough of the relevant people that. Mm-hmm. So I was going through. I did my JA modules again in case people were looking for that when they were. I showed at some point, and I, I noticed that I was like, "Oh, there's a digital assets one. Okay. Like, let me take this." And it basically is like, "Oh, so you're you're not only the judge, but you're also running the stream for the LGS." I, sh- like, I should do that one because yeah. I, I do want to learn this. Like. At, for stuff like this, uh-huh. it's really appreciable. Right. When you look at that module and you're a judge, you're like, why would I be judging an FNM and running this stream? That seems terrible. Yeah, I've done some weird stuff. Yeah. No. yeah. No, I've been in L2 since they 2012. They don't so. pay me enough for this shit. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in L2 since 2012, and yeah. I, I, I've minimally scraped by it. Anytime they have me do, re- like, oh, you don't know. Nope, that's fine. I'm nope. good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you write your yearly question for the judge exam to keep your level? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, going to make a food. Our general rule is food tokens are face down, Dr. Pee Pee Poopa Pants's, and uh, okay. elk tokens are face up. Okay. All right, <laughs> yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. That's the Oko rule. Yep. All right, so uh, Mason's got a pretty good hate against the reanimator strategy, right? Uh, I, it with Endurance main. Endurance main and Scoo's main. Yep. Yeah. And GSZ. And, and Death Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But bang, there's Death Right. I assume. Sorry, Death Right. GSE, I assume that's just going to get Scoos. He's pulling up Grist, but that can't—that doesn't go to hand. That just... All right, Leobold. All right, so he... Mason, whenever he becomes a target, or anything he controls becomes a target of a spell or an ability, he draws a card. And James can now only draw one card a turn, which is like... Mild. Pretty irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, uh, faithful Sweeting. Yeah, but Burning here's... Ooh, fish, burning, burning, okay. Maybe yeah, yeah, but here's the cool part about those cards. James just wants everything He wants to discard anyway, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not like um, whole breaching a brainstorm. Right, right. You know? Like, when you're... This is, uh, this is a, like, actually the cool and part. It, but he, he's... Like, yeah, evidently, yeah. It, <laughs> it don't matter. He Maybe he did need to draw those cards off that. <laughs> well, it's also hard, it, like, if you... Yeah, it, like, presenting one threat in the graveyard because right. an untapped... Uh, an unlocked Deathrite Shaman can, in response to your singular reanimation spell, right. eat your target. Um, so the DRS uh, was very, very, very good. And then, so... Not really have to bring in here. Um, there's the opportunity to bring in Pithing Needle for Gristlebrand. Yeah, that's sure. About it. Yeah, that's about it. Um, very light. And then... I think the show and tell is far more. Well, you're not bringing any of the blue. You don't have any blue. So your show and tell is out. You just kicked out of that. Oh, so. really? There's no. No, no blue. Okay. No blue. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, he just kicked out of the show and tell. Yep. Uh, so I was going to say the show and tell is better for you than it is for him. So. Uh, I'd be bringing in sneak attack that allows. And through the breach that. Because I go from hand to Command hand. seems really good. Yep. K command two damage, break an artifact. Yeah. Uh, what does Dead Gun do? One side is destroy a land? One side is just a, a, a peak two, and the other side the bounce. Red bounce. Okay. The, the rare red bounce. It happened two pl- color shifted cards. There was Sting Scourger Goblin. Yes. And this one. So. Okay. I used to run one of my first com- uh, decks back when I got back. So I've been playing since Revised, but I really I got back in a little bit at Mirrodin and then it didn't do much. It was just casual. And then I got back in and actually started playing tournaments at Lorwyn slash 10th edition. Okay. Um, and one of my first decks was a Goblin deck with, with Warp, Annie, the, Bogart the and, first yeah. one, red black one. Two red black yeah. for a 3 3. And three, then play a Goblin from your. Graveyard. graveyard or, or return a goblin from your hand, graveyard to your hand yeah. but I did not realize and, and, my, and people let me do it because they didn't realize it either because I was doing a combo where I would sting scourge or not pay the echo let it go to the graveyard and then just return it to my hand Ooh, and then yeah. there someone was pointed out I was like hey you can't do that I was like oh okay I've been cheating for like three tournaments yeah, right. 
Because I was just like, I'm not going to play the echo. I returned Screen Scourger to my hand. I play the Screen Scourger. I vouch for me. <laughs> What's right. underneath Dead Gun? What's that black card? Uh, divest to uh, discard, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Creature artifact. Oh, there's Breach the Multiverse. Okay, yeah. There's Nick the is the one with it. Nick could actually bring in Breach the Multiverse because that allows him to place his threats off the top. Yeah, yeah. That's really great. I mean, you got to hit seven mana. Which... He has all the artifact mana, though. And, this, and, and he's playing it. And Mason's not super fast. Nope. Like, he's not. Like, if unless you get one of just... Mason's Planeswalkers, that'll be good, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think it's good. I think that's... Anything that allows you to play from hand, right. I think, is where I would want to be as James. So right. I'm going to bring in the Sneak, I'm going to bring in the Through the Breach, and I'm going to bring in the um, Breach the Multiverse. Right. Um, over what? Probably the Chain of Smog combo. I don't, like, it was cute to yeah. get it to go off against Cody, but I think I would like oh. to reclaim those two slots. Yeah, yeah. I like the Chain of Smog combo with Green Black better, because it's yeah. just much easier with Wither Bloom. Though I do think... A lot of people that have drafted in the green black, they don't take Sedgemore. Yeah. And I think you should take the Sedgemore as a backup. Because yeah. in the green black, you're already running a lot of discard and things that are just going to trigger Sedgemore anyway. Yeah, so why not? And she just walls some stuff for a while. Yeah, yeah. Know? But uh, you're also looking to go more from hand and chain of smog targeting yourself for the value of discard. Your, a bunch of creatures is not really going to work out against the deck. Shims, man! Endurance. Long time no see, brother. Come back, do a discord. We miss you. All right, so we got Mason going to six right now. I think I don't know if he's debating the keep or debating what to put back. Yeah, th these are not updated ra uh, rankings right, here. Uh, let's see, gameplay left winner. Okay, good. good. All right, Mark, you want to update their records or Mason's in particular? It's Schnaggy. Oh, man, my head still hurts from that last matchup. Like, I have a freaking headache. <laughs> there was a lot going on. There were so many rules conversations. Like, and anytime you're invoking, like, four horsemen endless loops, my brain shuts off. I'm like, is this a four horsemen endless loop? Because it's just this weird carve out in the rules. It's yeah. It's like now you have to understand what it means to actually meaningfully progress the game state, which right. also seems subjective. Just like, what is slow? Play? Well, but we were, as Mason pointed out in one of the discussions in there, like once he took the damage from Miracle and sacked six stuff, yep. now we're meaningfully progressing the game. Yes. So 100%. we're like, we're no longer in the loop. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. You know, that's a big mean, that's a big gameplay progression. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So he took the Sitch more with the. Uh, I okay. I okay. All right. And here's the. Uh, Keen the Duelist. Bob, right? That's yeah. the cool Bob? Yeah. So, so Keen, if you don't know, folks, is a from uh, Strixhaven uh, Commander products. Yep. Um, at the beginning of keep it Bob's, but you, uh, you each take damage equal to the uh, whatever you... They take damage equal to what you reveal, so... You each lose life equal to the man value of the card revealed by the other player. Yep, which is nice. I, I um, and it's a two-two for two. I mean, that's, that's you know, it's a bear. What's the one from um, Rick Salon? Rivals. Oh, there was a couple bad ones around. The the vampire one that costs four. I actually don't mind that Twilight Prophet. Yeah, the the, the tr what's the trigger on that one? If you have, you just draw the card. But I think if you have the city's, uh, blessing. city's blessing, then they lose life equal to the yep. CMC. So it is, it is, it does, t it hits them. Yeah, right. But only if you have blessing. Yep. Yeah, Mark. So what I like once Emrakul got cast the loop ended, and I was saying like, uh, and I maintain that's when like the moment James, not James. Uh, yeah, yeah James. The, the, the moment James played his first land, he snatched the feet from the jaws of victory because if he just stays in discard mode. Cody's got to try and get the Emmer cool from hand. Right. And it puts him in a very weird bind. You're like, in a bind and yeah, you're we, way behind and you were looking to make a deal. Cody stepped up on the hickory stump yeah. and said, boy, let me tell you what. I was just thinking of the Futurama <laughs> meme where they meet the robot devil. And, I'll throw and, a devil and great. He's like, and then he challenges them to the, the fiddle contest. He's like, well, what if we don't win? And he's like, well, you could have a small, this slightly smaller fiddle made of silver. <laughs> and I guess I'll kill one of you. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't know it. But I'm a new yeah. player too. Yep. No, I agree. Like right. for, from Jane's perspective too. Like you want to get it done. Uh, there's an amount of like right. social pressure here. And at that here. point, like yeah, at that point you're trying to deck him as well, right? So yeah. I can just kill all your lands. Yeah. And yeah, like social pressure is going to get the best of you when it comes to this stuff, right? You know, somebody's got to want to give, and like for James to just stay there and say like, nope, I want to be the one to just literally discard cards every turn. It's difficult yeah. for everybody else in the room. You know, I get it. 
Like if the, it's a conversation about timed round versus untimed right. and untimed, like yeah, like that's probably the right move. Because un- untimed, moment. like that match becomes co- all of Cody's moves become very logical because he's advancing the board state. He's not stalling. Yeah, he's and, not slow playing. Yeah, and and an untimed round, thankfully, only one person gets sensei's dividing top yeah. two. But like, yeah, in in a timed round, James sh- could should have just been discarding a card every turn. Right. Oh no, I wouldn't do. I yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, not at all. Always the right call. Yeah, it made for a very interesting series of impactful plays. It made a lot of us talking shit on Cody, and he should have conceded, and then him proving us wrong. Yeah. It took a lot of interesting plays for that game to end the way it did. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Good, bad, or otherwise. Right. Yeah. Well, in in a line that you had called shot on, like, 20 minutes earlier. (laughs) Starts with the, yeah. Yeah. Starts with the awesome line uh, of, you know, copying the attracts uh, and then doesn't, you know, Kate goes for the greedy combo over the force of will back up. And, yeah, yeah. You know. we, we were having a conversation at the table about attracts over his crystal brand <laughs> right. and, and, like, which one is better in different situations, etc. And, like, all that, all that stuff. Yeah, but I feel like somebody else who wasn't even at the table one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Saga goes to two now. Yeah. So now... We got a food. So- Man, Saga Oko is pretty good. It is really good. <laughs> With a two pass. Yeah, I've not had the blessing of drafting Saga yet. It always gets... It's one of those cards I never quite remember right at the right point, and then it gets snapped. I'm like, oh, I should have oh, had, had that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're, like, you're focused on your package or whatever. Right. Meanwhile, the person's just like, I know what I'm going to do yeah. mid range. It's like Besage You. I finally got a Besage You the other day. It's like Besage You is always a card that like, I yeah, always yeah. forget. And I'm like, oh, my God, I wanted that. <laughs> <laughs> we as the viewers lost. Yeah, you're not wrong. But then in the end, we kind of won. It was the friends we made along the way. Exactly. <laughs> and the friends I lost. Because yeah. Cody lives here now, Mark. He's not <laughs> I'm not taking them home. All right. So there was a thought seize, and James discarded Goro's Vengeance. Was that because he's now Hellbent, or because that was the best card? I don't know. I've got no idea what's going on. A table spotter. (laughs) Yeah. Oh. Oh. We're not there yet. One, two, three, four, five. No, that. uh, Emerald's 15. Oh, that that just killed Mason out of the game. That just killed Mason out of the game. That's, That's. I was I was looking to cast that. Okay. Yeah. No, no, that's just your mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Dreadhorde Arcanist should be drafted more. Absolutely. Oh, that's a part that is a very good card. Oh, I unclicked that. There, there we go. go. Okay. We I was having a, a very good conversation about Dreadhorde Arcanist with some people last week. Like it's been a legacy, which is like one bummer. But like in modern, it could definitely see a lot more play, especially with like glam during. I think the it's, it's underperformed in VRD. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, because the cantrips are so spread out in constructed formats, yeah. it makes yeah, yeah sure formats is ridiculous. Yeah, but it's been amazing when it's been amazing. Can you bring but... up glam during? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a card that is just um, a strictly better version of another card. Yep, there it is. Glam. Right. The Crypt Creature has first strike and gets plus one, plus zero for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. Yeah. That reads like Rune Cantor's Pike. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Now read the rest of it. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> when you attach that to a Dreadhorde, Dreadhorde Arcanist, yeah, you, you get to of, double up. You get a lot of spells. Yes. Yes, you do. You get a lot. I think Glam Dring is really good, and just right now, I, I don't think it, it's playable in modern because right. of the way the format is, but I think it's just an overlooked card. Like, obviously, if you're going to play Rune Cantor Spike in Commander, right. run this. But if you wanted to play Dreadhorde Arcanist in a format like VRD to help it perform better when all those one mono cantrips are spread out, and you've got to go to like the two mono ones, right. like, you can give it a little. Especially if you're that. in like a red white with like, you know, doing. Probably you probably want to be in red white blue because you want the good cantrips you want in the blue. Exactly. Right? And that's yep. the. Uh, oh, man. So. So if you didn't catch that last one, folks, that was Keen Duelist again, uh, which we talked about earlier. Uh, Mason was at 14 or 12 or something like that. Or was it 12? Less than 15. Yeah, less than 15. And Keen Duelist flipped Aramogol, which... Uh, Mason did have, did not have the requisite number of squirrels to deal yeah. with Emrakul. No. So yeah. we are out of here. All right, yeah, you're, you're not wrong, Caterberg. Glamdring does cost one more to equip. 
But for that one more colorless mana, you get a lot. Yeah. And I think that, that helps Dreadhorde. A keen dealer's win is a sight to behold, though. That's a... Uh... Yeah, that... That's at least oh. the, I think it's the first time I've seen it today. That is That's a party. Yeah, it That's is a strip mine. It's not a party without a party. In this case, strip mine. Um, no, he's, he's like, no, he's got enough man. I'm gonna just pulse that. Yep. <laughs> We're gonna do a, one thing at a time here. Yeah, you could have taken him off the colored mana, but it's so early in the game. This is kinda like the days question. It's like, do you want days in game two against a deck that can make infinite mana? Like, maybe not. <laughs> All right. <laughs> One good turn deserves another. Yeah, There's seven yeah, mana again, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going to show this message here that's oh. going to eventually. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. You're going to main phase the message Like a chump? What? What? No, you're going to Wither Bloom Command. Yep. Kill Bang. that. Bang. Return. You got strip no three. Mine. Return the strip mine. And again, that's why I said yep. I love Wither Bloom. And, uh. Uh. Caterberg. Draft Draco. Boom. Put Draco on the top of your deck, flip it to Keen Duelist, kablam! 16 damage. Yep. <laughs> You're never going to cast... Oh, you can put it under Illusionary Mask, but yeah. then you have a lot... You have a big upkeep on that but on, on that dragon. You can just run, uh, like, Prismatic Omen or whatever. You get all, all in. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dryad. Yeah. Dryad, Illusion, and Grove. Yep. Because yep. it puts all the types on all your yep. on one land. Yep. So it's right there, yeah. You run Dryad. There you go, Caterberg. I saw it for you. Draco, boom. You don't even need Vamp for that. You Thought got worldly sees, tutor. These takes. So Ermacle hits the yard, right? Yeah, it would hit the yard and then shuffle right. in. Well, he has D he, so he has DRS. So like, yeah. yeah. Well, some of them hit, some of them don't. So I always get you have to double check which one. Oh yeah, that's a that's a trigger when it yeah. enters the graveyard. So he's like, I'm just gonna take the persist, and then I'm gonna strip mine that land. Yep. This is one of those questions where this hand is so redundant. You got to really figure out which side you want to right. deal with. So you could you could play this cat and mouse game because all of those spells operated at sorcery speed. Right. That you take the Emer you, you take the Atraxa. Right. Let him try and reanimate it, or just eat it at the end of turn if he doesn't do anything with it, and then start the squeeze there. Um, you're you're not in danger of him reanimating or animating dead your stuff. You know that's not that's not gonna happen. Ugh. Oh God. This is just... Oh, and he put it in the graveyard. <laughs> oh, that's rude. That was that was uncalled for. <laughs> Can we give him a USC minor? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm... <laughs> he changed his life, too. I think James just quit life. Yeah, yeah. Point. He's just like... Is James in his chair? Is he... <laughs> Tommy, that's an attack. No, no. What are we exiling? One of the lands out of his yard. There are many euros for y'all. Oh, oh, dang. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, awesome. Hey, uh, Mark, I'd like to give um, Mason an unsportsmanlike Do a minor, um, for uh, picking, grudging the basalt monolith and then picking up the monolith and putting it in the yard for him. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, God. Oh, and that is it. I like how James... Oh, James is one face up at the end there. Like, here you yeah. are. Ah, oh, there it is. You want to go from hand? It's, yeah. You got to... You, you know. It makes you more vulnerable because you got to keep everything in hand. Right. And that... So you're weak to thought seize and mean, all those things. Mason just has a deck of answers, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just, just answers. You got questions, I got answers. Yeah. Like, you know, that's, that's the way to do it. Oh, man. Do we have a, a match coming up after this? Yeah, it should be. I'm going to go figure out what it is. Take a leak. Right. Maybe still another mini euro. <laughs> uh, that's fair. That's fair. I don't, even, I don't know what this is, but it looks amazing. Oh, then we're delivering the USC minor now. I can hear it. Oh, there's Mason trying to explain it away. Are we getting Vince on camera again? All right. Yeah. 
What's going on, bud? Alright, I'm gonna join you. Alright, who we got coming up? Uh, Vince. Alright, Mason and Vince. Yes, Mason and Vince now. Alright, welcome to the hot seat. Thank you. No problem. Did you hear I solved your problem? Uh, how's that? Draco? Oh, Draco's pretty good. Yeah, Draco 16. Boom. Yeah, that's, what I, that's exactly what I said. Draco Boom. Yeah, but see, you still gotta do the four. And people aren't playing fetches in this format, so... That's true. But I mean... Okay. Uh, is it Call of the Conclave? Yes. That, the three on top? Yep. Bang, bang, bang. Good. There you go. Alright, so Mason is currently on a 5-0 hot streak after losing game one. Is there any way that we can see to make him lose? Can we can we team up to figure out what can his loss is? Can we seed the loss? Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, at five at five and one, he, there's only two people he hasn't played yet. Oh, there's one person he has not played yet. Oh, he's six and one now. He's five and one, so there's only oh, one yeah, match six. left for him. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because you, you can't. If Mason plays himself, <laughs> I think I did solve that problem too. Yeah, yeah, that that would work. That would, um, yeah, it'd be like before when I when. I'm let's jump over and split his commander deck. Check out his list though. So this is okay. Mason's list. Yep. It, it's, I mean, it's a grindy lands based list. He has answers to everything in the world. Yeah, I, we thought he would have been weak to Storm, but it was like it was it wasn't the Leovol thing that kind of, that got him there. It was the uh, losing the consultation again. Yes. Right. Um. Yeah, so. I don't know what uh, what options we have to really get down. You know. Yeah. So who, I don't actually know who's left on his list to play against. It's literally, this is the last match. It's him versus Vince. It's, oh, it is actually Vince. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, both. I'm both on the left and the right. Correct. Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, this is Mason over here. Yep. Uh, lots of grindiness. Thrag Tusk at the top end, but Leovold and, uh, like, scavenging news to lock things out. What is Vince on? Oh, this Vince, is the... Vince is on the mill deck. Yes, ish. yeah. The mill rogue deck. Yep. So... The problem is that there's not a lot of removal in Vince's deck, so... Exactly. Once Mason can get a foothold with anything, like that's it. The advantage just snowballs. Totally. Like there is the opportunity for Vince like, because it's just how Mill plays out in limited formats like this, where yeah. it just mills over the important pieces. But Mason is so redundant in his variety of threats that no matter which one he's left with, it's the opportunity to get there. Like Grist seems like the least powerful planeswalker of the bunch yep. on its own. Um, but it can make bugs to get there. Ren and Six is just like the the strip mine loop. And it makes it too hard for Mason to, or for uh, Vince to go under. Because I think Vince under a lot of these control matchups slides underneath there with small rogues, but Mason can block, yep. right? Like Mason has enough. Yeah, so much removal. Uh, a yes. lot of the rogues fly though. Not, I don't think. That's true. Yeah, there's not really. Mason's, uh, Mason pounds the ground. I don't know if there's a lot going on in the sky. Fair point. Also, Leovold is... It, it's Leovold not, doesn't do a lot in this match. No. Well, a lot of the, with the, the mill targets, right? You've got crabs. Oh, sorry. Uh, Hedron crab targets, ruin crab doesn't, which means Leovold is going to trigger on the ruin crab target. That's right. Tasha's hideous laughter, right. target. Like No, target, Tasha's is not target. It's, it's not? all opponents. Oh, Tasha's doesn't, oh, okay. but the others do. Okay. It is all yeah. opponents, which is why it is dumb. Yeah, so like... Overall, it's going to be a net negative if Mason gets hit with these. Right. But it's not. It's, there's going to be a little bit of cushion if he lands the Leovold first. Yes. Uh, it looks like Vince got the first play, or maybe Ma no. I think Mason got first play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, water grave tap, so there's no crab. Right. Despite the rumors, Vince does not have crabs. <laughs> not this game at least. Game. Well, not this game. Yeah, could happen later. Honestly, Rune Crab is way better against Mason, given the uh, like Mason does have some graveyard recursion, right? Mm -hmm. Um, because he has he has Ren at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We bring back lands, right? So it's and not like, Witherbloom as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like he and um, Deep Root Wayfinder. So it's not like he's totally lost if his lands hit the graveyard. Okay. Um, the opportunity to bring it back after the, a land back after the surveil. So if he finds himself pressured based on land quantity because they're in the graveyard, there's opportunity for that. Totally. Um, and then. Yeah, I mean, it only gets worse after sideboard too. There's Veil of Summer coming yep. in. Yeah, mystical dispute as well. Yeah, and I don't think Hull Breacher really hits in this matchup. No, not that it's Pithy Needle. No, there's too many Planeswalkers to P really. Yeah, Pithy Needle shuts down one of the walkers, yep. but you have to kind of guess at random. Exactly. Um, you can also like with Hive. It's not. What are we hiving in, in the lands? It's the the monster manual. Nope. Invince's list. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Eye Tyrant. Yes. Yeah, like. 
It, it, it's a 3-3. Three, three. It's not Hall of the Storm Giants, which makes like a 7-7. Seven, seven, like, bang! Yeah. You know, but... Well, there's the Thought Seize. Mm. And it looks like three lands. Oh, no. Oh, there, okay. okay. There's the action. There's an R set. Yep. What's the far left one there? I do not... That's not Slither Wisp, so let's... It's one of the... It's, it's one of the Demir cards. Gold card, two words. Notion Thief? No, it could be no... Wait. No. That's... Soaring Thought Thief. Yep, that's it. Yeah. I mean, Mason's asking the same thing. What is Soaring Thought Thief? Yes. Uh, it mills two when it comes in. That's all I know. It doesn't do anything else. Um, it, it hits for damage. It's a rogue. Yeah. Whenever one or more rogues you control attack, each one... Oh! And now it doesn't matter because it's in the graveyard. Yep. But it's another Thieves Guild Apprentice, uh, Enforcer style card, which is just a rogue payoff. Right. And okay. a rogue that mills as you do things. Yep. Yep. There's the okay. scoos. Mm -hmm. well, okay. So next turn, it could be a 3-3. Three, three. Well, we'll probably be making a construct. I do like that Vince is playing heads up. That's very nice of him. Oh, it's incredibly useful. So does he have three lands in play? No, the island's from the uh, Okay, there the we Thoughtsies. go. We're doing uh, what's in hand over there? Deep Root Wayfinder. Yep. Then I lost it. Oko. Uh, Oko. God, yeah, Mason has this one locked. Mm. Mini Hero rejuvenated now. Yeah, right. I go all night long. <laughs> all yeah, right, what do we got going here? We have an Oko and a uh, uh, Scoos in play against nothing. Yeah. Ooh, a Slither Wisp. Uh, end of turn, Flash and Slither Wisp, mm. which should beat Oracle Oko down enough to. I don't know what. It doesn't fly. I think it's three. It's just a ground pounder. Yeah, but that's a it's food fine at this point. Yeah. Oh, that's a food. That's right, because it's face down. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I mean, it's not gonna get, you know kill Oko, but no, it's... no, no. no. Keep it in check. And he had to burn a dark ritual to make it happen. Yeah. But uh, Oko is a powerful card. I guess. A powerful magical card. Yeah, I'll burn a dark ritual to kill an Oko. It didn't kill an Oko. I know. But I mean, <laughs> There's the thought that it might. Right. Sure, yeah. yeah. I'll, bur like I'll burn a dark ritual to sniff an Oko and we'll, make it, make it think it's going to die. Like we'll, we'll all channel the belief yeah. that Oko will die. It's the thought that counts? Uh, it's the thought thief that counts? Yep. Is that a bitter blossom? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Reveal yes, it off for the Narset. Yes. Yeah. Isn't it Slither Wisp? Yeah. Yep. Lots of new cards this time. Yeah, I like this card. I think three might be a questionable mana cost for it. But I think it's close, so... Oh, it seems good to me. Yeah. I don't love it in this list. Right. I think this list is trying to do, diff trying to do two different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Oh, this is what we were talking about right there. It, it, the idea of, like, rogues and flash yeah. can come together, and fey is a good place to kind of, like, tie it. Sure, yeah. Because a lot some of the fey are rogues, but it just doesn't seem like... The, it. There's a critical mass you need, and it doesn't feel like we quite got there, especially when you see, like, the Ruin Crabs are kind of, like... Yeah. That leads into the Rogue plan, but they're not rogues. And then, and then there's all these other uh, fairy in the sideboard that don't really do anything. Plus, the, the biggest problem I have with this is there's a lot of the left side of the Narset Time Twister combo, and not there's none on the right side. There's, yep, like, yeah. one Windfall. Yep. And I feel like that was kind of a, like... He, he drafted half the cards for that part of the deck and just missed them. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, man. So we are not at a point now. Like if, if we you... had held the Dark Ritual, there's the opportunity that we could literally untap Dark Rit, play a land, be Painter's Grindstone. Uh, yeah, that would have worked. Yeah. yeah, if we had the Dark Rit. I mean, you also need to have those exact two cards, but yes. Yeah, we have a drawn cards. I, I just look at this as like, what if no well, Masters was pick number two from Vince? Yeah, and that feels right to me. Yeah, he was on the wheel. Cool. Completely fine. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder if Notion Thief, uh, Thief of Sanity, uh, Narset, like if you sub out uh, Narset, I think it might be fine. But if you sub out uh, Notion Thief and Opposition Agent for yeah. sure, and just like throw in two other random cards, I think this deck gets far better. Okay, so here's the problem: you can't throw in two random cards because both of those have the keyword flash. And that sure. plays in the Slither West. So that's what I mean. Like, you have Flash and you yeah. have Rogues, and there is overlap, and it is kind of Fey-ish, but there's just, like, 
not enough direction for one or the other. So you get into these positions where you're, you you are now pointing out all the little things. Sure. Why are there so many Fey in the sideboard if you want to play this Flash thing? This makes sense. Like, there are some re- like questionable Flash cards in the main yeah. that we're playing because they have the word, the keyword Flash. Yeah, I think this deck is built around Slither Wisp, and you don't have it every time, and even when you do it, sometimes it dies like this. Yeah, and like there, there's... We, we noted there's a Soaring uh, Thought Thief payoff for yep. Rogues with the Thieves Guild Enforcer as well, and so we're not leaning that heavily into that plan either, but you at least have two of the Rogue, like, Lords, quote-unquote, right. for that. Um, oh, we're halfway there. We are halfway there. Oh, uh, thank we- you. I, every time I set one up, somebody always knocks it down, and I'm so happy about this. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so grindstone costs three to activate, right? So next turn we could go grindstone correct. activate. Yeah. One one play three Land, activate. Grindstone. I, yeah, I was saying how grimy would it have been if you saved the dark grit for like this turn to go dark grit painter grindstone activate get you. That's nasty. Because wither wither bloom command is a sorcery. Yeah. But Terra Sunder is not. <coughs> so we have a question from chat about how Jake is doing. So let's jump over since we're at a quiet point in the match to check out standings. So, uh, you know, I'm about to head. But before I do, I just want to say... These are not the standings for this match, so let's jump back to the actual game and not look at those standings. I'll go find out. Jake, Jake is doing fine. Uh, I think Jake ended up either 3-4, th- I believe. I'll go find out. He's, he, it does not look like he's in contention for top four, but he might be very close. He's okay. either four through six, is my guess. Kind of middle of the pack. Okay. I know he's very frustrated with how his deck is performing, and I think that you nailed it when you said earlier on that Jake's deck really leaned low which meant that he got stuck underneath a lot of these mid-range decks and the white weenies weren't doing enough protecting of problems yep. uh, from the decks on this table yeah and it's not it's not that there was a problem with the draft we talked about this earlier there's uh, focus and discipline two four it two plus one yeah yeah the, like jake had a very focused build yeah and it, his, his deck would be very good against a lot of fields but this field just has too many creatures not enough storm cards and uh, his deck doesn't apply enough pressure to the mid-range decks. It's the classic, he's one click under the decks that are doing well here, yep. and the, being one click below the other decks is the worst possible spot to be. Yep. All right, Bitter Blossom hit the table. Yep. You, you're, you're heading out? Right at, yeah, I was going to head out. Up. I was just going to say, uh, I think that uh, today is uh, Viviano's time to shine. I hope you're right. Yeah, I've been saying for a couple times, like, Viviano's been like a constant 3-4, and four and like he's due for yeah. one. And... It's not... Well, I mean, not even that. He's been like a constant four and three. Yeah, he's four, a, he's four, a, three, right? Yeah, he's always got you know a winning record. But I just, uh, I mean, I think he, he's I, hands down one of the best limited players. Uh, I did not know that was yes, the thing he had to do. Like I would. when it comes to the actual games, Viviano uh, stays disciplined. Mm-hmm. He stays smart. He does not experience the same mental fatigue that mm-hmm. perhaps a Cody might be experiencing. After uh, that four hour thirty seven minute that, match, Cody did Cody did great. Cody's doing very well yeah. from what's happening I, to him. Yeah, abso- absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, right. uh, How's he going to do after I, that? As somebody who is a frequent sufferer of mental fatigue, I think that uh, you know you kind of in this instance, I'm going to give the nod. Both of these guys have improved tremendously. Uh, yeah. there, there we go. There's the abrupt decay on the painter's servant. Yep. Yep. I think we are in the point where we have a force field active right now, and that's not going to do very well. But With two life? Correct. Yep. All right, bro. All right. Uh, Ciao a tutti. Cheers. Arriba le bangelo. There's a vintage Discord with like four in it currently, I think. A vintage, a vintage Discord, Discord with, with four players? With four or five. Sounds like a vintage tournament. For, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. And there's a legacy with like five, four or five. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> so bit, we, we play Bitter Boss and there's a little bit of a back and forth and the game is just basically... So, I, I want to say snowballing away from Vince. Bitter but Blossom at two doesn't feel good. No, he wasn't able to get his feet under him. Does Bitter Blo- are Bitter, bitter bo- Blossom ha, fairies rogues? Or are they, they are. They are. Dang. See, that's what that's why I think the overlap is, and I just think it's a little like, I don't know. I, I get this feeling that there's like this weird popper undertone to what he's trying to do. It's just like, oh, fairies are great in poppers. Fairies are great in a lot like, of formats. So are the I think rogues, fairies by so. itself is actually an uh, un, under, un, unexplored archetype in well, you but keep, you need to go more in. On. You keep getting a good one here and there. Like you got Brazen Borrower, then you got Fairy Mastermind, and well, like. But I mean, I think fairies in the traditional sense of you want discard to go with it, and you want counter spells to go with it, right? Yeah. Where you're, Pat Burr Smoke, Pat Burr Smoke. Um, you're playing some tempo. You know, you got yeah. some secluded Glen. 
All right, That's so a I heard of for a while. let's see what we got going on here. Yeah, we were, we were talking about this before. Like, you could fight the discard with your own discard and grief, but good grief. I don't know if that's good. I don't think it's a good grief. Uh, whenever a creature entering the battlefield under an opponent's control causes a triggered ability of that creature to trigger... Okay. Jesus. That's wholly irrelevant for Mason Stack. I agree. Oh, well, that doesn't trigger... No, because Mints can do... It triggers it. on Thrag Tusk. Thrag Tusk, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, not a lot... Oh, I... Uh, nope, 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 that's not an ETB. The only reason I like that card is because it's a creature that has ward. I like it because it's a fish horror. That sounds like fun to me. You know what? Yeah. That is that is a good reason I like that card. My mom's yeah. a fish horror. <laughs> uh, Dressdown probably comes in because there are creatures in Mason's deck. We had it, I thought. Uh, not in game one. No, okay. That was the previous match. Why did uh, I thought he had something. Okay. Let's see. Air tie. I don't know. This, this card is, seems fine. There's a lot of main deck cards. Yeah. Here. Counter target spell activated ability. Like, this does so much against Mason's deck, especially against Planeswalkers. Yes. Like, that it is actually it pretty good. relevant. Finnage has five and Legacy has six. Come enjoy some rotisserie chat. Yeah, yep. we're definitely looking for more players all the time on the Roto Discord. Yeah. So, yeah. there's a million different types of formats you gotta play. Uh, come join in. Mm -hmm. This allows you to copy a spell activated ability or triggered ability. That means you can copy a creature. Yeah, but here's the thing. You've got to exploit against a deck that just wants to one-for-one one your creatures. Yeah. So what it, creature's going to be there? It doesn't copy. It counters. Counters. It. Oh, correct. Sorry. Yeah. It's yeah. actually not bad. I actually think... No. I told you, I commented this card. It's kind of like a Vincer, except for it's a 3-3 three, three flyer, and it also stifles. I, I actually like, kind of like this card. Overall, I think it's a very good card. In yeah. this matchup, where you're basically just no, playing against Jund forever, like, yeah. Jund guy out there is just yeah. trying to one-for-one one you, I don't think you're going to have a creature. No, no, yeah. You're not, you're okay, not. Spectral Adversary, I think, might be pretty good because it's yeah. going to save your stuff. Four mana to counter one of their spells, fine. Yeah. Spellstarter Sprite, Mason has a lot of very low-cost spells. Yes. Uh, I is, mean, it, is it good only with Bitter Blossom, though? Because, like, um, otherwise you can only counter at one cost. It all depends. You don't have that many. You have Fairy Mastermind, and that's it in the main for Fae. And then you have V-Click, which, I don't know, it could be good. I don't know why that card's not in the main deck to begin with, so... The click's not a rogue, it's a wizard. I thought it was a rogue. Correct, it's a fairy. Yeah, yeah, so it has the flat. Like, but th where is the focus? Right. Are you on rogue or are you on flash? And this is not to say that we can't just hope to random into Leyline Helm, but maybe those two cards should not have been in the main for, yeah. bitter, for Spell Sweater and V Click. We see a lot of this happen where people draft, uh, like, I don't know. They draft two card Monty, right? They mm -hmm. try to draft uh, a couple cards that combo together, and it's yeah. like, yeah, these cards are really fast combos by themselves. Why would you not play Painter Grindstone? But they don't play the shell around it that allows you to find them every game. Yeah, and that means that you get stuck with one of them in your hand, and you cast a Painter, and then it dies to an Abrupt Decay. Yeah, yeah, later. yeah. In regards to the the Helm Leyline combo, okay, this one's a little more unique because when you're looking at black, there are three cards that you can play with Helm. And by far and away, Leyline is the worst one because it costs the most mana. It costs zero mana. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Zero <laughs> mana and a willingness to mulligan to it. You're, exactly. there, you have to have an iron will to, uh, to mulligan into that combo. That's correct. So I asked James the most important question of the day. Yeah. Because uh, you know, he's sitting at like one and five, one and six. I said, did you have, you having a good time? He said, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> would, you, would, you, would, you, would you want to come back and do another one? Oh yeah. I wouldn't, so, yeah, like this is just an example of like draft a draft a very focused deck. Yeah, you did everything right in regards to your draft in re for focus. You were you were there. We right. saw what you were trying to do. We applauded you for the effort. It was great. Yep. The notes is now work on the discipline to be able to see what's going on in the draft and not pick twelve cards for the burn matchup. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, this um, was the, this was James. This was the uh, the. Uh, I thought that was the mono white. No, this was the sneak and show. Or oh, the, sneak show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. James's deck actually seemed very good to me. Like he was in every match he played. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think that there, there's like a lot of things he can improve, but I think that yeah. he he did a really good job drafting for his first time. It's like interaction, yeah. right? Like, yeah, the, like, the ability to do something when your opponent's doing something. And the, and the way the deck panned out, it was really decent. The only thing that kind of gets me at the end of the day is just there's a lot of artifact mono there that really doesn't do much besides help you cast Crystal Brand and Emrakul, which is like I, I don't want to overstate that. Those are very powerful things to do. Yes. But he didn't have mind mind twist, did he? No. Uh, no, that no. got taken by the two C. But it was, like, it was pretty late. But if you're going to yeah. take all that artifact mod and you think you might be using it to cast, like, oh, he had Blight Steel, three big chonkers. A yeah. Mind Twist is also a very good card. 
I do think that he showed how good sneak attack is, and I don't think we've seen enough people draft sneak attack to the level that he did. Oh, really? I thought this. I thought uh, I, I yeah. shouldn't say that. Like we see it sometimes, but usually it's like yeah, it's pretty rare. Yeah, yeah. I think that okay. sneak attack plus channel or sneak attack plus show and tell is like a really good deck in this format, and it doesn't get drafted often enough. It's, look, show and tell and sneak attack. It's a very honest deck and should always have representation. It doesn't need to be the best deck all the time. And I if it is the best deck at any given time, the format's probably in a weird spot. We're it, pretty far from that given where it's at right now. Yeah. yeah. But it should... Oh, oh turn one crab. We, we have crabs on the crabs. table. Is that ruined? That is ruined crab. Ruined. Now, this one's important because it doesn't target. Correct. This is the Which is crab. relevant when Shalai has the yes. table on turn two. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why it's the better crab for commander. Oh, fair. Yeah. Each opponent mills. Each opponent as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that's the important. Like, we, you see, uh, this, turn one, I okay. Yeah, the deviation in the way Watsi builds cards, like yeah. after it's like the core set before oh, Innistrad. We did just lose Tasha's though. I okay <sighs> took Tasha's. That wouldn't have been the best against Mason. He's got a lot of fours. Sure. And, if, and like but a five, like it would have done some work. Like it's it always does. Wait, wait, wait. Is the big thing. Right? Maybe, maybe he changed his mind. Maybe he actually took, daring thoughts. I he, think he took thieving thoughts, scurv, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so I guess that he agrees with you, basically, that Tasha's is not going to be a problem. Yeah, I get, like, four or five cards, and you're probably not too worried about it. Uh, those are in Exiles? Oh, hold on. Can you go tell Mason that yeah. his forest is in his graveyard and the rest are in Exile? Okay. Oh, no, no, I lied, no, no. I lied, I lied, no, I'm sorry. just Mills, he's good, R he's good. Crab is Mill. Yeah. I, for, what, isn't there one that Exiles? Tasha's Exiles. And I shot Exiles. I thought one of the Crab's Exiles. No, neither no, there's only two Crab's. There's not a, there's not a completed Crab? No. Nope. Or a weird Emrakul Crab? Not yet. Crabs. Okay. Not yeah. Not yet. We haven't gone back to Innistrad where Emrakul is trapped in the moon. Maybe we'll get some weird crabs. That's a whole lot of lore that I don't know anything about. That's fair. I my, don't know my a lore lot of ended when the when the weather light died. Like when it was completed, like two sets ago. No, when it, when it stopped being relevant. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> they solved the problem. What was the art for Vindicate? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's fair. Okay, so we have more milling happening over oh, there. Oh, and there's Tasha's. Just get him while they're getting good. Yeah, oh, but mystical dispute. You're right. If he lets it, if he lets him hang out with it, he's yeah, dead for sure. He's got an something. answer. Yeah. Mystical dispute's a good one though, because that's one of the two red, blue cards in the deck. Yeah. It, then he lined it up. Yeah. He had the answer, and there it was like bang. No, thank you on the milk. But I feel like if I'm Mason, I just want to have some card that is even like hybrid white, so I can say I had a five color deck because he's so close. I really like. Comment. That, Comment. That, that's the one. It's not hybrid, but like it makes sense. Yeah, but he doesn't... I mean, does he have actual white mana? No, there's not a white land in the list yet. He could have taken... The not Triumph for Rogren. it. That's the Jeskai yeah. one. Rogren is the Jeskai. Yeah. And the, all the fetches... All his fetches line up, would have lined up for it, I believe. Yep. Mason had every land he wanted in the world. Oh, 100%. Yeah, nobody's challenging. Was still surprised he didn't take Fast Bond, but with, again, I kept saying it, like, it made sense to take it if he was going to take a Crucible effect, and he did not, Correct. so then why Fast Bond? It's also just very, very explosive, but sometimes just does not as much, right? And I don't think yeah. it's a super Mason-y card. Like, you know, some people love it, but the explosion. Mason's is a little more about consistency. Yep. yep. I, oh. See, that's what I expected. I expected Life from the Loam just to make uh, Strip Mine loops possible. Yeah, he has Wasteline, too, so you could do that, right. do both, and that's part like part and parcel of why I thought Fast Bond would be decent. You know, you got both. He hasn't... I have not seen him play a Wasteland yet. But he had it, right? No, he did not. Somebody else had it. Oh, I thought he got both. Okay. Yeah, I thought he got both. Uh, nope. Huh. Hmm? It's not in his list. Let's see. Who got Wasteland? Wasteland went to Mason. Mason. Weird. He didn't even put it in his Moxfield, so he obviously didn't care about it. <laughs> That's funny. It's not even... Yeah, it's not even in the sideboard. Correct. I think he forgot he drafted it. Okay. okay. Uh, I also think Wasteland is bad, so maybe that's why. I'm not in disagreement in this with format, in this in this draft in particular, where there's two mono decks. Correct. And and I mean, he did take it 30 seconds, so he mostly agrees. Yeah. So okay, we have an Ursa Saga going. Yeah. That that'll be a thing. With that... two mocks and on board, so yeah, you're gonna make a four four. Yep. And then another four four, and then you have five. two five fives. Yep. But I mean, he's his deck's not looking big. No, this he'll is... have to deal with the Ruin Crab at some point here. It's it, Ruin Crab has put in some work. It is. Vince doesn't have a lot of avenues to victory, and this is one of them. This is twelve now. This is the, twelve cards with Ruin Crab. I think Mason's deck isn't big because I'm pretty sure he milled over an Oko alongside that Soul Ring. Oh okay. But this is what I was saying: is like sometimes the mill deck just does get your stuff. Totally. So you want to make sure you are threat dense when this happens. This is why I hate playing against Mill because I always have a combo deck with one exact card that I need to have. 
Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's very bad for me. No, I get it. Like, okay, so he's tutoring. He's looking through like four cards and then shuffling them. Did he actually look at it or just pick up and shuffle? He picked up and shuffled. Yeah, because the only other, there's only one other Sol Ring, which was just milled over, so he knows there's he has nothing. He mocks and mocks. But Sol Ring was milled over, so he knows yes. with the two mocks there's nothing. Hiya, 4 4. But Mason looks like he has at least at least 10 cards, probably 15. Slay of the Wisp. There's the Dress Down. Just the cycle. But it's Flash. Flash so. kills them. Dress Down removes oh, their ability. Oh, removes the ability. Yes. What did he kill? He a Dress That's... Down to kill both tokens. Oh, nice, nice. That's that's a good use of Dress Down, for sure. Yeah. Now, he's been really good. His Dress Down uses have been good. Really yeah. good, yep. yeah. Luris of the Dream Den. Oh, we're in the dress down loop. Yeah, we're, we're in the, we're in the hard lock. Loop. I don't know about that. I don't know if it's a lock, but it's, it's good. I mean... I, Mason's got to find anything to do. Right. Correct. He, he can draw a card, every, extra card every turn. He has a green sun in hand. And it looks like a land of some kind. I can't I can't tell if it's a draw land or not. Or is it Endurance? Or Besage? Endurance would be It's good. Endurance. It's Endurance, yeah. Endurance Endur and Green Sun. Yeah. Endurance is good. But Green Sun for Thrag Tusk is not bad right now. Right. Hey, no, that's just out of the, the question. He's too short. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. But endurance gets rid of dress down. Mm -hmm. uh, what about deep root? Is deep root good right now? Yeah, you can start like, buying lands back from the graveyard, right? But you mill yourself. You so have you to do damage, and two three doesn't get through uh, a crab. Two three true. doesn't get through a crab, and you have to do damage to trigger it. Yeah, you could death right, but life totals aren't low enough. Yeah, oh, Mace, Mace is kind of in trouble right now. Vince might have just... I don't want to say, like... I don't you want to use the word lucky here and make it seem like Vince has to, like, roll the dice well every time. But no, three cards is enough. Yep. We're in a limited format like this. You have a very high opportunity oh, in endurance. every... Take out Dolores. Yeah. In every Does it trigger... Can you target yourself with Endurance? Yeah, but yeah. It, it does matter. He's going to block Dolores. Oh, I see. Endurance is a 3-4. Oh, I thought it was a 3-2. No, it's got okay. a big old it's, booty. It's, it's yeah, huge. It's, so endurance? Do you target yourself and then block the Luris? Uh, that feels right to me. How many cards has he got in deck? Do you uh, think? I mean, I bet this is like ten or less. One, two, he's three, four, himself. eighteen. Yeah. Eighteen cards yeah. alone. Yeah, he's targeting himself. Sure, and then you block the Luris. Yeah, uh, but I mean, even without that, Mason was like one Maelstrom pulse away from being back okay. in the head. Yeah. yeah. Yep. This is why I hate playing these little creature decks. It's just like you get stymied by so much. Well, that's yeah. why I kept talking about when I talked about sandwich. She had like the black little creature. Oh, deck. we played Thieving like, Skydiver like, off the flash ability. Goes big. Yep, yeah. that makes yeah. sense. Not Thieving Skydiver, but the other one. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Thieving Thieving's... Soul Thief or something. Thieving Soaring Thought Thief. That's impossible. Okay. Have, you seen, have you seen the index of how they name burn spells, where they have the giant list of adjectives and the giant list of nouns? That's actually what I was thinking of. I don't think it's random. an actual index. I think that's just what we've created. But, <laughs> it's it the same, but it's the same thing for cards like this. It's like, what is it? I don't know, a 2-1 or a 1-2 that flies? What does it do? I don't know, not a whole lot. So yeah, it becomes this weird thing. It's just like when you play any game, it doesn't matter if it's pen or paper or yes. digital, where it is just like uh, not, like loot pinata system. You learn the synonyms for like shoulder pads <laughs> and like. Ooh, okay, so we have something stuff. or flashing in the cunning and something or others. The cunning rogue. Cunning yep. night binder. Night bonder. Spells with flash cost you a colorless less, and we are. Oh, flashing Opposition. an opposition agent! Oh, sick! Flashing a what? Opposition, Opposition agent, agent in response to GSD. Nice. So he gets to search the library. He gets to search Mason's library. Mason's library for a three and exile it and can cast it later. Yep. That he's still shuffling, which is, I don't know if he's going to pass him on the right. I don't know what they're... I don't think Green Sun is a May. It's not. It's not a May. He... Uh, he oh, Mason's card. now. Mason's just... like, oh, it shuts <laughs> me down. It's an even mind sensor or whatever. And he's like, no, you no, no, hand no, me no, your not. deck. He's like, hand me your deck. And notably cannot look at his sideboard anymore, but can look at his right. hand if he wants to. Right. We'll see. We'll see if, if you have he a remembers. reason to look at the hand, right? Uh, even no, if not, oh, not. you control your opponents while they're yes. searching. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you get full. But they control. they switch the rule. You can look at the sideboard. Yes, that was done for Pro Emerald of Promise. Then. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah, this is a card that's bounced all. As you can see in the spark line, there, it's bar bounced all over the place. And how good it is. Yep. It. Some people think it's fantastic. They take it really early. Obviously, when it first came out, we thought it was incredible. All right, that's a good one to take. Yeah. Yeah, Leopold. Remove it completely. Yeah, we were talking... This is another one. It's, it's uh, Opposition Agent, Bowmaster. It, they're both good cards. Yes. Bowmaster, 
for me, the question was how, um, what is the context of the draft before it goes from good to great? Because the cantrips are spread out. Right. So you're not going to be able to just get people all the time like you would in a constructed format. Opposition agent, similarly, the searches are spread out. And how many search targets or search cards is everyone going to have to make it good enough to take at a high pick? Right. Like, Well, opposition agent, I think, is not a high pick because of this reason, which is that the floor of opposition agent is so much lower than the floor of bowmasters, right? Yeah. Opposition agent is... At worst, a three man, a three two with flash, which is garbage. You would never play that card. Mm -hmm. Whereas a bowmaster's at worst is a uh, oh, is, is a raise okay. the alarm. That's red that and six Minsk and Boo and Hull Breacher. Sick. That is that's some power hit. off of the ruin crab mill. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, having a having a raise the alarm that shoots something for one yeah. is a card that's yeah. arguably playable by itself. Yeah. Not a second pick playable, but like, no. but we're also talking. That's the floor. Yeah, but now we're actually talking about a deck, and this is the other thing where. Textually, both of these cards are really good in Vintage's deck because turn one, Swamp, Dark, Rit, either one is sure. very good. Yeah. Regardless, or not regardless, but depending on what your opponents are doing. Right. Island Brainstorm, Bow Mass You. That's fantastic. Yeah. Pop a Fetch Land. Gotcha. Like, the ceiling Peter, on have both you of seen those. seen the Swamp Bow Master combo? Yeah, so I saw that go. It was weird because, like, every time all the modern, like, all the modern pl players Ooh. go out to play, like a Pro Tour yeah. GP or something, something stupid happens so, so online. We have a Hive at the Eye Heron attacking. Yeah, 3-3 three, 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 three with Menace. Yep, and Exile is a card from the Graveyard. Oh, I didn't know that that yep. was yep. relevant. Yep. We it just it probably won't be relevant, because Mason doesn't have that much reanimation. Mason's just got the lands. He should probably yeah. just be hitting the lands. Why isn't the Soaring Thoth... Oh, uh, Endurance has Reach, doesn't Correct. it? Correct. It does yes. have... Yep. Secret Reach. Reach. Secret Reach. Secret Reach. Uh, I mean, death right shaman can exile things to gain life, yep. but yeah. I don't know why you're exiling a Minsk other than just like maybe he time twisters again or something. Exactly, in case he gets shuffled back in. Yeah, somehow. Secret tunnel. Just in case, I don't think Mason actually has any more ways. Oh, to make that okay. Happen. There's the helm. Is this how we're gonna get there? I mean, it's fine. At this point, you can win with whatever. Helm just taking a creature right now. Uh, to quote SF, SF, oh, SF love it a witch. Something I about a ham like sandwich. I mean. The thing about Helm, like, everyone wants to just combo with it, right? Yeah. I think just a Helm, just hit, I'm just going to steal one of your good creatures. Yes. Yeah. Is... One of my favorite things about playing Mono Red Painter was when my uh, like my Delver opponent would set the top of their library <laughs> with a Brainstorm yeah. or a Ponder, uh, and I just go, all right, grindstone it away. Your Lux one, uh, your Lux is one is actually a good, makes a good point, which is that if Vincent attacked with everything, it was probably lethal. I'm not positive if that's actually true, given that things might have had summoning sickness. That's... Yeah, to, it's close. Because Leovold's not actually in play yet. Leovold is still in exile. Yes, you have to actually cast Leovold uh, from Opposition Agent. You don't just get to play them. He had three, two, and two. Yeah, no, it should have been lethal. Uh, assuming there was no untapped mana, I think that was a miss. That's a good call. He went Grist, just to take Grist out. He's playing a, he's playing a little you know, a little back. And that's, yeah, he's playing conservative. Loose. Giving us a show. But yeah, assuming that Mason was tapped out there, I think that would be pretty safe to attack. Because we already know the one free spell's already gone. Yep. Let's see. The Rune Crab also has no power. So what was it? Three, two... Yeah, but you, you have the Hive, hive as well. So Hive oh, gets right, blocked, and then yeah. three, two, two. Flashing a V-click. Targeting himself or targeting Mason? I think targeting himself. I don't think it matters. Yeah. This is just this is just actually setting up lethal. Yeah, this is end of turn flashing V-click, I think. Yep, they're hopefully. talking about it now, actually, who he's targeting. Okay. Yeah, I don't... This, I mean, I'm excited to get a game three. Yeah. Because if Mason's 5-2, that's much easier to catch than if uh, if Mason's not 5-2. Well, I don't know. So last we saw, um, uh, Mike was still 5-1, so I don't know if he's had his... I also don't know the app. Yeah. I know he's I playing last, last one. I, he was playing... I think he was playing Kyle again just for fun. They were just playing because they were okay. bored. Yeah, Cody still has three matches outstanding. Yeah, Cody... Cody do, do you Cody want to go Cody's check on that? Yeah, make sure that's sure. standard yeah. updated. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. This computer should be open. Yeah, now, uh, there's no way this isn't lethal. Lethal when you activate Hive. That's, no, I mean... That's four. What even could Mason have? He has instance of Assassin's Trophy and Abrupt Decay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Terra Sunder is an instant. Yep. I don't know what's in the graveyard, though. There's... The Ruin Crab's put in a little more work. He's signaling that he has one of those. Yeah, by leaving everything open. Oh, there goes the Yoko. Man, these Ruin Crab mills have just been insane. They just keep... Hitting. There are very few cards in Mason's deck that are not insane to hit, though, to be fair. That's true. But it's like all the threats. It's yeah. not even the answers. It's just he's like leaving Mason with answers. Yeah. 
That is my most favorite function. It's really nice. Did you set that for both? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's all the other. <laughs> okay, we're going to uh, Mason's. Uh, I actually have. Very our stuff. No, no, I have our stuff over here as well. Oh, nice. Okay. Like, it's um, the third screen, basically. So let's jump over to the actual deck list again. I don't yep. think anything changes. Hi, Mason. Just straight shuffling. It looks like Vince is pulled back. So maybe Vince is going to make an update. Maybe. But I don't know. What did we see? We saw Mystical Dispute. Yes. Right. Yeah. I and mean, he, all these deck lists are open, right? So he yep. already knows what they could be. Uh, it's just really a question of kind of like what does he, what does he want to be doing? Yes. I don't see the challenge. Can you? Uh, t change tabs. It's right there. I don't know if that match with my worst enemy. It's the same tabs as any browser. I, I don't see the tab. All right. So if we're looking at, uh, if we're so looking at what he's changing over to. All right, we're going to pull over to Challenge in a minute, which is uh, not in a tab, and instead we're just going to open it. Okay. Why is it Challenge and not Challenge? We didn't I don't know. Build it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I'm going to go do my job. Oh, fine, fine. I closed the door so we yeah. talk about people, but no. I appreciate it. <laughs> you appreciate it. Uh, Steven chose to use a different computer than the one I was using, so. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So, if I... Oh, oh they are starting. Oh, Go yeah. Mason's, okay. on, Mason's on the play. That's a turn one. I guess. Egg, <laughs> it, it, it's fine. All right, he has a, a, a veil, veil. endurance, and a vampiric. No threats. Okay. But no crab from Vince. Yeah, that's rough. So... You're pretty safe to go get any one of your four mana threats here. It's pretty, yeah. Seeing Vince not have a crab in turn one makes this a much less exciting game. Yeah. If I'm Mason, I think I just go grab Minsk and Boo right here. Yeah. Just start up, just gas it. I think that's what he got. Like, that. Worst comes to worst, you build up a big hamster and you throw it at somebody. Yeah. And draw some cards, but. Uh, Mason notably really hates Vampiric Tutor and thinks it's just, like, so much worse than Demonic Tutor. Mm hmm. Um, I mean, it technically it, is. No, it's obviously not. It it, re it's it a costs one less. Yeah, but it, it you don't get a draw. Yeah, but you get to win the game instead. I mean, you can do that with D two. Yeah, but it costs two. Look, oh, look, look. Yeah. I am a huge fan of Vampiric Tutor. I put a lot of giant creatures on the top of my my deck mm -hmm. to then discard them that turn and reanimate them. I have an affinity for this card. Yes. I just uh, had. I, I play too many storm decks where the one mana is the clinch point. That's fair. Now, because of the way formats are set up and I can't yeah. play it in Legacy, I just get to play it in Vintage alongside Demonic and Commander. And at that point, it's just like, well, I have all the mana in the world in both totally. of those formats. Does uh, Let's pull up Minsk and Boo. Does he give, uh, does he give Trample as well? Uh, it has it natively. Okay. Trample or Haste is for the plus. So this is what we were, I was talking about last Got night. Um, so the, this uh, Bitter Blossom is not going to do a lot of work. He's no. dead next turn. Effectively, yeah, you just swing in and then throw. Like act no, not even throw. Act oh, just next turn in combat. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, plus it and get you unless he has drown in the lock. This is uh, Vince is losing on turn three, uh, to without win. yeah to to miss Yeah, does drown in the lock based on power or mana value? I like believe that's, it's CMC, so he can he can kill it only... and it will save him two turns, maybe one turn. Oh yeah, yeah, because you make the hamster again in your upkeep. Yeah, that's the the text on it. Drowned. Drowned, Drowned in, the in the lock. I my brain's just dead. I don't know. Destroy target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number. I can't James and Mason's result. It's a two one, but I keep hitting on it and it's not. Uh, you're locked up here. Oh, okay. All right. Strip mine the black source. No float. So there's. Okay. Wait. We okay. We Odawarad back the hamster. So yeah, we oh. are. The hamster should be back. That should be the thing. Oda, we, we... How did he Oda water? Oh, okay, there it is. There's the. Yeah. He. Right. Mason was confused about how he auto watered with two mana, and it turns out there was a dark ritual involved as well. Cody, so it's two okay, the absolutely. black off the float. Yeah. Okay, so we floated a black off of the watery grave in response to the strip mine, then we tapped a blue. So that gives us a blue and three. Right. For Odawara, and then we fetched with Fable. Was he using the Fable? Because the Fable would come into play tapped. Uh, the sequencing is 
at best sloppy. Yes. Um, how many lands does fa the fables always come to play tapped, or is it fable comes to play tapped unless you have four? I think. Yeah, yeah. So then, okay, so then it's going to come to play tapped anyway. So it's just, as just part of it all, he just I don't know where this because he has three three lands, right? Yeah. There's the decorate. What do you What are we trying to figure out? Uh, he must have used fable the turn before this or something. No, he just used it now. The the black came off the watery grave. The dark red. So I see. I see. Black. Okay, so we stripped this turn. There yes, we go. Yes. Yes. There yes. Sorry. 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 At the start of at the start of Mason's turn, there were three lands in play. Yes. I'm with you now. Yep. Oh, you're looking at Mason's side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So making Mason uses strip the the strip mine on. Yep. Okay. In his first main phase. And in response, Vince floated the black, cast dark ritual, channeled Odawara, and yes. then just fetched with the fable, and then F six. I'm just gonna point out how pretty the art on Drone of the Lock is. This feels like real throwbacks to 1997. It is a really nice watercolor. I, yeah. at least I, I assume it's watercolor, but yeah, it is. It's real. It feels, yeah, very ice agey. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, feel, I was thinking Tempest or Ice Age. Yeah, where everything's basically just cold and or wet or both. Yep. Right. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's an Obero. Oh. Oboro, Oboro, whatever. Yeah. So he was. That's how you re-trigger your crab. Right. That's what we were like, oh yeah, that's cute, right? Yeah, it's, it's completely reasonable. Another deck where Fast Bond would have been really good. Yes, however, <laughs> now, now that he has solved this problem of uh, Boo, next turn he gets a new problem of Boo. Yes, yeah, that, that, that problem is recurring until you Correct. deal with Minsk. He has one turn after the next one. Yes. Maybe. Like, that's the best case scenario. Mm -hmm. You just buy yourself the draw. You know. yeah. Okay, that's, right. that's a good start to a draw. Assuming that Mason has no interaction, which he does not. Uh, yeah, there's nothing left there's... in that hand unless... We oh, could... endurance in response? He can endurance himself in response. Yes. Oh, he but there was no But there was no activation. Oh, spell strider, spell spider start get you. That's fine. I, I'm confused why Mason waited. Why Mason cast that. The endurance? Yeah. Yeah, why would you pick a graveyard to shuffle back in right then? Yeah, why not wait until after... Like, theoretically, he's threat Vince is threatening the Painter Grindstone kill. Yep. So wait until after that has happened and then use it. Yeah, Painter Grindstone is an interesting combo to uh, to interact with because if you attempt to interact with it while it's in motion and you remove the Painter, that is the only that is the only thing you can do. Well, but you, you can wait for it to have fully milled you. And until then you that happens, yes. Yeah. And then at the end of turn... You yeah. flip it back, and that's the that's the point of interaction you want. But if it was a removal spell, oh, it was sure. a Sasha's trophy or what what have you, it was an yeah. endurance. Interacting with the painter is the is the only way to actually break it up because the grindstone trigger is on the ability itself, not the is placed on the ability, not the grindstone. So yes. the moment you activate it, that's it. You're going. Yep. So if you try and get rid of the grindstone, nope. Which is why we should all play more stifles. Yes. <laughs> Stifle, Trick Bind, Void Slime. What's the three mana creature that, like, uh, Shrub Mystic? Oh, yeah, yeah, Nimble, Nimble Obstructionist. Yeah. I think. Oh, uh, uh, there's the Oh, end. there it is. Ma yeah. that's, that's Mason's signature Fist Bomb, Bomb. I Killed You. Yep. This is the only time he. I still. And I still had all these without them being in play. Because the last time he did it, he just kept playing Planeswalkers. <laughs> so brutal. Yeah. Oh, he had a Mystical Dispute in hand, yes. too. Okay, yep. so that, that shut things down. Yeah, the the painter had to be played that turn, basically. Yeah. Like, letting Mason untap in any way, shape, or form was was going to be game over. Like, with the ability eh, to even to attack, yeah, was going to be game over. Because you're going to take two off the boo that's created after you plus it. Yeah. I think somehow we lost your name. That's exciting. You are the... The nameless. Yeah, the name, <laughs> nameless ones. Yeah. Okay. Do we? Who do we have left? So let's pull up the standings. Okay. Uh, we have it looks like Mike and Mason as our top two. Okay. Uh, Mason is officially one. I think Mike still has one more, so it's possible we fall into a top uh, a top pairing. I'm not sure who the who the match. I think oh I think Mike has to play Cody. Oh okay. So I think we have a we have a minute to wait, and especially since they're driving back to Chicago tonight. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be a long wait for Mason and. Uh, Got it. Mason yeah, and Jake. Yeah. Out. yeah. Yeah, okay. so I think we had, we had a little bit before they come on. Uh, okay. The... Okay, so yeah, those are the only two that have a chance of winning this one. Mm -hmm. So this would be Mason's fourth win. This is, he's yeah. already the winningest player. We really have been hoping he would not make it, so Mike <laughs> is the last hope for St. Louis. Look, I want Mason to lose all the time. I'm very excited for September. Uh, if, if people here don't know yet, in September we're going to be having a team draft vintage rotisserie draft. Yes. 
So it's going to be a 4v4 tournament. We're going to have St. Louis versus Chicago. We're going to go up there. They're hosting. And we're going to figure out exactly who we're bringing. Uh, but we're going to have the teams in two separate rooms. So we're going to have St. Louis in a room. Everyone being there. Alternating players. St. Louis, Chicago. Mm -hmm. And we'll be figuring out what our strategies are. And then trying to help each other along the way. Uh, obviously still not shared pools. But mm -hmm. we're going to be having shared pooled minds. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so you'll be able to discuss the draft as it's going on and deal with those picks yeah that's the goal that's pretty cool uh and yeah we'll see if uh we'll see if we can make if we can get commentary going at the same time oh, yeah, yeah. the ideal uh maybe you'll join us it depends on the date sure we'll, we'll talk after this yeah yeah are you in new york is that right based on your hat jersey which is like oh, okay. we don't have a baseball team so pick one i get it yeah that makes sense i got three to choose from uh, but obviously very nice of you to make it out here oh yes yeah. come on anytime uh let's see what is going on with the if they have if Steven has already lined us up a match yeah. it does not look like it yet. I have to say, so I came out last time and I, I was uh, uh, Jason, who's not here with us. He's at the national this weekend. Rest in peace. Um, the rest, <laughs> <laughs> gracious enough to host me last time, and he was carting me around. So he he showed me around the city a little bit. This time I, I've got my own car. I'm nice. staying in the part of the city. It is if you've never been out to St. Louis, a very interesting and beautiful city from an architectural standpoint. Yeah. Um, it's because a brick city. It is, yes. And it's in the middle of America. And for when it was built, you get to see a lot of what that means from a shipping standpoint, okay. where the coasts would either ship in or it would go from one to the other. So you get to see a lot of that brick and the communities that came around it. So you see a lot of this interesting architecture mm -hmm. from that era, a lot of similar architecture to the coasts. And you get a sense of what it meant to people to live here and what they were doing in their everyday lives, what was important to them based on the architecture that still survives in like almost like immaculate condition. Yeah. Like I, th I think I talked about this with Jason when I was here. There's a lot of East coast architecture that made it into the Midwest because it can withstand the weather sure. that's coming in off the ocean. That's just whipping through. So it'll survive the Midwest, build it out there. So a lot of the homes out here look similar to where, where I'm from. Uh, but more importantly, a lot of the the factories mm -hmm. and a lot of the warehouses are built similarly. So it has this kind of like homey feeling for me as somebody on the East that Coast in a large shipping hub close to a deep water port. Yep. And we, we also have a lot of like trickled on stuff from Chicago. Like yeah. Louis Sullivan has a lot of buildings that are here and heavily influenced by that kind of era. So mm -hmm. a lot of the modernist styles, Frank Lloyd Wright, a lot of like that kind of architecture happens in St. Louis. You also get a lot of like the post-war neighborhoods. Like the Hill is a, is a big Italian neighborhood. Yeah, and yeah. that's where like a lot of the baseball legends came from. Like Yogi Berra's from there. Like there's kind of a like classic joke of the the starting pitcher or starting uh, the starting uh, catcher for the from the Yankees at that time had this quote where he said, "I'm not the best. Uh, I'm not the best uh, catcher in the major leagues. I'm not the best catcher in the American League. I'm not even the best catcher on my street because he grew up down the yeah, street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from from one, like from Yogi Berra, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, so there's just like a classic, like really big baseball town here, which is why the Cardinals yep. are the team they are, other than this year. Yeah. Um, and it's just a really exciting time. And it, like then the the architecture, because it's so well preserved, exists in a city where they are in where they integrated into the new building. Yeah. So it's like yeah, it does look different mm -hmm. when you have those two kind of the, the 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 dual the dual styles and it's not necessarily like pleasing per se but it's just the embracing of the like this is historic we're going to maintain the the hell out yeah, of it yeah absolutely and keep what was here because it does look great and then build up and around it so if you haven't come out to St. Louis I would recommend just to it's come out anyway yeah and I don't know if you've been to the city All museum right. but the not city yet. museum so is the place to go just lost to the Mono White deck okay Heck yeah. So yeah. if Mike beats Cody, yes. then Mike and uh, Mason have to play off. Ah, yeah. Do we have Mace, uh, Mike coming on commentary next? Uh, I'll put him on camera. Okay, yeah. who, who's who's out there right now? I uh, know it is yet. Okay, somebody's shuffling up. Okay, right. we'll make Mike it Mike. Mike and Cody commentary. Yeah. All right. So it looks like they are they are currently D side boarding from their previous match. Okay. Uh, Co I, can, I can hear. Basically, the only two games left are Cody's Cody versus Kyle and Cody versus um, Mike. Got it. Okay. Do we want to do Cody versus Mike first then because it's relevant? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Cody versus Kyle will be relevant for some rankings, but that's it. Yeah. All right. So we have a uh, we have Mason hopping in here for a second. Let's hear. After right. losing your first game and giving us all hope, oh. you managed to come back 
Uh, let's hear about it. Okay. All right. I punted my match against Mike uh -huh. pretty badly by not seeing the video very kindly to play. That yep. sucks. You know, it always sucks to punt off a game. I really hate it. When yeah. you can then look at that game and say, wow, that guy is 5-1. and one. Yes. That guy is the only guy... That guy <laughs> is the only guy to beat you. Yep. He is now playing off in the last match of the day for him. Uh, not for Cody. Cody's got one or two more left to go. But his last match here. If he beats Cody, me and him have to play off for the, for the W. Yep. And if he loses, nice clean out. You know, we, just, we all move. Uh, yeah. If, if Cody beats him, Cody lost to my friend Jake, so he's now three and two. Mm -hmm. And if he loses, boom, we're all done. I can go home. It's beautiful. And I'm sure you, you don't feel at all frustrated about this in the fact that if you had won, none of this would be relevant at all. Oh, uh, and it's all based on your misplay. Oh, and it e hurts, even, it even hurts more so, if you hadn't made that misplay, you would be the first 7 0 in St. Lotus history. Oh, really? Oh, my the, God. The, the only 7 0 that could oh. ever happen. Wow. As if. I need the accolade. As if I need the ego pump. Yeah, that, yeah. that would be great. We're just trying to hold um, you back from getting the four. The giving me the fourth, uh, the fourth champion. Th which is understandable. I get that. Yeah. Now uh, he was asking me. Mike was asking me. He was like, mm -hmm. "Haven't you won like two or three of these things?" I was like, "Yeah, I don't remember how many it is. Oh, I just shoot. know it's the most. I know it's. Oh shit, we're in. Yeah, we have two oh, people God. playing. I don't know who oh, they are though. Okay. When the other guys get back, they can take. So Caracas, that has to be Cody, right? Yeah. This is Cody and Mike. So Got this it. is Mike's last match. Yep. And Cody is what, Cody three is currently and three and two. Yes, sir. And it's Mike who is currently mm -hmm. five and one. So Cody says he Cody's feeling fairly confident about his match for uh for this one. He thinks he has enough interaction to beat up on Mike. Sure. And depending on you know, Mike's got a, a kind of a weirdo deck because his deck can totally. uh, hit you from a couple different angles uh, as far as what combo it's presenting. So yeah, kind of interesting. His deck is a uh, is is. I think weirdo angle is the real the real descriptor of it. It has a lot of really powerful things, right? It has his, his descriptor was basically I'm just gonna like counter all your things until I win off time vault, and I think mm -hmm. that's like mm -hmm. what happens sometime. But sometimes he just like randomly channel Ulamogs you and you lose the game, or like yeah. uh, just grinds out the game with Nissa. Like it, it has a lot of weird angles to come mm -hmm. from. And, it, and you know, most of his cards, he's got a lot of cards that'll mostly win the game by themselves. You know, yeah. it doesn't take too much for a card like Nissa or a card like Hex Drinker to win the game. It's just kind of gotta buy some time. But sometimes, yep. sometimes you see him cast a descent to the dividing top and spin it six turns in a row and lose. Yeah. So no kidding. I don't know. The one ring has seemed very powerful in his deck, it's, and his I deck mean, does almost really... nothing to support it. It has like a key, and that's it. Yeah. Well, it's completely bonkers card. It's completely bonkers card, yeah. and the decks with the keys in them make it even more exciting. You know, um, the key... so I actually think it's pretty funny that we're reaching a point in Magic yeah. where those keys are going to be pretty sought after, regardless of if you have time vault or not. So the joke Ooh, is always someone's going to cool. take time vault. And then someone else is going to hate the keys from, right? Yeah. But we're dealing with monoliths out the wazoo, okay? We got the one ring. We got uh, all kinds of different, like, little dorky artifact creatures. Like uh, Here, just for catching people up, Sky Club Apparition just okay. took out uh, the Hex Drinker. So oh, Cody, is, Cody is kind of crushing the war at the moment. But yeah, keep yeah. going, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, honestly, we should probably talk about the game. Nah. But the world of, of hating on Voltaic keys... It's, it's getting to be very lucrative. I'm just, just throwing it out there. I think you're right. The fact that there are two of them that are literally identical, and mm -hmm. I'm going to refuse the fact that there's better <laughs> art on one and has a stupid real love and ability in the other. Yeah, right. Um, but like the fact that there's two completely identical means I think that they're just going to split a lot, and that's okay. Like mm -hmm. You'll have one player with a key for Time Vault and one player with a key for the One Ring. But yeah. there's also alternate keys. That's kind of the problem, too. True. Right. There are non-keys. you've got Tezzer the Seeker, yes. and, or, yeah, Tezzer the Seeker, and you've got Ral Zarek, and, and you've got... A, and you've got I mean, you've got to revy for God's sake. In particular, for the ring, you also have mind over matter, which we're talking true. about. That takes forever and a day to cast. Yes, true. But it fuels true. itself. True, and, and there are other combos with mind over matter. Yes. You can you can do some other things. Like yeah. That Ooh, too. okay. We have the you initiative going for Cody. Ooh, I was about to say. So the, the problem with Cody's board is that his deck does not close games fast, even right. from this state. The only thing he would realistically get is if he has his initiative tutor. Yeah. Which he does have. Yeah, that's I mean, pretty exciting. He does also have the ability to just like close the game out with the invasion of Goka Khan or whatever it's called. Sure, uh, sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, right now, he he's looking cards. in really good shape. Mason, excellent. <laughs> Have you put a Sensei Divining Top through the wash? Is that a story that we haven't heard yet? I really don't know. I'll well, be honest. Glorp, I, I, glorp, glorp, this, is a, this is, you know when you hear a story about yourself and you don't remember it at all? Yeah, it's like, that sounds plausible. I would have yeah, done that at 22. Fantastic. Yeah. Who hasn't put magic cards in their pockets? You know? Yeah. Sheesh. Um, this is pretty exciting. I mean, Mike's got outs. Mike's got, you know, 
his his combos are cheap, so if you find something off the top, you can always exactly. just try to bleh. And like Cody has um, no disruption right now at all, right? Like he oh, has, we got the one ring, see? baby. Look, yeah, he has protection go. from everything. everything. Yeah. So the other thing is, I mean, Cody drafted this, you know, Teferi's protection, yep. uh, Chronotalk deck, not having the one ring, which is like the the redundant piece of that combo, which is really nice. Correct. Kind of a bummer. So maybe we'll see that uh, in the future. People trying to trying to make that combo happen. Do you, I mean? Does it work? How, how does it? In, I guess the Chronotalk part of it does work. Um, so, unfortunately, the One Ring doesn't protect your Chronotog, but neither does Teferi's Protection. Right? Teferi's Protection doesn't protect your Chronotog if you want to use that on your opponent's turn. Right, right. Which so is that's the way kind of the issue. It. Yeah. I mean, it's not Lethal Vapors. The Chronotog's right? not very good. Ooh, we're, we're so, taking the initiative. Yeah, we're bouncing oh down the initiative God. track. We are bebopping and rocking, uh, for all you who don't know. The initiative works this way. You play it, and you have it. Yes. And then, in somewhere between three to four turns, your opponent dies. Yep, that's, that sounds right to me. So, that's a technical let's, analysis. Let's pop that's over why this. they pay me for the play-by-play. -play Th here. This is what the Ender City says. <clears throat> so, it looks like we have routed down to Forge, mm -hmm. which has made the uh, the Esper Sentinel approximately hu mm -hmm. impossibly huge. Yeah. Gigantic. And next turn, uh, Mike will be at ten. Ooh, now you know what's a little awkward, is he went down the Forge, and now he's got Trap. But unfortunately, his opponent has protection from everything. So only until next turn, cannot, though, right? Right, but he can't unless I'm mistaken. Wouldn't he at his upkeep? His initiative would move down. He would go to trap and target well, player lose five life. If he were to have protection from everything again, which I don't think he will, because the one ring is gone. Um, if he were to have it, he would just go to arena instead and goad. Um, sure. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm mistaken. Do you not move down the track at the beginning of your turn? You do move down the track at the beginning of your turn. Uh, but Mike's one ring, I think, was the turn before. But even if it wasn't... Oh, okay, Even if it wasn't, he would just go I'm the other mistaken direction. because I thought the Ephemerate hit the initiative creature because he wanted to go down the track really fast. I thought he did. I thought he did too, but I'm seeing that he's still on stage two, so I guess he's not. I'm not sure. Yeah. Does he not have... It's at the start of your turn Does that it happens. Does he not have protection? Uh, I, th I think we're a turn behind. I think the, the one ring is now gone, and the protection is also gone. I think we, we are... There's a turn that got missed in the middle here. Okay. Uh, we were talking I'm about insane. washing I tops I swear or to God, I thought he played the one ring, his opponent ephemerated, and then he attacked. I, I'm crazy. I'm a crazy person. I don't know. Uh, the, the ephemerate's in the graveyard now, which means it's now two turns after that. Well, I don't no, know what got linked. Not if it was end of turn ephemerate, untap ephemerate. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Which is what I thought happened, but I guess not. I really don't know. Nothing makes sense to me anymore. Nothing makes the any sense to me either. world is on fire. Uh, did, is it possible that he blinked the... Nope, nope. If I'm right I mean, I'm hoping that. something weird didn't happen, like he removed the one ring and then thought that he could, like, punch him or something. I, I, think, don't think, I think we I don't have people think out there watching this. Mistake. Yeah, we have people out there watching. So, I guess we just missed a turn. And also the initiative track didn't move down. And also the first ephemerate didn't hit anything. I actually, I really, am yeah, not really sure what, what's going on here. Maybe he blinked Skyclave and nothing happened because he didn't want to move down the track. Would have at least hit Sensei's top. He would have spun Sensei's top into the top, right? Who knows? It's Who knows? Mystery. It's a mystery. Yes. All we can do, magic is like life, okay? All you yeah. can do is look forward and deal with the now, right? That's really that's really what it's about. So we got the invasion of Gobukon. Yep. Gobukon? How do you like this card? I think it's great. Been, uh, been uh, impressed with it so far? I have been very impressed with it. I don't know how to spell it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, I think it's really powerful. Uh, what about you? Uh, I'm pretty mixed on it. I don't like it in Cody's deck. Um, I think when okay. we were playing our match, I kept referring to it as, oh yeah, that piece of cardboard that doesn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, uh, but his deck just seemed a little creature light to me to make use of it, to be honest. Um, yeah. It doesn't on its face seem like a bad card i would probably play elite spellbinder and some some other things over it some cards that i could like aether violin or something but i think you really want this crazy. card to be along with something proactive so i think in this matchup it looks in this game it looks very good but in his deck his, he doesn't have enough creatures to really put the pressure on with it that's what i'm thinking i think in a deck like jake's maybe um but honestly i would be mostly looking at getting the value off the front side flipping it right away and then protecting my team with that uh, you can't wrath me effect. See, whereas I like it as a thought seize that lasts for two turns, and then you win the game in those two turns. Mm, okay. 
But yeah. So, I, I mean, are way. you attacking it a whole bunch? I mean, are you going to try no. to flip it over? I think I just uh, take the best card out of their hand, make it, like, take their counter spell out of their hand, and then kill them the next turn with a combo. And this is, this is effectively a silence. Yeah, all right. That has, it's a silence with upside, right? You can kill it if you if you get to a game like that. But I think slowing sure. slowing down the most important card in their hand by two turns is worth two mana a lot I of times. That. I mean, white likes to have that hand interaction, right? But now right. you also, I mean, you're competing with Anointed Peacekeeper. You're competing with sure. Spellbinder. Uh, Th those cards all cost yeah. three. True. But, no, I mean, you're right. I, I don't think it's, like, universally better than those. No, I mean, but I can see it. I can see it in the mix, you know, perhaps. Uh, I'd be most interested in using it if I thought I was going to be playing against decks that I might want the Wrath of Protection. Sure, yeah, that's um, huge. Other than that, I might, if, if I knew that I was going to be playing against mostly decks that were not going to be, like, playing Wraths or playing Interactive Spells with me, I'd probably look to play the cards that have three power. Yes. Um, <laughs> then again, Jake drafted his uh, Death and Taxes deck. He said his curve is, like, 90% three drops. <laughs> he's got City of Traders and Ancient Tomb, so he's like, you know, just kind of how... Kind of how it worked out. So compared to like all historical drafts, there's been drafted one time that has been available, probably in like Columbus or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was drafted in round 22, and that feels like a little early to me. This feels like a 30th round pick to me, which is fine. Like it's it's not a card I'm excited about, but it's a card I'll throw into a deck occasionally. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. I mean, it, like it does certainly look good in this game. Yes. And uh, Cody has had games that have made it look good. I think he just needs to draw the creature part of his deck as opposed to the more esoteric control y Planeswalker side. It's not very good with Stasis and Chronotog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would also uh, posit that uh, these types of sphere resistance effects, these types of uh, ways to slow your opponent down yeah. a little bit. Spellbinder and all that. That's a seasoned dungeoneer that just got pulled up? No, no, no. I'm thinking, is there a wild mistake that's happening here where Cody's not ticking down his dungeon every turn? I'm going to go and ask, just okay. to make sure. I'm like, it's been sitting at that too for the whole I, game. He's, he's looped around okay. once. Oh, okay. Then I'm mistaken. I'm done. That's, that's good. All right, we got con confirmation. I'm just dumb because, again, I'm talking about other stuff, guys. You have to keep in mind. I'm not a commentator. I'm not a professional like these guys, okay? I get distracted easily. <coughs> They're all good. There was a mystery. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, wait. Maybe there's actually another die that's on the bottom there. Maybe it's just he has an extra, an extraneous die on the thing that's making it look like... My guess is that the Snapcaster Mage actually got in there, and the Snapcaster, that die is representing Mike's progression in the dungeon. Oh, interesting. That Mike got the initiative for one turn. Mm, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah, what I was going to say is these sphere resistance type effects, this invasion in Cody's more controlling deck, I think you have to be careful when you're trying to tax your opponent's uh, lands or mana sure. in these games where you're expecting the game to drag out. You're going to force your opponent yes. into making extraneous land drops. Probably they don't want to make so if at that point you're making your shit more expensive, who cares? All their stuff is cheap, and you're just making it more expensive in these games that you're dragging out super long. Yeah, so, you're effectively casting the spell delay, right? That's, that's sure. what's happening yeah. here. Is you're, that's you're saying, let's Now, do delay plus on. three mana to fairy. <laughs> fairy <laughs> gun. Yes. Or, if you invasion of Govistan them and then Wasteland Strangler their card from exile, ooh. Oh, yeah. I 100% Now agree. we're processing. So that I, I, is my friend. That is uh, so. That is a friend of mine from Chicago. He's a he's my casual EDH player friend, Jelly Belly. Ah, casual EDH player. I like how you said that with such disdain. Well, you know, you wouldn't call him a C EDH player. That I would see. Be... <clears throat> All right, we are down the track further. But ooh, Torrential Gearhole coming out to swing, dude. This is funny because I don't think either of the deck these decks are really functioning how they <laughs> no, no. typically do. And yet, Mike played both Snapcaster Mage and Fat Caster Mage this game, and he is, like, ready to go to war. Yeah, I, I wish I could see uh, his graveyard, because in my head, there's no cards in his graveyard, and he's just, like, struggling by casting Ambush Vipers. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, so far, it's been working okay for him. Do you think you would have sacked the uh, invasion to save your 5-5 five, five Esper Sentinel here? Um, yes. Yes, I would. It's interesting. There's a 4-6? Is, is the Torrential a 4-6? It's a 5-6. Five, 5-6. Five, six. Five, six. So this does give you, you know, another 5-power guy and, a, you know, an extra counter. In that case, I wouldn't have exact it, no. Operation and everything, so. Now, if you're Mike, how much are you thinking, man, I should get this Fairy Conclave in there and get that initiative? I don't think the initiative does a whole lot for him right now. The, the next turn, it puts two 1-1 one, one counters. Like, I, I, yeah. think, I think Mike needs to win off of combo, given that he's at 4 life and Cody's at 16. Like, he's not going to be winning by beating down here. 
It makes a lot of sense to me. Well, he's found his key. Is he going to top on top and find time vaults? Exactly. I would be spinning my top oh looking my for the top. Oh my gosh, it's happening. Is Cody going to have an interactive spell? Two mana? There's anything. the game. Does he have a naturalize? Does he have a disenchant? Does he have a shattering spree? Does he have a... See, my head was like, I need to find a, vapors, a channel truth? to pump up my hex drinker. Oof. But no, this is this is the game. That looks like the game. So Cody is in the tank a little bit. Kind of decide. Hey, he's going to pick his cards up. All right. Mike's going to win that game one. Kind of a tough game for, I mean, I would say, you know, kind of a tough game for Mike there. Yeah. He, uh, he got, put on, them, the, he got put on the back foot. I mean, he wound up at four life. I think, if I'm not crazy, I'm pretty sure uh, he was protected when the five damage. Oh, you know what's wrong with that game? What's, what's that? That, that uh, the turn the initial was hitting five damage to the target player's head. Well, he had protection. I, <laughs> I knew it. I'm a genius. But then he, then he forgot to move it down again because he wouldn't have been able to do an extra five. Well, he moved it down that one, so he had to right, Steven, I'll let you take back over. These guys are tired of me completely distracting Mark from yeah. even being able to remotely pay attention. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Have Y'all fun, gentlemen. Thank Hopefully, you. Hopefully. I uh, look forward to seeing down. you in finals. Everybody root for Cody. I look forward Cody. to seeing Cody. you in finals Cody. against Mike. All right. I do so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so in case people are just tuning into the stream, that was Mason Lang, who's currently in first place at a 6-1 finish, which means that if Mike wins this match, he gets to play Mason for first place. Yep. We are all hoping for more uh, more magic and hoping for Mason to lose. Right. So the goal is for Mike to win this one and then to, to play against Mason in the finals. Um, but if Mike loses, that means Mason is just clearing away the victor in this, in this VRD, yeah. which would be his fourth win, which is really disappointing. And second clearing away win. Uh, oh, the first the first two were not? Uh, one that we had some tiebreaker ones. Like, I think it was the second one that was a clear away. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the uh, previous his first one, and his yeah. third involved tiebreaker matches, I think. But yep. I think his second one was a clear away, if I recall. I see. But yeah, he, he was. we were just talking about how frustrated he was that he the one loss he had was on a misplay. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, he, he might have still lost that game, to be honest. But I mean, well, but, but it, definitely, it definitely hurt him. If you're talking to Mason Lang, he would never have lost that game. Sure, 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, no, this this was a this was a great match. I mean, Mike was way behind the whole game and then got there, like kind of just like yeah, stalled out for long enough and got there. Yeah, the five damage, uh, you know, really, 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 really. <laughs> I think that Cody had uh, had another five damage if he hadn't missed that trick or two. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a shame. I think the ephemerate triggered the white plume and he just didn't didn't catch it. Right. <sighs> Yeah, but, I think there was definitely some sloppy, sloppy issue. But I, I, said, I think in the hindsight, like that gate, that match drained Cody. Yeah, right. Like watching Cody, he, he's playing the hardest deck here by far. Yeah, and he's got to be super tired. Yeah, that match just had to have drained him. Where he's just, you know, he's been he's been thinking about magic. Like on, on the drive over, I'm sure you were brainstorming with him about deck. So he's been doing this for twelve hours straight right. of either drafting. We actually discussed minimally this time. Like, okay. Yeah. So that, that's good at least. But yeah. But no. Still, like you know, he's been thinking about it a lot. He didn't. He said talked about it, he didn't join an online one because he wanted to focus on this one. Nice. Uh, especially with Mason coming down, he wanted to uh -huh. you know uh, put himself back where you know because he's been talking about oh well you know I've done well these last three. He wanted to put himself back in the you know at least in the I'm finishing top four spot and he is solidly there right. I mean so. Well, I don't know. Mason Mason's doing less convincingly well than he has in previous times. Right. So, uh, obviously, Mason is a monster when it comes to VRDs, but I think that the fetches all flowing to him were positive, but also kind of dragged him into this weird four color brew. I mean, it's worked well for him. I mean, it has. Uh, it has. I'm gonna jump over to the deck list a minute to take a look at the ones that we're gonna be watching though, just to see see what's going on here. Uh, so we have Cody's list. This is obviously like really cool this Teferi's Protection list that has uh, has some counter spells but really fewer interactive pieces than the other ones do I mean it's got Force of Negation Force of Will Path to Exile yep. uh, Dovin's Veto it's got three it's three solid counters four if you count Scheming Fence uh, it's got yeah it's quite a bit it does it's got it quite does. a bit more interaction than it looks like yeah that's fair and a lot of the interaction is, is on the board as well right? yeah like the Scheming Fence that you called out the Lavinia even just like this invasion is just like a huge yeah. shutdown I mean I don't know if you saw room. the one earlier where he's scheming the guy turned to Grim Monolith and he's scheming fence the Grim Monolith which means your Scheming Fence yes. taps for three but gets to untap it's pretty brutal yeah yeah uh, yeah, Frozen, you nailed it right on the head, right? Like, you're playing a deck. If you're playing Belcher, you can go have bathroom breaks. You can just stop thinking about magic after right. two minutes. Whereas a deck like this, you are locked in the tank the whole time. 
excuse me, you're locked in the tank the entire game, the entire match. Yeah. And in this case, you have untimed rounds, so you're locked in an hour and a half match. Right. And his, I mean, he's still got he's the only one who's still got matches to play, so his matches have obviously been very long. Right? Yes. Yeah, he's only on match. This is his sixth match. Yeah. So. Looks like they are cutting right now. So, um, with Mike though, at, after you're signing here, uh. I mean, there's a lot of cards that Mike has in his list that could be main deck cards. Spyglass could come in here for the Planeswalkers. Brazen. Sure, and Scalding's pretty good because he's got a lot of two-power creatures. Sure. Um, he doesn't really have anything to stop the initiative from getting taken in the first... Oh, no, yeah. Torp Orb. Torp Orb is very Torp good Torp Orb is very good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Torp Orb also... Cody's shuts. sending it back. Okay. Yeah, Torp Orb uh, is Sorceress very, Spyglass yeah, shuts Spy down. Walker brings him for the walkers. Uh, stops the walkers, it all stops the time vault. Right. But he's got his own vault, so that doesn't... It's, he's oh, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm mixing up their decks. You're right, you're right. He don't want to stop his vault. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be great. Uh, the Scheming Fence on the time vault. Are we going to see Cody go all the way by copying Mike's time vault? <laughs> Mike, Mike's been only dropping it when he's got yeah, combo. He's like, he's not, yeah, he's not. Yeah, I've not seen him drop it once where he didn't have combo. So Cody goes to four and three here if he loses this. Yes. Is there another like pull up standings? Do we? Let's see. Cody's uh, four and three if he loses, uh, which will place him. Well, no, he's still got. He's three and two, so he'll be three and three. He'll be four and three if he beats. Correct. Cor yeah. So I mean, he could. So, yeah, he, he could be. He could be out of the running. Right. If, if he, he loses, loses Kyle. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Cody, is, Cody just put two to the bottom of the deck. It looks like he has Prismatic, uh, Triome, and three spells. Okay. Uh, what's on the line here? We have not shown the prize pool yet. Is the Lupe Fiasco buy-in. Correct. So this is from Lupe Fiasco's first album, Food and Liquor. So the buy-in is a uh, bottle of liquor or some food item worth $50 or more. So the winner gets to, we like everything here, we're going to be drafting, so the prizes are drafting. Uh, drafted, but the winner gets the first pick and then the sixth, seventh, and eighth pick. So effectively, given today where there's only bottles of liquor, if you win this tournament, you get to take home four fifty. Two hundred dollars for the liquor. Yes, you get to take four uh, four bottles of liquor that are each fifty dollars or more. So you get to take a bar. If you win today, you win a bar. And then if you don't drink, you can give it to other people for wedding presents. <laughs> or you can use it to enter the next tournament. Yeah, which is what Cody does because <laughs> yeah, he's not exactly. really a drinker. So. Uh, we're, we're talking about changing up the buy-in a little bit more. Uh, I was hard. hoping. I was hoping. The problem is money is uninteresting and cards, cards are, are fungible. Money. Yeah. So we're, we're trying to figure out something that's interesting as a buy-in that still allows for a real investment for people playing. Yeah. We, it, we get a chance to play these VRDs a lot online and Discord and things like that, and we want this to be special and we want it to be something that we really have to reach out for. So. so Cody not having a drop here doesn't bode as well with Mike's number of counter spells. Now Cody's got the free one, so he can win a war to stick something. Yeah. But um, you know he doesn't want to play draw grow. Now Mike doesn't. Mike doesn't have super amount of counter spells, but he's got enough to get him where he's going. I think Mike's threats are also you need one threat to land, whereas right. Cody's kind of build on itself type yeah. of threats. I mean, outside of hex drinker, I mean, what is is he gonna? I mean Nissa. Nissa's Nissa, a pretty right, strong yeah, threat yeah, by itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Nissa, I mean, Ulamog, but that's going to take all of them. Yeah, we're not He's got a channel. Uro has the same kind of right. recursion. I'm surprised Uro went to Mike instead of being taken by Mason, honestly. We, we discussed it when Mason came in. Okay. And, you know, Uro was definitely on his radar, but it, it's, like, it's not always. It, it goes, like, a couple different cards that he could have taken took yeah. his deck in a couple different directions. Uro's not very good at Mike's deck, I will say. I right. think it's fine, but... Yeah, uh, Swifty still has a bottle ready to go for September. Yeah, okay, so there's the Aganjo. Doesn't do a lot against Mike. So. No, makes sense to play it out just as a yeah. land. I mean, yeah. Cody's getting close to the six mana threshold in order to go to Fairy's Protection. Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised that Cody hasn't pushed a walker yet. Well, he looks like five. He has, okay, so I he's mean, a Thieving Skydiver. He's got a Scheme and Fence and a Thieving Skydiver. So he's got multiple things that you... And a Force. Right. So he's got a Scheme and Sense. A ski, he thought about dropping the, the fence on turn two just to attack. Sure. But then he decided he he didn't want to. Well, right. here's the first threat, the first question. Right. So not not using the petty theft, just going straight for the three one right. attacker. It's pretty good. Yeah, I uh, mean against Cody's deck, three on flyers actually. There's Cody has a path and no, he's, he's and got answers, answers, but it, it's not. It's like you know that's not. Yeah, going going skies against Cody is gonna be pretty strong. Yeah. So he's gonna go 
Does Cody ever drop a fair stasis? I don't know if he's bordered in or not. Okay. I don't know. Uh, a top four vintage draft. Oh, God. I mean, this whole thing was a vintage draft, so I think we're okay. There's the counter spell on an Esper Sentinel. Yikes. Uh, that does Oh, no. Okay. He, he tapped into the flooded. Yeah. Yeah, in the mold of five, this one doesn't bode well to Cody. No. This is not the matchup he wants to be playing. No, this is an attrition matchup, and Mike's already up a game. Right. It seems pretty tough. Oh, no. I've also not seen Mike drop the, the key early. Right. Although, this time, okay. He's got two keys, so, I mean, the key dropping the key earlier is, you know, a little yeah, better than dropping the vault early. I was pretty impressed with Nick's storm deck, especially for a first-time drafter. It, was, it turned out really good. Uh, Master Plum says the problem with Uro is mid range. It needs to be cards to be disrupted. So he's got combo. the yes, I agree. He's got the fence in hand, so he, I think he's just like I'll oh, go for the Skyclave here, and then bait out whatever counter. And it looks like Cody tapped incorrectly, so he can't just recast the Skyclave. Given right, that right. He tapped but he three. can cast the fence to shut down the key. Yes, that he can do. Right. I think he wasn't picturing a man. I think he was picturing just a counter spell. Sure. And you know that makes sense. He also has a force if he really, really cares. No, um, you. I don't think you can possibly do that. I don't think you force her. But. But yeah, fence fence feels like a pretty reasonable play. Yeah. His last what last what's the last card back there? I can't tell. Yeah, I it think, looked like a force spike, but I don't think I don't think anyone drafted that today. No, fast for was not drafted. He's got thieving skydiver too. Right, but there's one one way in the back. He can skydive the key and sky the skydive fast That's fly. strong. What's that? It's got ever fly. It sure has looks like flying. It looks like it flying. Does yeah. it have fake flying? I think it does have flying. I think it has flying. Which is super relevant here because it can block the brazen bar. Uh, it does fly. For some reason, a merfolk flies. Yeah, yeah, there's a few of them from that place that fly. Why? Because they're special merfolk with okay. special merfolk powers. Great to know. Great to know. Yeah. <laughs> He's a skydiver. He jumps off the cliffs into the water. Yes. And as after we know, that thieves. lets you fly after somebody. After he thieves. And he's got magic. It's rogue power magic. <laughs> you leave him be. He's he's a good boy. Yeah, it's it's a good good dog. <laughs> he's a good he's a good merfolk. Yes, this nice typal rogues deck. Oh man, I think you have gotta almost blow the force. Yes, here, this feels like a force spot to me. Because you want to take the key and you want the blocker for the brazen. It might depend on what his last card is. I, I cannot tell what his other card is. Right. Nope. He's gonna let it go. All right. I guess he's just real scared of... Well, but this guy never steals the key. Yeah, I don't know what he's scared of. He's got the Skyclave still. Oh, is it a Twister? Is the Twister the last card? Uh, maybe. Going to seven. Oh, feels dirty. Yeah. Wondering... Now we're going to force. Cause we... Twister in this deck just feels very strange to me. Twister, he... he I it's mean, it's been card. fine. It's a good value. Like, he took it because it hadn't been taken, and it was there, and yeah. it's still solid. And I, he had just taken um, Time Spiral, and the table was make, making fun. Then, like, oh, I just got my Twister Correct. still available. And then Dakota's like, oh, I'm going to take Twister. Yep. So he I, let the one wing resolve. Oh, man. I sure did. I, I, uh, Frozen is saying, yeah, plans to force the wall. I agree that's the plan. I just don't... Right. I think that plan is not as good as stealing the key... Yeah, I mean, I think right there. Because it doesn't matter if you force the vault when you're at 7 and you've got a 3-1 and beating you down and, you know, the one ring is going to draw him cards. And I mean, the protection for the one ring is relevant at this point. But, yeah, I mean, I think the mold of 5 just started I agree. on the, just the... Yeah, this is a tough match to come back from really the best of cases. Path. On top of exhaustion. Tap your mana better. The just Uro. Oh, yeah. Oh, fucking drain. Mike, yeah. Mike's had every counter spell too. Like he, he only has, he has like, a lot he's, of like, hey, he's got like five. I mean, he actually doesn't have as many as I is. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. seven. Okay, well, Archmage Charge is it Archmage? Oh yeah, Archmage Charge counter target spell. Okay, it's a counter spell. I thought I thought it was very. And then plus Snapcaster and Torrential. Right. Yeah. No, that's true. So effectively nine main deck okay. points. And he let the Skyclave go. Like he's just straight. I just don't know what this force is sitting there. Like, it must be that the blue card is so good. I don't think I think he's just kind of throwing his hat. Yeah, that's that's the vibe I had last time too. But then he won that game, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Cody's gonna pull it out. 
There it is. Let's see. Going for the force of the vault plan. I assume you're not just going to let your opponent win. Let's see. There's no veil on this board, right? Veil is for no, masons. No veil is masons. Okay. Oh, there's a stern scolding out of the board as well. I bet that only hits creatures. Is that true? This card's so bad. Yeah, it's solid. It's good in this matchup. Uh, I guess. I think it's solid. I mean, it depends on the deck, but I think it's solid. Did he? I don't have it. There's no way. There's no way he let that happen. Maybe he has a march of otherworldly light or something. Is that in his deck? It's, he has both marches, right? He's got, he's got march. So maybe he's gonna let it resolve. No, he, he's then... still kind of, he's still he just held it up. He's still thinking. Okay. Trying to figure out what to pitch, probably. Yeah, he's just so behind on resources. The one ring really just like ground ground him ahead. Yeah. Okay, there's the force. Putting him down to six. Yeah. Ooh, cutting the scheming fence. See, so yeah, a scheming fence is another one that could have stole. I think maybe that's what it was. He was trying to figure out: can I counter it? Right. Or can I avoid countering it so I can? Oh, scheme and fence it. Just so much. He's had everything. Probably for the cryptic, yeah. Yeah. Counter draw. We're, we're in a tough spot for Cody yeah. here. And he just picks him up. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, the Bolt of Five just took that. Uh... Yeah. That, that changed the match. I think the first game was actually pretty interesting. Right, right, right. No, the first game was good. And, you know, he was, I think, as he said, I think if he doesn't miss uh, a trigger, he wins that. Yep. All right, we got to, uh, we have to tell the world about this on Twitter to make sure. Uh, How do you touch ID? Ah, my hyperhidrosis is failing me again. There it goes. Let me log in on X and or Twitter to, to post about this. We, we don't say X. Don't we? No, no. Can we say that weird Nazi site? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, so this, this has been a pretty exciting tournament. Uh, like Mason starting off down a game. Yeah. Really gave right. me hope. So we can get Cody to play for the tiebreaker, and let's put Mason and Mike on the um, uh, tiebreaker match. I'll be right back. Yes. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. This is a pretty exciting St. Lotus 12. We're going to a finals where we're going to have Mike versus Mason, both tied at 6-1. Uh, playing for all the marbles at this point. So the marbles in this case are uh, several bottles of liquor, uh, and uh, we are. And honestly, the bigger fact that we're playing for is this would be Mason, this would be Mike's first win and Mason's fourth win. Uh, Mike has played in three of these, I believe. Uh, so Mike has. Uh, this would be Mike's, Mike's first win after kind of working through a lot of this, really learning the format. He's obviously a talented player, played in RCQs and things like that, and worked his way up through that system. But in St. Lotus, there's a lot of different things to learn. Um, and it's going to be exciting to see if he's able to clinch it here and actually kind of jump back to it. Uh, let me jump back to... You can see me. Hi. Uh, the second place. Great question, Frozen. So there's there's a total of eight bottles available, right? Because there's eight people that have entered the tournament. The first prize gets one, six, seven, eight picks. Second place gets and my, second and fifth I, pick. Mike's on window, Mason's on hallway. If you want to Got it. Answer. Yep. Uh, and and then third and fourth get there get one pick each from the third and fourth position. So okay. uh, yeah, everybody everybody in the top four gets to come home with some prizes. But if you're in first place, you get four bottles. If you're in second place, you get two. And if yeah. you're in third and fourth, you get one. But you get them in kind of priority order. So you everybody gets to have their favorite bottle in their position. Right. So. Uh, yeah, Mason versus Mike. Mason claims that he would not have lost uh, if he hadn't if he had played properly in the last version of this. Right. Uh, what's your take on this matchup? Um, we have I, Time Vault versus Grindy Mid Range Jun. I think this matchup is gonna be very strip mine dependent. Ooh, okay. Right, like um, Mike has enough counters um, that he can make it work. 
Yep. I think it's going to come heavily down to that early thought sees disruption, right? If sense. Mason hits his disruption, he probably should have it. Uh, so in, they went 2-1 last time. Um, I think one was basically just a quick strip mine lock. One was a natural vault, just like Volky natural. And then the other was the match. That was the Grindier match where, you know, the uh, missing the Fairy Conclave. That makes total sense. I think we're having Peter come in here for the last match of the night, which is appropriate. Uh, so I'm going to drop your, both your names in properly. Yeah. Or we can't both be Peter? Or we'd be both be Peter. It's fine. Good. Uh, and let's jump over to the match. No, All right. Good. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And I'm real excited to go out there and watch this properly. Oh, yeah. Uh, I will have headphones on, so shout out to me when cheats. Okay. So, for the record, uh, Mike is Mason's only loss. It is, it is, it is. I, I can't remember if that happened on or off camera. It, it was on camera. It okay. was, yeah. So, yeah, Cody, Cody falling down there. I think Cody's exhausted. Like, it just, it felt, and they mulled a five game two. Oh, uh, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think in game one, he missed a couple triggers uh, on his initiative, and if he doesn't miss that, he gets an extra five damage at one point. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, somebody was asking about Gobacom while we were out there, yeah. um, and I, I was not in a position to actually be. Gobacom's really good for him because Gobacom basically it plays well with like the Janeth Magistrate and some of his disruption stuff, right? Yep. It just slows him down, and then. Yep. Uh, Mike lost to the Mono Red deck. I uh, just got to him too yeah. fast. Yeah, and he said he also he he feels he would have won it if he drew an island in one of the games. Yes, right. yes, he said that. He was like if. Yeah. If there was a land difference. Right. Um, speaking of land, though, I was talking to Mason while we were out there, and Mason does believe his land base is actually not either good or as good as it should be for. Ma Ma what Mason's he always very critical of what he does, even as he. You know, oh, I assume so. Yeah. Like you know, and he's looking at this event. Right. Looking back on this event while playing this event. All right. As well. So we've got a abrupt decay in hand. So even if he, um, you know, he goes key here. If we try to do it this turn. Uh, you know, that's that. Yeah, we have the abrupt decay for it. Mike does not have any of the free counters, so. Well, beyond that, abrupt decay can't be countered, but it can be subtlety, right, which right. he does not have. Right. So that is that is uh, an important distinction: is that there's no right. no subtlety there, um, no chill. Yeah. So we pop open Mike's list, and we pop open Mason's list. Also, uh, Mason is playing Wasteland in the main. Okay. I verify that. Um, it is Valley of Gorgoroth. Oh, the because stupid. Moxfield yeah, has right. done this Moxfield. with all the lists, and we have not realized it right, yet. Right, right. We did not. It uploads it. whatever the newest. Newest is. Yep. Okay. We, we just have not seen it on camera. So there's the ring. Yeah. The one ring. The fairest of them all. Uh, so again, while I was out there talking, uh, Mike came into this event thinking that he wanted to play a fair one ring deck. Right. And to say that pairing keys with the ring is not quite the fairest thing you could be doing when you could just be naturally untapping it, you're playing Vintage Rotisserie. Yeah, that's probably the fairest way yeah, to play this card. Fair. And oh. Terra Sunder. Mike's going to read that one. Yeah, I'd, I'd assume if there's... And he says, what the... That, that, that's stupid. I'm Get out of here. I'm going to tap a card. Draw I'm going to draw a card. I'm not going to take any damage. Nope. It is exiled. Uh, Mark, that is exiled just in case it's relevant. I don't think it is. There we go. Yep, there it goes. Yeah. Um, there is mental missed up. That is the only free piece of interaction, well, as we see right there, that Mike has. And after that, it is all hard cast for yeah. clock. Grist. The Hunger Tide. A mill. There's a trophy and a one. And a bug. What is the condition on Grist? When do we get that one one? I think it says not a land. Create one. Oh, you just create it. Oh. Is it insect? Yeah. Then mill. It, okay, it, so yeah. you always create it. You always create it. And then if an insect card is milled, you get to repeat the process. That's the difference. You put a loyalty counter on Grist. Oh, okay, yeah. Got it, got it. So if you if you mill a Grist with Grist. Right, or any other random bugs. You yep. Know. Because everybody plays Groundbreaker or right. Saber Ants or whatever. I mean, there are uh, Scoot Swarm, you know, Scoot Mob or whatever. That's both, I think. C C yeah. Right, they're both yeah, cards, yeah. Right. One of them is just a little bit better. I just don't know yeah. which... Swarm's better. That's the new one? Yeah, it's yeah. the one that makes more of them. Yeah, when you mutate Mob onto just it. gets bigger. Yes. It's not when you mutate, it's just when you play lands. Land yeah, but all. I thought it makes even more when you mutate. I no, it's just after different. you hit six lands, yeah. it makes a copy of the original one rather than just one one inside. Mm. So that's when it gets that's crazy. That's what it is, okay. Yeah. I just remember as part of that standard environment when mutate was like yeah. the thing to be doing, people would mutate onto... Yeah, um, makes it harder to kill. Oh, you know what it was? They mutated the... the, the th 
the rampant growth creature. Okay. That's what it was. So you were right. making a copy of Scoot's Worm that would ramp and growth every time. So this so isn't weird. great here. No. Nope. He's got Thrag Tusk in hand. So, I mean, that's good. I mean, like, if Mike doesn't have and that's, shit, but... That's it. I think we're, we're, we're hellbent now. Yeah, formation. we're hellbent. Okay. Buy a turn. And maybe draw into... Uh, Something. Key. Something to deal yeah. with. Or a vault. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, be... yeah, yeah. You have the key. Yeah, you've got key. And you know he's got one card in hand. Um, All right, Gross Spiral is another redraw. Amazing. Is, is it... So he has more than just Thrag Tusk? No, he has the AA card. The one. Just the one. Yeah, yeah he's no longer Hellbent yeah. because the Thrag Tusk gets back to hand, or yeah. he was never Hellbent to begin with, is what I'm asking. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, for sure, sure, for sure. This is a very slow clock. And he's got a lot of life, so, yep. I mean, that's... Now, obviously, Mason has enough removal that he could easily draw it and just hit the key, you know? Yeah, yeah. The Terra Sunder's gone. He did build a trophy. Okay. And the, and the Oko. is gone. Yep. And the Oko's gone. So four of our... Flip back over to his list. Yep. Um, four of our main deck. Witherbloom can blow it. Pulse can blow it. Yep. That's what's left there. Yeah. And then as far as Thresser goes, we have Minsk and Boo left and a Leovold. After that, we're running a little light. We have Deep yeah. Root Wayfinder as well. Yeah. So those can blow the key. Oh, three, zero, zero. You are correct. We did not reset the player when counters. We will do that now. Thrag Tusk O'Clock. No, well, gonna combat first. Beat in for some damage and then Thrag Tusk O'Clock. Yep. Bang. Strip mine. Well, a lot of the premier threats are gone. Now we're just facing nine damage a turn. Yeah. I think we're like 14 ish. Spell Pierce, Time Walk, and Tinker in Mike's hand. So we can win if we Time Walk into another artifact. Right. Which we're going to do here. We're just gonna yeah. do uh, there are no sweepers in Mike's deck. That's what I was looking for earlier when we were discussing outs. How many artifacts does he have that's not... Uh, Sensei's so top. Key's gone. He doesn't have a lot for Tinker. Right? Sensei's top and Gear Hulk, okay. I think, are the only right. two left that we and can Gear take Hulk's away. too much mana. Uh, One, two, three, four, five, he should have drafted well to do a tinker with. Yeah. Uh, he should have drafted a um, land. One of the lands at least. Oh, okay. One of the any one of the artifact yeah, lands, yeah. even down to a bridge. Yeah, at least one. Yeah. You know. Yep. Tree of Tales, see the sign on. Dark yeah. Seal is probably out of the question or the bridge, yeah. So if I Yeah, it's weird. You usually see those. Mike should have drafted Street Wraith <laughs> for the thirty nine card deck. You're not yeah. wrong. Plum blows some street rate. Could have gone 38 if he was able to get probe, but somebody else picked up probe. Yeah. All right, so we got a wayfinder in our hand. Are the bridges fetchable? Do they have a basic land type? No, I don't think so. Okay. But I could be wrong. Bobbles are criminal, criminally undervalued. Yeah, yeah there are a lot of good, good here. There are a lot of good bobbles. So we're at six, so basically... This is it. This turn is do or die. All right, well, we got Cryptic. We can, you know, like... If we have Cryptic in hand. We don't have it in hand right now. But if he top decks a Cryptic, he can stall another turn. Yep. We're going to counterspell the Scoos, which doesn't do much. We're going to chart a course. Yep. Draw two, discard one. Yeah, he didn't attack, so he's just going to discard one. Nissa and X. X going to give it to you? Do we know what X is? Uh, X is... X. Cryptic. Oh, Cryptic will buy him a turn. Yeah, that buys a turn. And a card. Yep. More importantly. Yeah. The opportunity to win. You gotta play to your outs and out. Did he main deck Veil or is Veil side? I think Veil side. Veil side. Veil is the side. Okay. For Mason. Yeah, this isn't a draft you can main deck. It is main deckable in some drafts, but. Yeah. Yeah, this is, you weren't. Mason has 
the majority of the good black cards you would be targeted with. Yeah. So and the blue decks are three mic. Oh yeah. Draft position. All right. That's it. What is that? He pitched Nissa. Nissa. Okay. We're gonna make a. It's gonna be face down, but we're gonna, we gotta differentiate him somehow. So making Urza Tron. Oh oh, I didn't see the saga. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All the artifacts are still there, huh? Uh, Soul Ring got countered. Oh, okay, that's right. Mental Soul Ring got misstep. Can Gris alt just kill? That is a good question. Let's bring up Gris the Hunger Tide. Minus five. Each opponent loses life equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. It's going to be close. I mean, six mana. Uh, well, you gotta have six creatures it, in your graveyard. Right, I don't right? think so. Yep. I don't think it can. Yep, so you fog the attack. Right. Right, and I don't think you bounce Chris, so you want to draw a card. Yeah, you have to. You're you're out to everything now is to draw a card. Right. Oh, but now four. Four mana. Yep. Could, four four creatures in the yard could be different. Yes. Yeah. How many creatures are in there? I thought it was a bunch of planeswalkers. I don't know. Oh, he's counting. Yep. Scoo's got countered. I'm guessing he is not enough. Yeah. Thrag Tusk is in play. DRS is in play. That's one, two, three, four, five, six creatures. Yeah. Left in the deck. Running the numbers again. Endurance hasn't seen deep roots in his hand. Yep. So that's so yeah, two he, of does the not, six. he does not have enough creatures. Yep. He's just got. Oh, Witherbloom's going to blow the key, though. Yep. And he's going to read it and. Uh, so literally read it and weep. Yep, there it is. With a drain to boot. If we drain, we're at two and now we kill Grist. I think there's only one creature in the yard. Uh, we're getting word of two from the spotter. Okay. Two from the spot. Okay. There's the wasteland. Look at that. <laughs> He's not gonna drain. He's just gonna mill. All right. Self mill and well, also self mill can hit creatures and yeah, and, yeah, to help pump the the yeah. grist. Yeah. Yeah. There's a net. There's... But it doesn't matter. Like, I think that like that pretty much. We forgot to dissuade you on the on the answers as well. Yep. Yeah, there's so many ways that Mike is just dead to what's on board without combat. Ulamog, 10. 1, 2, 3, not, 4, 5, yeah, 6, That's not seven. 10. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, Mike was just drawn for the uh, vault at that point. Yep. But with the key gone, there's really... Yeah. And no, no board presence to speak of. What else do you do as Mike here? What do you... Pick there, that's the answer. Okay. Okay. So, all right, so, we got Mike, we got Mason's list in front of us. We will pull up Moxfield a momentarily. Okay. So, when we take a look at lists, we are looking at Mason's list. He brings in Needle. Yep. Um, he brings in Veil, Dispute. Oof. Grudge and oof is what he brought in last time. Yep. So we discussed this. There was a lot of like, what do you One, sign out? Two, three, four, five, six cards. Yeah, five or six he's bringing in. Yeah. You know, he may leave Grudge out and just say, I have enough. Yep. So he does have a lot, but. Yep. It's just weird because a lot of the, not weird, sorry. A lot of the removal you already have. Right. Tags the problem cards. Right. So right, it's right, just right. like, what do you want to, like, so what threats don't produce a good enough threat? <laughs> what threats need to be answers? Is, yeah, it was only one creature. He miscounted. <laughs> so I thought it was just the one. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So we got to look at the threats and what threats are not right. threaty enough for the threat club. And I mean, Gris did work there, but I think Gris comes out yeah. for this one. Um, I think you could 
I don't think you can argue o Oko because it's a main deck answer to right. just a raw key or vault or ring for that matter. And also it's, a threat. It just yeah, yeah. And, and a ring. You might side out, uh, make a swap between Oof and one of the other creatures. Scavenging you can use is, is good, but your opponent's not like playing out of graveyard a little bit, just slightly with torrential gear hulk, so you could swap Scoos and Oof. Right. Um, yeah, Thrag is also weak against infinite counter spells, but it also presents a threat. That's yeah. the, it has five power. That's four turns so when you combine it. And Thrag's when it leaves the battlefield, so like he doesn't have a lot of removal, but he does have a little bit of bounce. So like, yeah. if you're going to deal with it, you're going to leave a beast. Yeah. So the 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 question there is, if you're going to swap Thrag Tusk for an answer, is that appropriate because you're reducing your threat density right. and the overall power of your threats? Right. And right. I don't know if that's appropriate. Um, but it is weak against counter spells. Yeah, a singular counter spell gets rid of Thrag, but I think you're kind of okay. I think you're kind of okay with that if you're presenting Thrag Tusk, because that either means that they're countering a technically kind of irrelevant spell, it's right. a threat, and you'll eventually get there, or you're so far behind that they're just countering a Thrag Tusk because they're in a commanding position. Right. Let's check Mike out here. Yeah, so I'll take a look at Mike's list. Um, we got Worm, which will probably come mind in. Mind Break Trap. For the search, you think? Yeah, he's got a lot of fetches. That's I mean, true. You know, it, it could easily you know clear out a, you know, a good torch of the wind. So yep. Embrace Possibility. Uh, Brazen Borrower, Commit to Memory, I think would be fine. Dismember, those all deal with Planeswalkers. Yeah. And uh, Minskin, or, or Boo, rather. Yeah. Dismember. Yep. Um... Then you have the Sorcerer's Spyglass is one of those things where Mason's gonna can overload you with Planeswalkers, even with like two or three left in the deck, so yeah. is that a relevant bring-in? And then you have um, Stern Scolding, which... Seems okay. Yeah, it get, but it does get the majority of the creatures right. in the deck, including some of the, yeah. the answers, yeah, right? True. Yeah. But it doesn't get a lot of the spells. Right. So that's a, that's a, a conversation. And then Worm Coil? It keeps you alive. Like, it does keep you alive. I mean... None of Mason's threats are big enough to actually kill this card. Right. He's got some exile stuff that can deal with it, but, you know... Yeah. That's an interesting question. Yeah. Um, you have Assassin's Trophy. Um, right. Mike's... Oh, are we back in the... Trophy you're probably okay with because you want... It's, it's Torn Asunder that like, yeah, you're worried about. Yeah, that's the worry one. Yeah. Worried yeah. someone. Okay, they're both all getting... Sorry, so let's get back to the gameplay. Okay. If you need to buy some time, you could take out the Ulamog... 10 that mm -hmm. is in Mike's list because you're probably going to get strip mined or wastelanded. And then yeah, I don't, back. I, yeah, I don't think. And you could probably make the swap between. And then you just take the channel out with it. That's yeah, right. and you can probably put in the worm coil instead. Right. In that instance. Um, Though, I mean, channel worm coil, I guess. Is... It's still fine. And yeah. You can paint a, into Hex Drinker. Right. Which, or you could side out Hex Drinker. Ugh. <sighs> Yeah, leave, I think leaving channel in gives you some uh, some very powerful options of just whether or not Ulamog is the best card to be channeling out with that, um, the 10 or the 11 mono one. Right. Um, because they're both very powerful spells overall. Um, so see a needle. But they're susceptible. A pulse, a rin and six. A strip mine, I think, is yeah. in there. You can't keep getting away with this, a bayou, I believe. Yeah. Is that a Terra Sunder? That's a Terra Sunder. Yep. So we have that key. Hey, we have the needle. You just, you need, I wouldn't just run it out, but the, there's your your vault option. You have Terra Sunder. Turn two play. You Seems fine. Out. Just... Yeah, Mike losing the sideboard game is the is is the detriment. I think his list is better suited for game one but it kind of is what it is right yeah i think he he fell behind too early drawing air and then had to try to make up for it gsc for one from mason yeah you get death right just yep i think that's it right i was just going to check and make sure it's the only one yeah Maybe you could get ignoble. Ignoble if one is if the other one's already in hand. Well, ignoble gives him red for the red six in his hand. So yeah, so that that's definitely an option. Um, I don't know what else is there. Like the strip mine's already gone. If I mean red six, get back to strip mine. I mean, that's when you cast the next turn. Yep. It just is that the the game? 
You got nothing else going on? Is that the game you want to play? At least got the time Cade Noble. Yep. Oh, DRS. Is it not both? Yeah, he did make him discard, get, get rid of land so he can not have to eat the land. Mine. He can eat his land. So. Yep, you can keep eating the land in the other graveyard, yeah. Rowan chart doesn't feel great. No, but it's actually, it's a threat. Right. That's I think that's the most important part about Uro. Like chart is kind of yeah whatever. It does feed Uro, which is right. nice. It feeds the beast, but I think the important part of those two cards is actually having the threat this time right. around. Mike was very short the threat. Drew Nissa way too late to yeah, actually yeah. do anything. That's true. Like right now your opponent's just going to be nibbling out of your graveyard, and chart helps you overload. Yeah, there it goes. But that but now it's against a DRS. No, yeah, yeah, it will get eaten in time. Yeah. Yeah, but in the dark. Yeah. Oh, this is not gonna go. Yeah. Nope. Boop. You know, Mike didn't know that Mason was either going to have yeah, G I mean, GSZ or draw into GSZ. I mean, they're both on about five. I mean, I think yeah, yeah that's fine. You've exactly. Gotta... It, it's a it's a well laid out hand. I mean, right now he just draws key naturally. He can still, unless he's got you know decay in hand, he can still just. Uh. There goes the chart. I assume needle. Yeah, I assume needle is on. Oh, that's vault, true. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or on. You know. You have two keys. I yeah, don't think yeah. Name key. Yeah, Mason's good. He'll name it right. Yeah. I mean, that's why all. Mason's just like being real daring. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Tinker for Ring is definitely a play. You have the two artifacts on board already so you could also think you know you can't tinker into vault because you know you just got choked on that side of things yeah. um but tinkering for the ring does not give you the protection you have to actually cast it to get the protection right this is if you cast it when the run one ring enters the battlefield if you cast it you gain you protection cast it, right. yeah so you lose out on that but you still get the card draw Yeah, still in a pit of needle doesn't do anything with an archmage, and still naming the same thing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I figured. Yep. Okay, he's got pulse in hand and a besage. Oh, yeah. This is. It's this is this is a rough spot for Mike as his islands are just going to get chewed up by Mason. Yeah. But on the bright side. Mason will never successfully kill since he's divining top. <laughs> Boop. Mason not drawing the third land can't actually get the Mox Diamond down. That should have rolled up the run. Yeah, it's on five. Okay. On four. It starts at three? Yep. I couldn't roll start right there. Yep, starts at three. Okay. Land, land, key on top. Ugh, and no way to reset. So we're going to be looking at a new card every other turn. Somewhere in there. If we know the top four. Oh, no, sorry. Land, land, key. Yeah, we draw, so we're going to know land, key. Then we get the third. We get the refresh. I'm a quitter. I just say fuck you and go home. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Mike's not a quitter. But... No, no, and he has options to play off of off of the green in Hex Drinker, in right, Channel. Yeah. Right, there are options for sure. Um Especially if the top, if you keep floating lands to the top, if you're able to do that, Mason, I, I said no third land drop. I I lied. Strip mine was the third. Yeah, was the third land. He keeps over and over and over yeah. again. And then uh, the, then DRS is the third land. Yep, that's it. But that's the thing is you're you're kind of stuck in this oh, fourth land uh, with the decay too. Yeah, or the ass trophy. He also could play the Besage now if he really wanted the land. I mean, like he he can. Like, yes. But why would you do that? It's, all right, we're going to snap in response to the, the strip mine. He floated the blue. And yep. he's, he's like, I'm just going to get a, get this guy down. Yeah. Uh, double topping is a thing you definitely could be doing with two lands and a key. Um But it doesn't get you that much further yeah. if you're not going to be making use of both of the cards that you're drawing. So until you see a card in the first three, 
that you really need to have, or two in the top three that you really need to have, double topping is not the uh, like, I'm the okay way to be. That. I'm okay with it. Okay, so we minus. Now he hit. He hit start, snapcaster attacked round right six. Yeah. He was just like, okay. 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 I'm yeah, not yeah. losing my death right. Yep. Uh, it's just. You're gonna lose just, two yep. off the chart. Yep. Nugging, nugging for two all the way. All right. We can cast the Leovold. Okay, so... Go to second main phase. <laughs> Stop the floaty. Oh, yeah, I would assume so. Yeah. If you, we already topped, though. I don't think he topped. He just floated the mana and in response to the strip mine. And now he's going to top. Now he's going to top before we move through phases. Yep. Yeah. He, he, he filtered the green into double blue. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if Mason actually did signal move. Yeah, he had yet, yeah, but I, I knew he was going to. Yeah, yeah, why not? Drain the mana and then play Leobold right. in the second main when your opponent doesn't have the counter magic or the the mana for counter magic. Yeah, no, this is here. Really we go. Cool. Here's the the double top. I'm going to besage you and kill that top now. Yep, this is the only time you can, <laughs> get, you can catch that top. Catch the top. We don't have to use besage you. We have every other right, option right. in front of us, too. I don't think you need to kill it here. I think you're fine, because he's going to draw the top anyway. And yeah, then, you know. you're brainstorm locking yourself every yeah. turn without a way to reset it. What, why even bother? Yeah, and, I don't. And if your opponent was going to reset it, I might actually force the movement of... The, of the top to top by targeting it with one of my abundance or abundant removal yeah. spells that make them shuffle it back in. Okay, so Mason took no action, so he's fine yeah. with this. Like, I just want the man at this point. Yeah. It looked like he was ready to make that move last turn as well. Yeah. Um, to get out of this hard lock. There we go. Yeah. But. It's not necessarily too little too late if you have a land drop to right, go right, with right, it. Right, right, I mean, it, it's what he has to do, but it, it's the same. Like, with our knowledge, it's, you know, it's just like. Yep. We do not have protection from instance, right. so we are. Right now, it dies to a rune and six. <laughs> yep, I like the performative action of. Strip mine you. Yep, anyway. I'm just going to roll up rents for strip mine you. Yeah. Bonk. Doesn't need enough protection from instance, so I'll use the sorcery anyway. Right. Got him. So we have up oh, there it is. Mike, yeah. And that's it. Mason takes right. down his fourth, fourth VRD. Yeah. You want me to send him in here? Do we need to even do a nah, winner's interview we're, anymore? We're good. He's he's been enough today. <laughs> yeah. He's been in enough. So, all right, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, you know so. Mason takes this down, uh, drops some, um, you know, just a well honed good stuff deck with yeah. lots and lots of removal. And, yeah. you know, um, enough threats to get there. I was wondering if he was a threat or two short in his draft. That's what I felt like. Yeah. Sometimes. Like he maybe felt a little threat light, but no. Yep. But that... He had enough answers that didn't matter, so he could just ride them. So. Yeah, he and I talked about uh, going into white, touching it for some odds and ends. Not comment. Right. He does not like that card, but we talked about like prismatic ending, ley line binding, some more answers. Right. Um, not any additional threats, though. Okay. I guess so we felt yeah. that his threat base was... Yeah, I think that's one thing I, I think as a drafter I often deal with is I think I often go too big on threats and not enough on answers sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a, a good lesson to take there. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, All right. for VRD12... Yeah, uh, I'm Stephen Hagen. I am Peter Kritzberger. And St. Lotus 